with it. Native Gaming still clinging to that narrow lead. A down scope there for Collect. Pugilistic with the fist takes down Mighties. But when you play dangerous games, sometimes you're going to get burned. But I think they're going to be able to stave off any sort of push from foe right here. Jimbo just trapped in the tower. They all know where he's at. Huh? Oh, never mind. Oh my god, what a shot. Where's the pressure going to come from, right? This is Wutem's just looking at the center of the map. He's just waiting for information to come. If he doesn't get information from his perimeter players, then suddenly he knows, like, okay, they're gonna just jump out in the middle. But they decided all to come from the long haul side. And while Wutem, he might be feasting with his first triple on the ACS stage, killing spree for Wutem. You're gonna see foe spawn toward A. They have to fight through Mikwin, and he has a shock rifle primed to hit some heads. This is one of those win conditions that we talked about at the start of this match. Is McWin starts off a potential killing spree here. Shock rifle double kill. Look, the players coming in from the backside. These players from foe staying alive for as long as they have has caused absolute mayhem. Wu Tem gets up into the center. They're going down. Three, oh. all four go down for native. Those two players cause absolute mayhem by staying alive. Oh, he has a player that was there. Jimbo took him down. Oh! Hi, so that's Jimbo saying, hey, you know what? I, you don't say it first, then I can get the shot down. And oh. As we're going to start to see a little bit of desperation reek here for Native Gaming. Instead, on the other side, it's Mighty's with another flag out. Thor looking to end it right here. And that flag just saved his life. Because that flag hit the top of that pole, he didn't go through the Again. elbow quick enough. And they, they weren't able to take him down. <laughs> Collect goes down. No He's way. still alive. Mighty's still alive. The flag's still out. It's only two players up, but no one can stop him in time. <laughs> Yeah, right now, Bittersweet, Bittersweet honestly just outplaying complexity in a majority of the situations. That's why they have the 2-1 lead. Got significant play advantage as well. You see some teabagging coming out. Cherish disrespecting his elder, Ryanu. Don't know how that's going to play into factor. There's some players you really don't want to teabag, let's be honest. But this is his first time that we're racing him with Space Station. Well, he's got a sniper in his hand, so we're... Oi, that's going to hurt a lot. Barcode receiving that sniper, and now another one. APG is now going down, four down for Native Gaming. They, they just go in, shoot, and worry about the next thing. That's just so these not two that players opponent. in the back. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, that's insane, stellar. Like, I just saw your finger point, and I was like, something's about to happen, and oh my god, yeah, something really did happen. Native's gonna need to find a 3-4 down here and try to get them a little bit closer. Oh, no! He's able to get the stick. Three down for Space Station. Let's see if Native is able to recover from that barcode with the shock rifle. Wanted to get that triple kill. Unfortunately, Legend will fly by and take him down in a really fashion manner. But <laughs> bye bye. He ran out of ground to step in. He said bye bye. I, 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 it looked like intentional the way that he straight off the map right there. It was so aggressive. Absolutely. Here we go. Game 
number three on its way. Space Station just one game away from sweeping Native. And well, Legend is going to make that a little bit easy for himself. Double kill. And it's a flag that is out at four players of Native Gaming. Go down and oh my. Yo, that is a tech I have not seen yet. Legend got some sort of glitch slide going down the down the middle lane. That is sick. Need to check the angles, making sure he get it right. That shot is not going to be enough. Only the shields will go down. Uh, there's a couple other players going to move right in front of Boo Boo Doo Boo, and he'll be feasting because Holy! as the second shot cuts through, Boo Boo Doo Boo doing just enough for his team to maintain this hill. Spectre. Able to find the next kill and with this sniper rifle. <gasps> that was like a, like a miracle <laughs> stick from the sky. I, I don't know what kind of. That, that must have stuck almost underneath his chin or something. We saw it go right onto his Spartan's body. Cam was out, but Spartan still has plenty to work with. The grapple back for the headshot. Ooh. King Nick goes down. Follows double kill. Killing spree for Spartan as he unleashes on the rest of Proton Gaming. You, you got the straight ribbon hoodie on? This is like the, what is the crew one? There's anything on the back? I wish. No, nothing on the back, but no. I'll say I like it. I like the straight ribbon hoodie. I think uh, someone has the, uh, oh, here, Louie's got the uh, the other straight ribbon hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Well, what's ironic about this is that that overshield, you might need to stop running this flag to get towards that overshield to help secure this final one through. Goes on both sides. This is a big play. Boo boo, do boo. Oh, he goes Killing down. Three. But Spartan got a great spawn. Look at those nades. It's gonna be able to keep Sam off. Not going to be enough. Overshield's there. Not going to be enough. Oh my. It's the overshield that makes the difference. It, it's same situation. This time, Sentinels was the one that needed to drop the flag and try to play for the overshield. They just weren't able to do so. The overshield of Gilkey gives them just enough shields to withstand the nades and get the return. Proton Gaming up two to one against Sentinels in our best of five. Up two one in this series. But Moo Moo Dubu's got the camouflage. He's on the map and has the uh, and has the equipment that made him famous for camo plays. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> He's about to get it! He's about to get it! He didn't, he knew Sap was, didn't want it to just pop out! He knew, he didn't want it to give Bubu Dubu that overkill! That's going to be another one down! Are they trapped in that zone or is Sentinel trapped with them? That's the real question, because right now... We're starting to see Proton Gaming just one off Sentinels, and Zap is going to become a Green Reaper with that Shock Rifle. Three players down for Sentinels! Three players down! Sentinels, they have to win here and now. It was 249 to 120 just moments ago, and Proton Gaming are looking to do the impossible. No te mames, no te mames, no te mames, no te mames. They're just doing it. They're just taking down Sentinels over and over again, not letting them breathe whatsoever. The momentum has completely shifted. 244 is still counting. Proto Gaming is about to close it up. It's about to claim victory in any moment. 248, 249, no, it stops. 249 and it's over. Proto Gaming demonstrating that it is possible to defeat even the great. In its own map time. We thought it was over. We said there's no way. The best Solitude Strongholds team. As we see Drift just play with the spawns. And, oh, they're just playing with their meat. This is a phenomenal work from Lore right now. They have just been dominant against Forsaken. Hay que tener mucho cuidado. Hey, esta yeah, yeah, última. I, I just realized what I said. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Never, never mind. It's, it's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Wait, but now, cuidado. Perfecto. De parte de la escuadra de Forsaken. Están empezando a hacer el push. No lo está consiguiendo. La granada de plasma. Qué bonito stick. Para ahora que me regalaste. Doble muerte. Ahora sí. La colina le pertenece. No, you, you thought you had it. You thought. But Audrey come in with the steal at the Ooh. last second, and that's got to be a blow to the confidence. Not only that, but Glory lurking with Camo Shock Rifle, shutting down top A, such an important position for this hill. Lamentablemente no logra concretar las kills, solamente los escudos van a caer. Looking for more, but... <laughs> and there we see 
the snipe just barely misses. But can SWAT Alpha get there in time? The spawners of Cloud9 are coming up now, and they did spawn in the mall. It's a huge shot. Oh no, mami, que tirote se acaba de aventar Lebor, evitando que se le acerque. Mira nada más otro, otro. Dame un tercero, Lebor. Dame los papacitos, por favor. Dame un tercer tiro. No lo va a conseguir. Un empate. Y este es Lebor. Can they use this next round of slays to tie this one up? Oh, yeah, yeah, no inventes. Le borra a hijo. What a fantastic play. Using that raffle, right, to, to re-approach the oh, gunfight. Using it effectively. <laughs> double, double. Double muerte. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's your boy Brandon Perez here, aka Louis V Titan, and you're here for the Cloud9 5K Showdown. We, of course, got Eli and Mikowski with us on broadcast today. Mikowski, welcome. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. I had a couple weeks to decompress and relax and recover after HS Arlington, but happy that Cloud9 has us right back in the mix. A couple of months, a couple of weeks, we'll call it away from the next late event, so this is a much appreciated tournament day. Yeah, shout out to Cloud9, not only for hosting this 5K tournament, but for allowing LVT to get involved. We're on the Bravo stream today, so you're going to be able to catch Cloud9 action going down until uh, they either win the tournament or they exit the tournament. And then, you know, that will become the main broadcast and they'll follow all the way through Grand Finals here on the LVT channel. We're going to take a little bit of a different route, but we'll take we'll get into that here in moments. Uh, Eli, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. Uh, Arlington was just the very beginning of what i think is going to be an amazing year of halo we finally get to see all these top teams come back into action today i mean we got literally all the top three what i call the top six are all here as well so uh, i just can't wait to get into the action today yeah absolutely and just uh, just so everybody knows right we're in a lobby we're waiting for this to get started of course we got a sending baseline on the top and they're going against tlf we'll get into that momentarily but this side of the bracket that ascending baseline is on uh it's pretty interesting is it not mikowski starting with round number three they're going to be facing sentinels and when we looked at the bracket we couldn't believe how how soon they face off against sentinels but the math involved goes back to HS Arlington, where Sentinels disappointed with a top 16 placing. Now, sending baseline probably a little disappointed that they match up so early in the bracket, but that's because Sentinels has way less points than we would have anticipated going into this event. And then on the other side of that, Eli, what do we got? I mean, we've got this Galaxy roster who I see him putting some of the Eli emotes in chat, so I know he's got to be a fantastic player. Um, <clears throat> good luck to Galaxy. And Infamy, Lethal Vixen, these guys are actually not bad at all. This is going to be a tough matchup for Gunplexion's team. I mean, I think that Gunplexion's team certainly has a lot more experience, but these are some up-and-coming players on the other side that could stand a chance. Uh, but like you said, later in the bracket here, I mean, we're looking at one of these teams would be matching against the winner of Regulators and Marauders round two, but then after that, Sentinels, after that Rebellion, after that Space Station, after that Jeez. Optic, I mean, this is a crazy side of the bracket. So yeah, I mean, Space Station proved to the world that they were the best team in Arlington with a phenomenal performance, Legend making absolute history, Stellar looking like the best player to ever do it. I mean, we're gonna see all these teams today. I cannot wait. There should be plenty of action lined up for us today. But as we speak, this first match still waiting to get started. We're here in the lobby. It looks like all the players are ready. So I imagine they're going to be starting any minute now. We got a sending baseline on the left, TLF on the right. If you know what TLF stands for, let me know because uh, I don't know. Uh, but nevertheless, Strongholds Recharge, Slayer Aquarius, and the King of the Hill Live Fire. Shout out to Cloud9 for these swanky graphics uh <laughs> what, are, what are our thoughts on this best of three here for ascending baseline i mean looking at this uh strongholds recharge you're looking at a team that likes to play very fast i mean swish complexion burden these guys are going to be flying around the map they're going to probably look to hold a trip cap for a majority of it but if they're losing numbers, they might opt to just hold two at a time. Uh, this team, a very, I would call them a vibey squad. You know, they had good vibes all around. When you listen to them communicate, I would assume it's going to be pretty easy going. They're going to communicate well with each other. That's going to be a big deal in strongholds. You got to know which strongholds you're going for, which ones you're protecting. Uh, then going into the rest of the series, I mean, these are going to be some tough game types for TLF to 
upset a team like Ascending Baseline, but uh, I'm expecting this one to go very fast. All right, boys. We're getting started in game number one. Mikowski, I'll let you take it away as uh, I sit down in the producer seat. All right, Eli, here we go. Back in the mix and back on the mic with some more Halo action. This is a the descending baseline roster, Eli, where sometimes early on in a tournament, you talk about not taking opponents too lightly, not sleeping on the competition. But I don't think this is going to be the case for ascending baseline. This is a roster, a team of four castaways, if you will, and I think still got a lot left in the tank. Swish, Conflection, Burton, Nemesis. You actually look at Conflection, he, he still got his whole career in front of him. So plenty of upside and opportunity. You look at this ascending baseline roster as they look to secure the first points of the match and B. I tell you what, man, I woke up at 9.30. I turn on Twitch. Gunflection's been live for three hours. This guy, this guy is a machine. He was also on till one in the morning. I'm playing him in matchmaking at midnight last night. Uh, the guy's just an absolute halo machine. We got a little bit of a reset, by the way, guys. But, I mean, you just got to respect somebody like Gunplexion who just... It doesn't feel like he ever stops. He, the guy's a machine. He, he's just playing all day, every day. Woke up, probably worked out this morning, ate, ate his steak and eggs, and got on Halo, and he's just been frying ever since. So, yeah, no, you're exactly right. They're not taking their competition lightly. Uh, they're ready to play. I, I was watching the stream, and Swish is like... <laughs> getting on people about holding the oddball and matchmaking. So I know that, that winning is top of mind for these guys right now. Yeah, you look at a guy like Complex and Eli, and I, I just think with all of his success, free for alls throughout his career, and more recently in 4v4, really surging online, having some decent placements on land, almost ma uh, making it out to championship bracket and full play. But I just look at a guy like Complex, and this is a guy who recognizes that the opportunity is right there in front of him, right there for the taking. And the time is now. There is no extra time to wait. His his career is right there in front of him. So I think for a guy like Complexion, maybe the reason he was on until 1 a.m. practicing and then up at 6 a.m. scrimming and getting it, getting ready for this tournament today, it's, I, I, I hear that anecdotal note from Eli, and I just think of a guy like Complexion in his career path, he is ready to take the next step. No, you're you're absolutely right. He's not wasting any opportunities. I mean, he knows that he needs to get a, a solid squad together. I think he's got a very solid squad right now. I mean, in the team this with the Swish. Best. Okay, well, yeah. I'll, I'll just say this is the best squad I've ever seen Complexion on. Is that a uh, fair on paper? I mean, on paper, yeah. On but paper. yeah, like Halo, we we all know that sometimes you put four superstars together and they're not always as good as you think they'd be. So there is a some level of communication. But I would say these four seem to be those kind of players that can just slot into rosters and be good so why not put them together and and just have a good like i said vibey squad these guys are just good communicators they know how to control the map they know how to predict the spawns they're all very aware of what's going on at all times and i think we're going to see that put on display here in recharge strongholds inflection now vibing with the shock after hitting a headshot in the b cap zone he looks for the no scope melee secures it now looking cross map to the a side as three players there for tlf looking to support Swish on that push to top A, but for now, only able to get an assist. Burton now breaking through, and Burton is going to secure A. So despite the three stack at top A for TLF, they're not able to hold. They are able to regain C, what? though, but not before ascending baseline. Continue scoring 40 and rolling. I am very curious to know what Gunflexion just said during that play, because he just shot that man four times with the shock rifle, finally gets taken down but not before a C does get converted, but this is exactly what I expected. Sending baseline, they're not gonna give anything away for free. If you wanna cap a stronghold, you're gonna have to fight someone for it. And so far it's a 60 and 0 lead and rolling now as Cynic Baseline are just forcing split spawns. It seems like they just know, look at this. He turns and looks, knows there's two members in gold, but turns and looks at C plat understanding that they're, his teammates are moving so fast that he's moving the next set of spawners to the other side of the map. Good defensive presence there from TLF to trade out, make it a 2v2 game for now, but ascending baseline do a good job to retain control of the scoring. A flips in favor of TLF, but B and C go to ascending baseline. Now it looks like they'll regain A. And that's part of that hold, Eli, that you're talking about. You love to see the A, B hold, leave the other team at C, but for now, ascending baseline, gonna go for the triple cap. They're in the triple digits, 117 and rolling with a camo up now. The secret sauce is if your movement is fast enough and your understanding of the spawn system is 
accurate enough, you can play the trip cap and just fly around the map. That's exactly what we're seeing happening with the sitting baseline to where they're making it so it's impossible for TLF to get anything. They're purposefully positioning themselves while their opponents are dead into spots so that the next set of spawn, look at that. They per just force a split spawn where two spawn C, one spawns in gold pipes by himself. Swish wins the 1v2, by the way, hits the reset, and it's a four dead for TLF. This is an absolute massacre so far for Ascending Baseline. Uh, well, if we were at Rucker Park on the blacktop, this game would have already been called 200 to zero skunk tacular as Ascending Baseline continue to roll through this early. Round one, game one matchup, 220 now on the clock, and it feels like just 20 seconds or so left in TLF's life force, but it's going to be less than that. The trip cap holds for a setting baseline. The defensive pressure and posturing is too strong. They're not going to give up a cap. C might go to TLF, but it's not going to be enough. Ascending baseline looking for the perfect game. Do they have it? Yes! 250-0 is a setting baseline. Start off the tournament as well as you could imagine. I'm not going to lie. It kind of felt like TLF threw in the towel on that last set of spawns. They're just like, look, man, just, just leave me alone, man. Just, <laughs> I'm just going to chill in the long haul, man. That man's scary with the shock rifle. Let me just chill, man. Relax. Take me to game two. <laughs> Please. Uh, it's just what it felt like seeing their character models through the, the long haul in top gold and ascending baseline. Absolutely ruthless so far in this round one matchup. Well, this is going to present problems for TLF because in game one, ascending baseline, we're slaying out. And in a best of three, this series could go quickly as they look about as as good as you can imagine, Eli. I don't think there's, uh, if you had to do a Medify VOD review with ascending baseline, you probably wouldn't have too much to tell them in that Strongholds matches. They played flawless Halo 250 to zero. I don't care who the competition is. If you sign up for a tournament, you're here to compete. You're here to win. And we rarely see that in competitive Halo. So tips to Ascending Baseline for starting off the tournament on a hot start. And got to give props to Swish. Really did a great job there. Working through the middle of the map, you allowed Gunplexion because of that. The chance to stand on all 10 toes, hit those easy shock rifle headshots, Burton and Nemesis around the periphery of the map, flanking and causing chaos as well as... They've got that perfect form, and I look at composition, Eli, and this is kind of the thing that I'm most curious about today. That's the narrative I'm looking out for, is what does the chemistry look like for this newly formed ascending baseline roster? Burton, the only remaining member on this team, but it looks like he's picked up three good, for three really good teammates that, most importantly, fit his play style. You're exactly right. I mean... Uh a lot of these guys, they really just need a, a team that communicates well and kind of thinks the same way they do. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of getting to know a lot of these guys pretty closely. And I think they do have the right, like, mesh of personality types. They're going to have fun while they play, which is an important part of Halo. Guys, don't forget, you started playing Halo to have fun, all right? So don't, don't get all checked and start talking trash to your teammates. We're here to have fun, right, guys? Right? And I, I think these guys, when they're having fun, uh, play some of the best Halo they could possibly play. I agree with you, Eli, uh, entirely. Even at the highest level of competition, this is round one. Let's say this is grand finals. When you're having fun, you're probably doing pretty well in the match. So it's a great reminder to everybody at home, have some fun. And we talked about the Rucker Park skunk earlier in basketball, 7-0 start. You just end the game and start the next one. That's the case here in game two. 7-0 start for a setting baseline. When are they going to die? Yeah, th these guys, I mean, look at this, the, the, the discipline. And we see Gunny just holding down this car bridge. I call this one of the few power positions on Aquarius. Obviously, you want to be top center, but when you sit on that car bridge, you've got a lot of sight lines to watch over your teammates who are P2. You've got complementary sight lines to the other power positions on the map. So Gunplexion certainly knows that by standing there. He also influences the spawns to be more predictable across the map. We're just seeing good textbook Halo out of Ascending Baseline here. Yeah, they've got the top mid-map control. That's uh, crucial in any symmetrical map. Then you got your rest of the three just pushing in right into the face of the competition. TLF are able to get on the board, actually make this a not a closer game. It's actually getting a little bit further. Wow, I was uh, hoping for the best there, but it's now an eight-kill game. The match looks a little bit closer, but that might be fool's gold as the sending baseline continue their domination. Perfect shots from double complexion. Kill. Geometrical bounce pass toss for the double. Triple Making kill. a triple cross map for the headshot. He looks like he's playing SWAT right now. Complexion into sending baseline. Double up and then some on the competition. 
you see the way they're playing this they just have players on both the left and right of each base once they get four dead they just push to one side and the other they know they're all trapped in in yellow base right now but there's no reason to just fly in and, and try to attack them gunny waits i kind of like this push from tlf though they wait and time it so that they push out all at the same side, understanding the strategy that Ascending Baseline is using. So I, I love to see that TLF has, haven't completely thrown in the towel. They're trying to fabricate ways out of this spawn trap, but Ascending is just too powerful in this moment. Let, let me ask you something, Eli, because this just, I think, brings up a good conversation at this point in the match. 21 to 8, Ascending Baseline with the lead. Is what we're seeing from AB duplicatable against a better team, right? Is there process being played? Do you see positioning that looks like it could work against a team like Sentinels? Absolutely. I mean, the, the only difference is I feel like once you get to Sentinels, they're playing four space very quickly off spawn. I feel like TLF, it's just taking them maybe sometimes a little bit too long to start moving out, but there's also probably just a skill gap. Like, let's just be real. If you can't hit your shots as much as or, or effectively as your opponent, it's very hard to win the game. And you've got very extremely individually skilled, some of the best individually skilled, talented players in the world on the side of Ascending Baseline. So it, there's certainly a skill gap edge, but what I like to see from Ascending Baseline is they're playing in a process that would fare well against top teams. Of course, they're gonna have to fight for their life a little bit harder against teams like Sentinels that shoot very straight as well, but it's still a good strategy. 32 to 13 here as Ascending Baseline have tripled up on the lead. Gunplexion with a triple kill earlier. He's got a 3.0 KD as well. 12, 3, and 4. Add a couple assists to the mix, and it looks even better if you add up KDA. As Ascending Baseline, could it look better at this point in the match? Everybody playing their process, but it feels like Gunplexion, Eli. This is why you brought him onto the roster. If you're Burton, sort of a, I think like a lot of Halo players, you play the role of GM in a sense. I think Burton saw what Gunny could do, the bruising amount of damage. And you know who Complexion reminds me of a little bit? Almost like a little baby Swish. So I love this team composition. I think they're going to play so well together. Uh, Swish and Complexion dueling with Burton and Nemesis, providing, a again, a guy that can push through the mid-map, stay alive, deal damage. You got two of those in Swish and Complexion, and it's boding well for them as they're looking for the 2-0 sweep, another overshield. But this time in the hands of TLF is Enthemy a good job to help clear out the base a numbers edge actually now for tlf and eli for these lower round teams this is the moment in the vod where you can go back and pause it and really dissect okay how did we get numbers advantage how can we hold it for now it's not gonna hold as four go down for tlf and sending best baseline are in the finishing stretch run yeah tlf not bad players by the way i mean uh, infamy is a streamer i want to say in ranked he's probably around onyx 1700 roughly don't quote me on that but I mean, these are really not bad players. They're just fighting against players that have immensely more experience in these situations than they do. It's very Double hard to play kill. against a team like this. So I do expect TLF to make some waves in the lower bracket, uh, assuming they do lose this one, which yeah, at this point it would take a miracle, I think, for them to come back. But now you're exactly right when it comes to Gunplexion. I mean, the, the reality is a lot of people have seen a lot in Gunplexion for a long time. It's a little yeah. perplexing why he hasn't had more I guess, chances on top teams until recently. I mean, even a lot of people think that he deserves to be on like a top eight team, you know cool what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, it, it is cool to see him kind of come together with other players that, you know, might not have had fortunate team changes in recent times, and maybe they can create some magic together. That's what I like about this roster. We mentioned the castaways, and I think that's the perfect word to use for this ascending baseline roster, and they got a chip on their shoulder. They're looking to show every teammate that they used to team with that the decision to drop them was a mistake as Ascending Baseline take the 2-0 series easy, easily here with a steak-tacular, no less. Still morning Central Standard Time here in Texas. A little steak and egg-tacular for them as they look great to start the tournament. Definitely feels good. They know that this is uh, not over yet, though. Early rounds, it's important. These tournaments can be kind of like a marathon. You got to pace yourself a little bit. You know, of course, they expected to win their round one, but they've got to stay focused and locked in. They do a play against Regulators next. Going to see who that roster is, but see if they can match some of that same firepower and teamwork against that team as well. Yeah, just really impressed there with the performance from Gunplexion. think he hit 15 or so kills and was still in the mix on assist. Wasn't uh, carelessly throwing his life away, right? Didn't have too many deaths. Played a really efficient form and version of Halo. And I think that's, again, the, the key, Eli, that you brought up. 
the, the stamina and the ability to duplicate, replicate, and scale this performance out throughout the day. Like you said, Gumplexion, been up for a while. He looks like he's on fire to start the day. Will that last, though? I think he's got a pretty good chance. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, the, these guys are all very good, like we said. I think Gunny, he's used to pulling long hours. I mean, he was up super late last <laughs> night, got up super early. You said steak and eggs. It was a steaktacular. That's what Gunny told one of his uh, viewers that he had for breakfast this morning. So there you go. Ooh. He had it for breakfast. He was prepared for the steaktaculars coming in the bracket as well. You guys fans of, a, of a steak and eggs? Just curious. Dude. Steak medium rare, Ooh. the eggs are too. I mean, maybe even more <laughs> rare for the eggs, right? You got to make sure okay. that they're not too burnt on the bottom. They're fully formed, so they're cooked uh, appropriately mm. for just the right amount of time, maybe five to six minutes. But the egg yolk has to be firm yet runny. That way you take that mm. perfectly cut cooked <laughs> steak tip medium rare, you dip it in the egg, twirl it around, mm. and then hold it above, and then just let it drop into your mouth. <laughs> Just drizzle it into onto your face. Let it drizzle. Down. Let it. Holy shit. Let it go. You might need an umbrella no. for this breakfast, but I'm telling you, it's the, be, it's the best way to enjoy breakfast. The steak and spectacular delicacy here on Hill, uh, here on LPT. All right, ladies. And I don't gents. even know what to say to that. <laughs> exactly. We got uh, ascending baseline versus regulators on the other side of this for the winner round number two. We're gonna take a quick break. In the meantime, enjoy these uh, commercials. <laughs>
Double kill.
morning and welcome back to the Cloud9 5K. Hopping on board here with Ascending Baseline and the Regulators. Eli, the Regulators are a team that we've seen throughout the offseason do uh, pretty well in some of these online tournaments. They're going up against an Ascending Baseline that just two of the competition. What can we expect from this next series? I mean, Regulators is a known FFA community, so these guys run FFAs all the time. They've got a Discord, too, by the way. Shout out to Sheezy. He's been hosting some FFA tournaments. He's playing today on this squad. But, I mean, can't, does that FFA prowess translate into 4v4? I mean, we could look at the other side, Complexion, an FFA champion. Right. Now, yep. one of the best in 4v4. So, uh, it's very cool to see this squad decide to say, you know what? Yeah, we're known for FFA, but let's put a team together, see what we can do. Uh, I'm excited to see Cardboard in action. I've had the displeasure of playing against this guy in matchmaking. He is absolutely cracked. Uh, he plays mouse and keyboard, but not the normal mouse and keyboard you would normally think. He uses what's called an Azeron. Look it up. A-Z-E-R-O-N. It's basically a little cyborg hand for your left hand for the keyboard, and he aims with a mouse. Very interesting setup for him. Yeah, we need the we need the hand cam setup for cardboard because that sounds like a well a cyborg setup. I, I can't even I quite visualize what that might look like, but cardboard for now doing pretty well with that snipe. Playing more uh, defensive here on Argyle, not pushing the envelope, not earning the mid map just yet, as he does now push up towards that location, but. With Anakin going down, the push is now on for ascending baseline. No scope to the body of Burton, though. Stops the push it now. Oh, and then there's Switch 5 on the other side of the vents. Takes down 40 MGs. And if Cardboard doesn't want to end up the exact same way as his teammate, he should not push that angle. Switch does make the sh miss the shot, but he has good centering lined up. Can he hold this position, though? Really like that jiggle peek from Cardboard. I mean, he saw his teammate's face get ripped off from vent to vent, so he knows Switch is lurking. But if he just shoulder checks it real quick, by the way, it's three dead for ascending baseline right now. They could absolutely convert this to a cap, but I like the shoulder check that the new update, that jiggle peek being a little bit more effective in the new network model. And this is an impressive start here for TLF as they get the first flag out. It's not very dangerous though, as it should get reset due to time. It does, but for now, Cardboard, Hasn't died just yet. We saw Swish line up his head previously. Wasn't able to take it. Here we go. The match is about to ensue again. Cardboard versus Swish. But for now, Cardboard senses a flank. I don't think there's one on it. And that's going to allow Swish to maintain this vent position. And he's going to have a little mini flank of his own. The two pushing through. Don't expect Swish to be there. He takes advantage of it. Gets the backs back. And now pushes well beyond that 50-yard line as a setting baseline of life. Really like to see the patience on both sides here. Neither team really overextending until it makes sense to do so. Swish gets the body shot, can't connect with the headshots. The last sniper bullet does fall off the map, though, not going to fall into TLF's hands. So one less resource for them to work with. <clears throat> Looks like Anakin going to push up, kills Gunplexion, and they've got a good push here. They know that the spawns are in, but try to touch that flag. I think maybe a little bit of desperation there. You kind of got to slay out there. The flag was likely to go back regardless. So, but either way, I mean, so far TLF, or sorry, it's not TLF, it's this, uh, regulators. So far, regulators are able to kind of, uh, I guess, ascending, make ascending baseline sweat a bit here. I think that's, I think that's one of the downsides maybe to being an, an, an FFA player, right? Or not having as much experience in 4v4, you might skip the process and really just being an underseated team going up against a professional squad like this ascending baseline roster. You sometimes see those semi-professional teams skip a step. We just saw that there as Regulators had another flag out. They've been much more aggressive, actually, than Ascending Baseline. They've had more opportunities to score, but haven't done much with it. What can they do now as Gunplexion retains control of the mid-map? Burton now with a flag out. It's Ascending Baseline's best look at a score, but Burton gets taken down quickly after. The Regulators are here to play. Nemesis here to pick up that flag run, but with a fumble, he might just go down shortly after. He does. Danger takes him down, and Eli, these four gunnies going up against again against Gunplexion are holding strong. They're doing great as the no-scope lands there for Gunplexion. Flag gets reset, and we're back to an even match. A couple minutes off the clock. Nobody really able to go get much further than the 25-yard line or so. Two flag runs for each side. Nobody able to do much with it, though. A lot of people might be surprised by how much of a fight Regulators is putting up. I mean... These guys on the Ascending Baseline roster, kind of household names, Regulators a bit less known, but I tell you what, these guys are no slouches. They are grinders. They're playing this game every single day, and they're really showing that they know how to play CTF. So far, good defensive effort from both squads. Looks like 
We're going to see an overextension here from Nemesis, trying to get some space. Uses the portal back, but Cardboard's ready for it. He saw the portal and said, I'm just going to chill here. I know that when you take damage, you're going to come back, and I'm going to shut you down as soon as you do so. It's really interesting watching Cardboard screen. Uh, you mentioned that cyborg setup he's on with a, like, a hand, uh, like a metal hand wrapping over his left hand which allows yeah. him essentially to move as if he's on controller. And I'm I'm noticing that. It looks like he's on mouse and keyboard when you see the reticle move around quickly, but his jiggle peak is that of a controller. So really interesting to see that setup, uh, not only used in a tournament, but double used well. Kill. But on the flip side, it's Burton with the double kill. Another three down for ascending baseline as they have the numbers edge. Two down still for the regulators before Burton can even get it past the 50 yard line still hasn't faced a shot this is looking like a good Ooh. one but no on the other side it's cardboard with the double kill stopping wow. the flag run stealing one of his own quickly flicking back to swish then gunplexion before shortly going down after and will that be the hero run or stop yes it will i believe that flag does get reset but three go down for regulators what a play though from cardboard huge effort snuck all the way around picked up that i believe it was the the seven minute sniper stole the other team's sniper and ascending baseline we're not aware of it you gotta pay attention to that sniper icon because as soon as it disappears you know that somebody picked it up by the way cardboard spartan looks ridiculous man looks like a <clears throat> horror movie blue bunny i don't even know what to call that but <laughs> the one-eyed cyborg cyclops this this guy is out of control with the drip on that spartan but he is making plays and shutting down ascending baseline I had a chance to Google what he's using. My God, definitely Google that. A-Z-E-R-O-N, Cyborg Gaming Keypad. That's what Cardboard's on, and that's why it looks like he's able to, <laughs> able to move as if he's on controller, but aim like he's on mouse and keyboard. Another quick flick there from Nemesis now. Takes down another opponent for regulators. Another flag out as Burton and Ascending Baseline have been here before, and they alter the route. They go the short route. They probably just pulled the regulators off guard with that run, but it gets stopped just a little bit short. Frag grenades right above there for a potential remote Ooh. detonation. You saw Woodham stop short at, his, uh, at HS Arlington because of that. And our Ascending Baseline about to get stopped just a little bit short as well. It looks like they are. The flag returning to time. Kill and Danger is going to get the reset and the double. Regulators have the momentum. They have the numbers edge. And now they have another flag out. But that flag doesn't get reset. Somehow, Nemesis pulls it. And that's going to force Danger to reset this himself. Previously looking to reset via time. Maybe get a flag out. That plan has changed entirely now as he goes down shortly after. What a huge play from Nemesis. They're not going to get the score, but Nemesis simply getting a hand on that flag keeps ascending baseline with control of the situation as things reset. At the same time, though, it kind of feels like ascending baseline. This is where the frustration sets in, I think, where they could have capped three different flags now, but they've been stopped every time by regulators. This is one of those situations where you feel like you should be steamrolling this team, but they just seem to have that ice in the moments that matter. Right now, though, Swish gonna steal the regulator sniper. This is so massive on Argyle to wow. just limit the resources. Look at this though, he gets shut down. I don't know if he was able to get that snipe off the map. He wasn't, it sits on the railing, stays on the map. And now Danger has a snipe to work with. If he can hit a shot here, could potentially get out of the base. Struggles there, those are some tough shots to hit though. I mean, facing heavy fire across the map, not easy to hit that quick scope. But regardless, the fact that they're able to salvage that sniper after Swish stole it is pretty massive. Sending a baseline, earning more slays, but it's regulators earning the more timely slays. As maybe we see another example of that as danger defensively. Gets the snipe, gets the no scope, gets the cleanup on Nemesis, and single handedly thwarts the push from ascending baseline. And Eli, you talked about the three runs. Should have been should be a game over by now. 3-0 for ascending baseline. They have a three team wipe lead in the slay category as well. So the regulators are icing up. Can they show a little bit more though? Because it's gonna take much more than just simply triple evening kill. the score as Swish earns another triple. Could have been an overkill, but instead, 40 MGs will be on the respawn screen. Anakin at the back flag. Swish looking to protect it. Could potentially do so with just a simple no scope to the body here. Doesn't need to get the slays, Ooh. just needs to be that gatekeeper as he keeps 40 MGs from pushing much further off his spawn. Back to the respawn screen once again. And this looks like it's gotta be a score now for ascending baseline, right, Eli? Swish single-handedly willing that flag run. I mean, he got 
several snipes in a row. Also, I was worried that 40 MGs would catch him off guard. Yeah, that player had actually spawned pretty close to Switch without Switch realizing it. Yeah. But Switch, as soon as he realizes it, throws a perfect grenade, gets the nade shot, shuts that player down. That was the last player in line that could have stopped that flag cap. Huge plays out of Switch. He's now 26 and 11 in this game with nine assists as well. Not a surprise after what you and I have seen out of Switch over the years. Yeah, we go down though for ascending baseline, a little delayed onset counter cap potentially here for regulators. If not for complexion, clearing out the spawn. Two kills, does a great job to defend that 1-0 lead in the end game with two minutes left. That was huge. And going back to that play from Switch, Eli, I love how Switch with all four spawning up for regulators, didn't think like, oh, I got to get the overkill here or headshots. He just simply put shots down, got damage down. And now we see, oh, I'm so disappointed for Complexion. It looked like he caught that. No aim is needed. Almost a frosty type play there from Complexion. The flag does not get much further. It actually gets stuck in the geometry there. You can see it uh, with that last third person kind of point of view as to how that flag got stopped. Didn't get grappled into Complexion's hand. Instead, sending baseline, going to have to Settle for a 90 second, uh, uh, excuse me, a one score lead with 90 seconds left. Really like the thought process there. Using the grapple from a safe position to pull the flag to you. Definitely a heads up play, but the problem is you need a clear, I guess, route for that flag to go through. That flag pole is pretty tall, and if it hits the ceiling, it gets stuck and stopped short. So you kind of need a little bit more open space for the flag to travel to get into your hands. And that flag actually gets returned. We are winding down to one just just one minute on the clock. Cardboard and company gonna have to put something together here. Looks like Nemesis has a sniper. Cardboard gets the body shot though to take him out of the play. But look at the teamwork from ascending baseline, wow. just swarming cardboard. They know how powerful this man is with the sniper. You know they played against each oh! other all the time in matchmaking. And look at this. He was he didn't realize he was out of ammo for the last shot, but huge <laughs> shots up, out of yeah, he had it ready <laughs> if there was extra rounds in the clip. But what a massive play from cardboard. I don't think it's going to be enough for them to convert it into a flag cap, though. They're just not in the right positions. 30 seconds left, three up on each side, and a sniper in the hands of Swish Fives, sitting at 28, 13, and 13, Woo. make it 29, having a huge performance. Lowest deaths on the squad until he goes down there, but most kills, most assist. Swish leading the way here with the little Swish take my fish opportunity to get the chat excited about his gameplay and his performance as he's been the all-star of this match, leading ascending baseline, what looks like a game one victory, huge performance out of Swish, and a big win for a setting baseline against the regulator squad. That was extremely pesky to play against. I mean, I'll be honest, they got the W, but I feel like they're probably not happy with it. They, they probably think this game should have been over 10 minutes ago if they were able to secure some of those caps. I mean, a few fumbles along the way. Grapple wasn't used exactly efficiently in the right space. You know, it's a it's a dub, but one that I feel like Ascending Baseline is going to feel like they want to learn from. They want to see, like, why why was that so hard? And I, I think a, a big reason for that is regulators. I mean, they're just playing very well. A lot of hit snipes for both teams. Ultimately, I think it was uh, Ascending Baseline that had control of more sniper rifles throughout the game, but... Man, it felt like whenever Cardboard got his hands on it, he was making some big plays. Double and you talked about Cardboard, Eli. And ever since you mentioned his setup at home with the uh, Cyborg hand, uh, yeah. he, he, so he foregoes the keyboard Snipe. for this device. And again, I'm not going to try to explain it. You just got to look it up, Google it, because it's much better to just do that. But what I think, Eli, is I think we're witnessing our first ever left stick gamer on mouse Triple and keyboard. Uh, I don't know how to break that down or analyze that. Just a quick thought from, from me as to what we saw from Cardboard. And I, I think it's important to mention his performance. I think everybody else on his squad went negative in that game one. Cardboard, I think, even or plus one, but he really earned the timely slays. And the snipes at the end that, if not for running out of ammo, looked like it could have spurred a potential pull in an overtime sequence. So. And I cardboard here in game two. It's going to be a slayer. The only objective is to get those slays and to stay alive. And I feel like cardboard could provide a, a little bit of a, a little bit of pressure on this ascending baseline roster, actually.
I think you're exactly right. I mean, the thing is with recharge, it is so much about playing perimeter space, about fighting together. It's about coordination, really. Like you have to be pushing multiple parts of the map across the map from one another with the right sight lines with your squad. So communication's got to be on point. I know for a fact the communication's on point on the side of uh, ascending baseline. Haven't heard regulators, so I can't say for sure what their communication sounds like, but these are all very capable players. If they can play together, they can certainly make life difficult for ascending baseline. All right, and it looks like we, I think one of the players is restarting their game. So it's gonna be a, a couple minutes here before we jump into it. Uh, what, what are you looking out for on the side of, or which player, I guess I would ask, on the side of Ascending Baseline, do you think is going to pop off here in this game too? I want to watch Gunplexion. I want to see if he can replicate some of the nice shots that we saw with the shock rifle. In a previous game too, on, on Recharge Slayer, he had a great performance. He was the top Slayer. And I asked, can Ascending Baseline duplicate this type of performance against a better squad? I think he got four better players individually on regulators. So I'm looking to see how that all adds up for Gunplexion and this roster for a setting baseline. Do we see the same performance from him? I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge him to do exactly what he did in that previous recharge slayer. I think he's up for it. No, I think you're right. And a lot of people say that uh <clears throat> the shock rifle might be a bit harder on M and K, but I feel like of all the people that could pop off with it, I think cardboard could be that guy with the shock rifle. I mean, we've seen a lot of really talented mouse and keyboard players. Shout out to Wootum. Everybody's been talking about this kid and you know, I've seen him pop off with the shock rifle. So we know it's possible, but uh, man, you're facing against some very talented shock rifle players. I've seen Swish do unbelievable things to people with it. Uh, same with Gunplexion. It's gonna be a tough one for the regulators. I think <clears throat> unlike in round one, where the other team had gotten heavily outslayed. There was a little bit of that in uh, this round as well for the regulators, but it was the timely slays that have me hopeful. Maybe it's just hopium, but hopeful for their chances here in a Slayer game two. That's the role, right, of the underdog to, to take a game two. And I think there's a 50-50 chance we see that here. So this is gonna be a little bit more difficult for ascending baseline in this round, but almost a benefit that they go right back to the well where they had previous success. It feels like they were just slaying out on recharge five minutes ago. So they can just replicate that success they had in that previous round. I think we should see a 2-0 sweep, but I'm not gonna hold uh, I'm not gonna hold out hope for the regulators because of what we saw. And if Cardboard can bring that MVP cyborg level of performance here to game two, this could be a one-one series. Yeah, and it looks like servers were down momentarily wait someone in chat says they might be back up Hopefully. oh there it is no google search needed lbt halo production has got you covered there it is that's the azeron i believe he just sent this to you, eli <clears throat> yeah so cardboard i've been talking to him in dm because i was pretty sure he used this but i wanted to double check before i said something faded on the broadcast you know it's always good to check your sources guys don't just spout nonsense if you're not 100 percent sure but i double checked with him and he uh, decided to send me this picture. This is his Azeron. This is what his left hand sits in while he has the mouse wow. in his right hand. So uh, pretty crazy looking device here, but it's it kind of unlocks your movement, right? Like you have a joystick on your left hand, so you're not pressing WASD yes. on the keyboard. And then each finger is a different action. So I imagine he has like interact, like pick up weapon on maybe the index finger. We'll have to get his exact setup at I'm some so point, but it's a cool device. I'm so glad you sent that, right? I'm so glad Cardport sent that because I was watching that in, game, in round one, game one, and I'm like, how is, why does this look, look like left stick aiming on mouse and keyboard? I've never seen this before. It's truly a unique POV to witness here on LBT Halo and a little bit of a behind the scenes look at exactly what the setup looks like for these players. And I guess, I guess you have to go into what, some kind of software and input match each, you know, your pinky ring, middle and index to what, of uh, what he does on mouse and keyboard. I mean, I'm, this this is clearly way over my pay grade and way over my head as far as uh, setups are concerned. I'm used to either playing on mouse and keyboard or controller, but not both. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of best of both worlds, right? I mean, we're, we're in a new age of gaming right now. There's new input devices that are making players better than ever. Um, now, Game I don't Changer, know. 
Game Saver yeah, does, but that's keyboard. It's literally keyboard and mouse. This is something different. This is quite literally a cyborg abomination. Well, you're talking about, or you meant to say uh, key controller and mouse. Sorry, controller and, that's right. Yeah, controller and mouse. So it, it's similar concept, but maybe a bit more ergonomic. So both your hands are kind of in the same resting position-ish uh, while you're using it. I, I, I don't know, man. Is this the future? When, in 2030, is everyone going to be using these to, to compete in tournaments? Uh, it's hard to say, but it certainly looks futuristic. I think... I think you'd need, like, ignorance is bliss, right? I think you'd need a fresh start. I think you'd need to have never played on mouse and keyboard before. And then you could look at this and say, okay, let me try it, right? Because I feel like it's the muscle memory that would be the weirdest thing to develop. And I think you, when you talk to Cardboard, how long did it say it took him to get used to this? I actually don't know. I, di I didn't ask him. I, do, I did tell uh, you guys in the break that I had a student that switched to this. It took him two months or so to to adjust to it so it's definitely very different he says oh he's in chat right now transitioning from mnk to azeron was actually pretty smooth so there oh, wow. you have it folks took me well, only a week himself, or so i mean say that. maybe if you're a god it only takes you a week but i feel like a normal human probably takes a little longer than that uh but worth a shot though i do if think once you have that muscle memory down i actually think this is an advantage a hundred percent and again it goes back to be you know one of the greatest strengths of a Halo player, one of the you know top tips that you've heard for a, just average players, oh, just use your left stick to aim if you're missing, right? He's got that with the precision accuracy, and now aim assist uh, after the patch from 343 to completely optimally dominate the competition. So I'm, I'm excited to watch more cardboard as he brings an entirely new setup to the HGS. I mean, can somebody send one of these to Wootum and see That's what he does? I was just wondering, dude. Like, what would Wootum do on this? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he's already one of the best in the However, business. However, though, yeah. Wootum has never played on controller. He told us he's never, ever played on controller. So I don't know um, if that left stick would benefit him. I feel like this is probably the best for someone who's played on controller their whole life and wants to experiment on mouse and keyboard. Whereas with Wootum, he's, he's just simply played on MK his entire life. So cool, man. Yeah, we're seeing all kinds of new stuff. I feel like there's still some debates to be had about, you know, controller and mouse. Because I believe con currently in HCS rules, they say you got to pick one or the other. You got to either be controller or mouse and keyboard. You can't do a hybrid setup. I think it's actually needed to. Right. But I mean, as I feel like as time goes on, maybe these things will be more accepted. Uh, and I don't know. Well, we'll have to see how things pan out in that regard. Well, after a little bit of a reset with the servers, it looks like we're getting everybody back into the lobby and back into the action. This is your Cloud9 $5,000 showdown. The B-Stream with Mac and Eli taking you guys along for all of the action over here on LVT Halo. And just want to give a quick thanks as we have a stop down in the action <laughs> to everybody in the community. You guys brought the thunder brought us quite literally to hs arlington with your support subscribing to the channel i know sometimes sitting through ads in between games if they are in game it's always twitch's fault not ours remember that uh but, <laughs> right but yeah huge thanks to the community you guys really put us <clears throat> on your back in the off season and have us ready for an entire slate of land action and also eli our own land in may so again could not have done that without the community support you guys being here uh, is going to lead to some incredible experiences throughout the year and for Halo, both online and on land. Your support simply means more Halo. So if you want more Halo, support LVT because we will be bringing you guys the action. We plan to all year long. And uh, we're going to kick it off here with Nemesis, who gets shut down pretty quick. Kind of the only player on a sitting baseline that had a look at camo. And this is a great looking start for regulators. Looks like 40 MGs able to get the camo. Danger starting off hot with three and O, oh, and I think he's also got the shock rifle. And that's a little bit of a trickle down from that game one. Regulators losing in game one, but we noticed throughout, get a lot more of the timely slays. That allows them to earn camo at the start of this match, but 40 MGs not able to do much with it. Danger though, with the shock rifle, evening out the score a little bit with that headshot swish. 
on the flank through the gold frags has some shots he has gun plexion now pushing through as well three members of the red side pushing through into a and this lockdown hold is not going to be locked down for very long as three go down for regulators and gun plexion now has the shock in his hand that's going to be a priority for them is to take him down quickly because he will pop off with the remaining two shots he has now just one imagine for gun plexion it could be a double but no it actually be a moot point 10.53, so at 9.53, we're going to see that shock rifle or so, 10, 9.53 or so, that shock rifle back on the screen. Let's see who grabs it and who has the edge. It looks like regulators might with those gold spawns. Shout out to LVT Brandon, by the way, in production. Added a little bit of bass to the gameplay sound. That shock rifle sounds beefy when it gets shot. Love the sound of that. And uh, you're exactly right. I mean, the shock rifle dominates this map in game mode specifically. Right now, it is Gunplexion, who knows the time. We'll have to see if they elect to just hold gold until it spawns. It's now going to be up in about 20 seconds here. But look at this. Nemesis playing on the catwalk. Going to try to just keep regulators trapped at sea, which is a good strategy here when they know both the camo and the shock rifle are coming up. Makes sense that Ascending Baseline want to keep them held back so they can get those items for themselves. Sending baseline with possession of the lead, the cross, and now Camo as Gunplexion picks it up. Could rotate over to Camo and pick that up, but for now he wants to help Swish. The cardboard! Where did that grenade come from? Gunplexion probably just as shocked as I am, as what looked like a strong push through the tower is going to get dismantled. Three go down for ascending baseline, and it's now just a two-kill game. Regulators keeping it close. They've also, I think, got the Camo here. Complexion knows this player is hiding here. 40 MGs gets shut down immediately. Love this push. Good communication. And the bait and switch is on. It is a two for one trade in favor of ascending baseline in that moment. That does extend their lead to three. And I'd like to see regulators take a bit more space. It feels like they've just kind of been waiting at sea, maybe electing right. to, to trap, I guess, might be the thought process. But when you're not in the lead, you're incentivized to move. You know, all the time that comes off the clock plays against you until you have that lead. Yeah, back of C on recharge, not quite as disadvantageous as back of A on solitude, but hitting that familiarity, I'm getting that vibe as regulators have had their back against the wall far too often. Still in this Ooh. game, it's still a six point match, but as the setting baseline control more and more of the map, get more and more shock rifle as we see Swish, he was the next one to grab that. And it's really been all shock rifle control for ascending baseline and Eli in a four kill game. That's the difference. You're exactly right. <clears throat> the space is everything. And it feels like every time we see regulators, it just feels like they're in a corner somewhere. Now in A, another place that's easily collapsed on if your opponents know about it. As we see Gunplexion coming in from the gold pipes area, probably telling his teammate to push in from white. That's why we see Burden immediately responding and coming in. Gonna make this a very difficult fight. They're actually do a good job to get one kill in a situation like that where they could have easily just gone down with none. But uh, it just feels like Ascending Baseline have been building this lead by having more space on the map. That's been the difference. Outside of that first camo for regulators, it's been all camo for AB, all shock rifle. And you brought up a great point, Eli. All trade net positive wins for Ascending Baseline as well. Even in those instances where they trade out, they're getting the plus one and they're inching their way now towards a big lead, 32 to 23, 730 left on the clock as Swish continues on with the last remains of this camo. Once again, regulators all in A, the push comes in and perfect execution of the trap. The collapse comes through. Regulators do find a way to make it into tower, but is it enough? Now they're just spawning it at the seaside. And I think Nemesis is just going to walk happily down long haul to hit the right side while his teammates hit the left side. Gunplexion is going to find a perch to use the shock rifle from. Battle a great place to do it. And this lead has just grown ever so slightly as time has gone on. Danger putting up a big game, 13 and 8. Cardboard not finding the same level of success he did on Argyle. And I don't know, man. This just feels like it's a teamwork diff so far for AB. Yeah, I'll play devil's advocate and say it's a little bit of a mini win for regulators to not even be down by as much as I feel like they should be considering the entire game has been played off the back foot, off the back wall. Regulators have never had the opportunity to push out, be proactive, and swarm the competition. I feel like so often, Eli, you watch Halo, you're expecting both teams to have moments where they swarm. We have not seen that from regulators because of that ascending baseline, digging it, uh, uh, building an even bigger lead here to go down for the time being. 
but it looks like unless regulators can have a strong surge in the end game it's gonna be a 2-0 sweep once again for ab they do get a couple of kills plus two now in favor of regulators through that last interaction but they're running out of kills to work with they only have eight deaths that they can afford spurton finds one of them looks like swish is going to push in this trade is not good for regulators every single point that adds up gets closer to their trip to the lower bracket cardboard gets some great shots down range it looks like 40 mg is able to finish that one off from the glass area but he gives up his positioning you have to think he could have probably just stayed top gold achieved the same result and been in a less precarious position instead he gets taken down swish swoops in for the camo and with three kills to go this one is over hunter yeah ascending baseline are going to take this series 2-0 i like the regain in that sense for ascending baseline in this game too where process not as tight in game one uh we, we, we said it could have been almost a 4-0 victory because of how many times ascending baseline should have scored but here in game two i think they really took it to the regulators didn't offer them the space to move around the map didn't see the same level of efficiency or even highlight moments like we saw from uh, regulators in game one as ascending baseline will take game two 50 39 another sweep in their back pocket as these have all been warm-ups for what lies in wait next sentinels you're exactly right That's, that was the first thing that came to mind it's like yeah they look really good in these first two series but they're gonna face an entirely different beast come round three sentinels you have to imagine after their performance at arlington we all know sparty was not feeling good apparently he was sick i think he's feeling a lot better now and i think that's a scary sentence to hear for a lot of the other players in the competition but to run into these guys round three is not a fun thing to say the least will sentinels be able to bounce back and prove just how good they are when sparty is healthy yeah i'm really curious how ascending baseline respond to their first defensive opportunity their first moment where it's sentinels who are swarming them i almost feel like that is a disadvantage that in this previous series i guess outside of game one but in game two in the slayer at least which is the middle part of these series they're all best of three until the winner lower and grand finals i want to see how ascending baseline play off their back foot i want to see how ascending baseline defend against the swarm didn't get a chance to see that in game two uh, keep an eye on it in game one of this next series against sentinels because they are absolutely going to be swarming the hell out of ascending baseline you're exactly right and tons of awesome matches coming up for you guys we are going to switch into a quick break but don't go anywhere on the other side we'll have sentinels versus sending baseline
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here for wow, round number three. We got a sitting baseline versus Sentinels, and I still got Mac and Eli here. I want to hear y'all's thoughts on this because obviously very, very poor seating by Sentinel standards coming out of the Arlington tournament. Uh, Eli, let's start with you. What do you think about this matchup? I mean, I'll be honest, like I'm a biased caster, however you want to spell it in chat. I know they're all going to spell it wrong, of course, but I'm biased for Sentinels. These are some of my favorite players to watch. I mean, I have a lot of faith in Boo Boo Doo Boo, Lethal, Falcate, Aspari. I mean, the whole roster, really. So it was an absolute shock, not just to me, but I think to everybody when they finished top 16, not winning a single series in pool play. But then we come to find out Sparty thought he was going to pass out, uh, just to, to, did not feel very good at the tournament. So uh, they ended up performing very poorly. I think that this is kind of their redemption arc, though, to show that that was just a fluke and that they are one of the best teams in the tournament. All eyes are on Sentinels and how they regain and bounce back from what, what was a, an anomaly of a, of a performance, an absolute shock to the scene. Sentinels top 16, but that doesn't seem like it's going to stick throughout the rest of the year as ascending baseline going to try to take advantage of this Topsy turvy moment in Sentinel's timeline here in HCS Season 3 as we kick off our first game, King of the Hill, on Live Fire. This is going to be a very interesting one. Now, when I think of Sentinels, I think of very coordinated, structured, by-the-book gameplay. These guys know how to create wins against literally anyone. So I expect them to prioritize the correct space on the map for each hill. They're going to seek to have that anchor point. Right now, I think the anchor point is going to be the tower side. And if Lethal can hold on to the sniper rifle, they might just get this entire hill uncontested. Enemy and did they get camo too? Because if, if they did, then my goodness, camo, snipe, and hill in favor of Sentinels to start off the game. That's very rare. You see the both the sandbox kill. and the score go to both teams. Is it Swish actually on the other side? Falcated, the only player alive on the map. It's going to be a 1v1 for now, but Swish loses Ooh. it. Falcated, despite not having camo, he's got the camo eyes. <laughs> and with just one second left needed for Sentinels, ascending baseline are going to revert and go next. Worth mentioning, Boo Boo Doo Boo and Swish, former teammates, used to team on that G1 roster. I don't think there's any bad blood between them, though. I've actually seen them playing together pretty recently, but uh, they kind of know what each other goes for. I know Swish knows the Boo Boo Doo Boo playbook, knows that this man is going to be prioritizing certain things, and I wonder if he's going to use that to his advantage, maybe try to use some counter strategies, but so far, the Sentinel strategies are just too strong. It seems like the slays so heavily in the favor of Sentinels that Ascending Baseline cannot get anywhere on the map yet. Boo Boo Doo Boo, Swish's former teammate, Sparty McFly, Swish's former roommate, and it seems like they got the book on him. So far, it's working out. Not a single slay yet for Switch to start off this game, and it's almost already a 2-0 lead for Sentinels. Is that familiarity playing into their favor? But for now, we go down. Sparty goes down as well. Complexion! He's the one causing all that chaos over by the screen door. As he takes down three, can he make it a team wipe on Falcated? He's got Burton helping out, but Falcated with the geometrical grenade, cheeky with it, takes down Complexion. As Sentinels maintain a big lead, but for now, we're seeing the first stretch scoring for setting baseline. Burton getting a little bit greedy with the combo there. I think he might have been more effective to just have the bandit out, but two members of Sentinels do shut him down. And despite what looked like a triple kill that could have got Ascending Baseline back into this, Sentinels have the hill. Burton does get the camo, but Sparty wants to shut it down right away. Burton does ice up and hit the shots there. But Sparty's play just took camo out of the equation for long enough for his team to cap it lethal last player live on sentinels currently so this is the first time that ascending baseline will be first to set their feet in the hill and they continue to get some slays here burden with the camo but i think with all of those spawns occurring on the other side the opposite side of the map it would take him at least maybe 15 seconds to get back into the action probably has 15 seconds left to camo because of that he decides to maintain his positioning in the hill earns about 15 plus seconds of time for ascending baseline and with a 2-0 deficit, they need this next hill. Still plenty of time, so if it were to go to 3-0, probably still have enough time to come back, but that just seems like a far too uphill of a battle for ascending baseline against this Sentinels roster who hasn't been able to push through on this particular hill, and they're going to go next. They're not going to contest Burden and ascending baseline accruing all of the time for his team have now made it just a one score game Enemy team took the this is that experiential understanding that there's no point in throwing your body at a hill that has a low likelihood of working out love this play from sentinels they said okay 
Let's give that up. Let's set up on the other half of the map and give ourselves a great chance to cap the fourth hill instead of risking it. And so far, it's paying off. They're already almost halfway through this hill, have not lost tower control yet, but I have to imagine there's members of Ascending Baseline pushing through on the other side to try to win the tower before they get into this hill. It's not easy to concede, especially as one of the best Halo players in the world, to say, GG, we don't got this. But for Ascending Base, or excuse me, for Sentinels, that decision to concede that third hill give it to ascending baseline and rotate to the next has given them the advantage but by how much ascending baseline are fighting back they're now in the hill scoring and with the setup on the tower side burton could gatekeep any more scoring for sentinels and tie things up love the positioning from nemesis here this is one of the spots that i tell people to play during this hill if you just sit right there at the concrete catch people unsuspected coming out of big door or sandbags Nemesis gets a very clutch double kill, and Ascending Baseline have just as much hill time. This next fight going to be so important. If Ascending can win some slays here, they could secure this hill and potentially tie things up here. Sentinels started off strong. Now it's Ascending Baseline with a strong answer back. But just as I say that, four go down. That's going to give Sentinels at least the next 10 seconds of time. It's going to put them on the precipice of making it a 3-1 game with 3.30 left on the clock. Sending baseline are still in it, but they need to find a way to break through here. It looks like they're going to utilize the mid map and the camo side to do just Ooh. that as Burton wins his one on Sparty with the MK sidekick. Lethal cleans him up, though. Sparty does enough damage to trade that out as two trade out. 2v2 for now. Double kill for Lethal as they do, in fact, secure the hill. Three to one now for Sentinels as Ascending baseline going to have to figure out a way to hold this mosh pit top mid hill. Enemy team took the hit. With the two hill lead, Sentinels looking very strong to close this out. This is not impossible for Ascending Baseline, but they're going to have to kill this man on your screen first. Booboo Dooboo -boo just holding it down the line here at the tower. Teammate in the hill. If he can get some kills wow. with the AR. Love the skin, by the way. Looks like a red, almost like a futuristic Halo 1 skin. That's like an oxymoron. I don't know how that works out, but regardless, Booboo -boo finds the kill, and that's a big one to get. If they can hold on to the tower, they could certainly lock down this hill, but they actually lose it. It's now ascending baseline, the ones in the hill, and Sentinels are going to have to play their way around the map to try to earn that tower position back. Wish drops with the Blasm Pistol combination, trades out. Numbers edge, though, for Sentinels as they take down two for ascending baseline. Despite the numbers disadvantage, Gun is going to try to sneak a couple of time, but instead he takes a couple shots, gets cleaned up by that grenade from Falcated, and Burton. Really, the last line for opportunity. He's got the high ground. He's got the snipe. He's got to stay alive of ascending baseline. Won a chance to win this game. This is so important right now for Burton to hold on to this snipe and get some slays. Gunny dies in the hill. Enemy team took oh, like someone got... with the overkill. It's That's going to give ascending baseline the edge. Sandals with just a quarter left on it, but ascending baseline might just make it a one score game once again. I think Sandals are going to come hard off this spawn, though. Look at this. Boo Boo with the flank on the sniper player. Gets it. Kill Swish. There was not enough time while they had four dead to finish the hill. Sentinel still fighting very hard for it. Right now, Lethal, the one that had tower for a moment, but he goes down. This is an all-out brawl, but it looks like Sentinels, if they can get this slay, will edge it out. No. It's being contested. Ascending baseline in it. This is going to come down to right here, right now. Case grenades going out, and it's going to be enough to keep complexion alive and in the hill. The last Spartan standing. But by standing top mid in that hill, he's brought Ascending Baseline back. Eli, this is maybe much more of a fight than we expected from Ascending Baseline. But for now, Sentinels have the lead. Three minutes left on the clock. That really shows you how much these teams are prioritizing the score as it heads back to that initial spawn point. Over on the B side, two down for Sentinels. And Ascending Baseline, despite the early scoring for Sentinels, they should be able to match, if not regain the lead. Falcon at last player alive. If he overextends, he could cause a staggered out spawn situation, but wisely affects back to the camo side to regroup with his squad. Sentinels with a chance to stop ascending baseline. Ascending baseline don't have any hill time for now. Instead, Swish and Burton go down. Looks like maybe a little bit of a misplay as Boo Boo goes down. Three go down for ascending baseline, and Sentinels are able to regain control of this map and this hill. I have to agree that looked like a positioning misplay. Right. A bit of a blunder there from Nemesis, kind of just hopping around under the nest and finds himself in a precarious position. Gets shut down. You have to get some high ground positions. Get on the nest. Get to the tower. Get to sandbags. Get in that sneaky spot on the on the concrete, like we said. But that misplay might have been the difference here. They had a chance. 
to secure this hill, but the positioning just was not there in that moment from ascending baseline. I, I hope they can get that sorted out and make the next game a bit more close. Yeah, a 4-2 finish. But it was, I don't know, is it final score, you might think, oh, okay, Sentinels had that. But, man, there were multiple moments in the match where ascending baseline had us thinking, okay, maybe they can do it. However, Eli, they also had us thinking back to that winner's round two matchup, game one on Argyle, where you're thinking they should already be, uh, they should already have won this game 3-0. They were playing inefficient Halo. The timing just wasn't right. It wasn't quite there. And now against the Sentinels roster, you're really going to pay for that. And I think the greatest example of that was when it looked like AB had the positioning. They had Double someone at nest. They had B covered. They had numbers advantage, but they were not getting hill time. They almost seemed to be caught off guard when Sentinels did push. But nonetheless, Sentinels do take that game one win. And sending baseline in a best of three need the game two to stay alive in the upper side of the bracket. But I think we should have a pretty good one here as we did in game one and game two. Yeah, right there we saw Swish maybe getting impatient with that camo play, slid out to reveal himself, and I think that's why Falcated won Double that fight. Kill. A little bit impatient. Took the hill. That was the first hill. Here we've got Lethal in this top mid hill that came down to the wire. Seems like both teams are just trading kills back and forth, fighting for tower positioning. That positioning so important right here. Gunplexion, the one that stays alive just long enough to secure this one. Sentinels just needed one or two seconds to keep them alive, but in the end, it was Sentinels that iced up to secure the victory. Moving into Solitude Slayer. Now, throughout the offseason, we had those 2v2 tournaments presented by LVT. We had the 4v4 tournaments. We had the Mountain Dew tournament. We had a lot of different tournaments, right? But one thing that I remember vividly is Boo Boo Doo Boo and Sparty's absolute dominance on this map. I mean, they even had a team name, Solitude. Like, that was their team name. They, <laughs> these guys know how to play on this map, and I swear on everything, this man, Boo Boo Doo Boo, has camo shock more than anybody, but a sitting baseline do shut him down, so they're not going to feel the wrath that is Boo Boo Doo Boo camo shock. Let's see if they're able to flip that into their possession and maybe get an early lead that they could hold on to. That's a big win condition for ascending baseline. Do not allow Boo Boo Doo Boo, one of the best players in the world with that camo power up, to earn it off the start. Would have had the shock as well. So big reason why we see a 6-6 six, six score here. Ascending baseline able to hold the line. And I think I saw Nemesis holding onto the shock as well. As for now, Boo Boo Doo Boo takes his space at the top of tower. This is the positioning that they're known for. Force the other team to spawn in Tram and Yard. Watch all their exit points. It's an easy recipe to build a lead. They will collapse on the spawn points as they move in this direction. Falcated, actually, as Falcated moves in this direction, the rest of his team kind of dies around the map. So he's unable to be a part of any of those fights or clean up on any damage. That's going to mean Ascending Baseline are able to tie it up nine to nine. How does Sentinels play off their back foot here? We'll have to see. For the first. And slays. This one's been about virtually tied throughout. No team able to earn any separation. Once uh, one team scores a point, the other team matches that. As we see just that. And first to 10 is ascending baseline, but Sentinels tie it right back up. Now regaining the lead. Numbers edge quickly dwindling for ascending baseline as three go down. It's going to give a two kill edge to Sentinels as Falcated cleans up on the back of A. And look at this disadvantageous spawns for ascending baseline on the cafe side. Could pinch that. Falcated goes down to low shield stone. That's going to send him back to the dip. Nice little jump maneuver here. He's going to get it right back to the high ground. I love that play there from Falcated. And I love Sentinel's ability to utilize the positioning to earn this camo. This game might be kind of confusing from Gunplexion's point of view. He's 9-3, and three, but they're down by 4. It just feels like the rest of Ascending Baseline unable to finish kills in these moments. Keep in mind, there's still parts of it. Got 8 assists across the board there. About half the kills. But, man, it just feels like Sentinel's are just playing the positioning of the map just a little bit better. Love to see the way Sparty runs away. Boo Doo covering his back. Make sure Sparty gets away safely. And now they're just trying to locate the next set of spawners to continue building this lead. Now Boo Boo Doo esque play there from Sparty with the camo. So disciplined as he allowed that player for ascending baseline to take the lift. Stared at him for a couple seconds and then took his shots when the time was right. As Sparty earns a little bit of value out of that camo. And now, just like that, you thought that a little bit of value out of the camo might have meant a little bit of a lead for Sentinels. But no, they're up two team wipes now, 24 to 16. Where did this game go? I know, and uh, even worse is Boo Boo has the shock rifle. We've been talking about how good he is with camo, but I would argue he's one of the best 
with this gun. I mean, Bound's quoted as saying that he's only good with the shock rifle. <laughs> a person like Bound <laughs> giving you any compliment at all, uh, you know, you got to be pretty good with it, right? So <laughs> here he goes. Let's see if he can string together some headshots. They're up by 10 out of nowhere. Like you said, this just seems like a lead came out of nowhere. And this is kind of what we expected out of Sentinels. Especially for a game, Eli, that was just inching forward. 10, 11, 11, 12, tie, tie. I mean, where did this game go? 31 to 19 now. And you mentioned Gunplexion. This is especially confusing confusing because he's popping off. On the other side, Falcated matching him with 11 slays of his own. And I feel like Falcated is reaching almost into that MVP territory, right? We talked about Sparty maybe being a Dark Horse pick for MVP, but maybe that conversation is tilted more towards Falcated now. As more often than not, he seems to be the one icing up, leading the squad, especially in these Slayers. Sparty's right behind him at 10 and 3. Falcate at 11 and 3. And it is so good, Eli, to see Falcate, or excuse me, to see Sparty feeling well. There was just, you could tell by watching his POV, something wasn't right with Sparty. Great to see him uh, understanding what's going on and getting back on the, the healthy track and to see him back performing to the likes of which we're used to. Love to see that from Sparty as he does ultimately go down. But it looks like Sentinel's in full control of this one. Yeah, look at this. Great plays out of Gunny once double again. Kill. Big double kill with a three-shot beatdown. Trying to keep his team in it, but I think it's too little too late. Falcated, by the way, had a killing frenzy. I don't know if you saw that on the screen, but he started the game one and three and then got ten straight. So Falcated absolutely coming to life. Love that Sentinel's charm, by the way. Pretty slick. Reminds me of the companion cube in Portal 2. Shout out to the Portal players in chat. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, this one looking over that stick and it secure the trade and now ascending baseline just have to make sure They don't get staked here in this one. I love that play there from Falcate and uh, this is the one moment I don't have the shots. Let me just trade out with the sticky speaking of shots There's Sparty earning the body shots double kill ironically enough utilizing that high ground and the swift slide movement off the ledge to take down two is only two kills needed left, 48 to 30 here as Sentinels looking to secure a potential stake tacular and they do. Wow, what a moment for Sentinels. Their first time on broadcast since HCS Arlington. They slipped and fell on land, but looking like they're back online here as they put together a strong 2-0 sweep. Very important for them to bounce back in this way. I think just for the arc of their team overall, they've got to show that it was a fluke in Arlington. They've got to pop off in their next available opportunity. They've already started to do so, but I tell you what, their next round, uh, they're going to be regretting their placing at Arlington. Their seating means that they will be running into Space Station in the next round. So the event champions facing off against Sentinels in round four, not something you'd expect, but it is because of that seating, like we said. You know what seed Sentinels come into this tournament with? Because I feel like regardless, no matter what it is, it's going to be a shock to the system. We're used to seeing them in the top six, but I imagine they're... Wouldn't they have no. to be 16 if they're playing the one seed right now? I guess, yeah, they would be. Wow, so they have this. Yeah, that's right. I don't know what the decay looked like in, from the offseason major qualifier online, but imagine, yeah, we'll, we'll call it the 16 seed here for Sentinels, which well, I'm laughing no. because I just... I must be it's probably That must not be true. But it is. Sentinel's the 16th seed because of that performance in Arlington. They're going to have to take on SSG in just only winners round four, Eli. Actually, I'm sorry. It, it would be the eighth seed because we're, we're not, we don't have all the same teams in this. Obviously, okay. we had Foe. We had Quadrant. We, there was a lot of teams that placed ahead of Sentinel's that aren't playing today due to like international, like uh, Lore Gaming, I don't think is in right. here today Foe, either. Quadrant. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so, so I, I do believe Sentinel's will be the eighth seed so yeah one plays eight in this round we got eight teams left in the winner's bracket uh but on the other side of the break we will have that matchup space station versus sentinels don't go anywhere we'll be right back
All right, here we go. Your matchup of the day so far, SSG versus Sentinels. Sentinels, our first chance to see them since HCS Arlington, where they disappointed with the top 16. SSG maybe uh, exceeded expectations. I know a lot of us, Eli and I, I think we had SSG winning. But on the other side, SSG had the best performance of Arlington. As Sentinels, probably the most disappointing performance of Arlington. Where does this matchup go online as these two teams meet once again? I mean, let's be real. I mean, Space Station at an all-time high, Sentinels kind of at an all-time low. So, I mean, right. I think the expectation is probably the Space Station win, but Sentinels definitely a lot tougher opponent than these guys are used to facing in winners round four. So, uh, will this be kind of the redemption arc that we want to see from Sentinels? Right now, though, I feel like Stellar might be the best player in the game, and uh, he's looking to prove it time and time again, every opportunity he can. I feel like I just took a portal, Eli. You mentioned portal earlier. I, I feel like I just took one from Arlington to right ball. now because Stellar looks just as good as he did on land. Enemy Starting off well enough to earn Space Station the first few seconds of time, but they shortly drop it after that. As Sentinels now have it instead, Eco with the cheeky positioning, able to take down Falcated. Now on a little mini flank as the oddball down to one HP. As Sentinels are able to secure a little bit of ball time before resetting Eco with the last bit of camo, looking to take down the last bit of shields from Lethal. As he does, and now rotates to the red X of Lethal. Love this decision and heads up play here from Eco. You're going to see Lethal spot on the opposite side as Space Station take control of C. We've seen this to be the kind of comfort zone for Space Station on this game type. I think they're certainly capable of holding the oddball just about anywhere, but some of their best setups that earn them the most ball time are these seaside setups. Now, Sentinels have to figure out how are they possibly going to break in? There's only a few ways into C. It's going to start, I think, with the headshot from Falcated if he can find one, but Bound and Legends seem to know they're being looked at. They're not even exposing themselves to that sightline. Falcated actually rotates at the worst time possible as Stellar takes some space on the outside. Looks like Sentinels were able to force the play ball, though, but Falcon is in a tough spot and he does not want to give the shock rifle to Stellar. Yeah, Falcon probably wishes he still had control of gold with that shock rifle in hand as the oddball resets over to the B pillars, but instead he's going to take his sights over to the A side as he looks to 
take some take, take advantage of shots across the map now hopping on board here with boo boo doo boo working his way through the sneaky to potentially take that camo you saw it go into the suit of bound but it did not get utilized it's still there on the ground for the taking it's going to come down to a win though a battle ensues stellar looking to help eco pick it back up and eco at the first camo at the next as well stellar just trying to fight for space over here towards the a side i like the way he paces make sure his teammates are part of the action as well, well. Still there. big win on eco and yeah i don't think either team knows that the camo is just sitting in the corner there <laughs> i swear i saw eco run over it eli but i, I guess uh he did not as you saw you can see the little blue still there and i'm almost wondering if somebody finally picked it up falcated did so the spoils of camo do not go to ssg instead falcated picks it up what can you do with this moment this seems like a camo that should have gone to ssg and you flip it no falcated goes down shortly after and what felt like could have been a flip the switch moment is instead regain control of the gold side for sentinel or for space station three go down for sentinels and at 51 to 12 that score should continue if not for eco going down shortly after i think he was trying to maybe reset things now bound looking to trickle down into the needles and rotate it to legend legend has the ball now as ssg continues on with the time and despite a really scrappy sequence where it looked difficult to gain control of the oddball and the map control ssg have both yeah it just feels like space station able to kind of get the ball where they want it to either protect it or hold it they're not in a hurry boo boo with a nice no scope headshot with the shock rifle just Completely close lines. Eco says, go back to the respawn screen, sir. I would like to take that oddball. And he's actually going to rock the wow. ball shock rifle combination. He's going to try to drop it maybe for a teammate here, but they don't want to lose any potential time. It's actually not as bad as people think it is to, to have a power weapon and the oddball at the same time. But the shock rifle specifically, I think you'd rather a player like Boo Boo Doo be able to roam and, and hit some headshots here. And look at this. Legend grabs the camel and then rotates the oddball back to where it just was. Sentinels think they got a sneaky heads up play ball, but Legend won better. Talk about a heads up play from the European superstar as he now rotates that oddball off to a teammate. Stellar's got it. And now Legend has the shock and camo to work with, but gets taken down shortly after. Camo, ever since that first control for Eco, hasn't really been much of a factor. Instead, Space Station looking to secure it on the A side, but no, Falcated cleans up on the elevators. It's a 30 to 71 game, so Sentinels are gonna have to double up on their output up until this point, but they have the positioning at A. They have the numbers edge, despite Falcated going down. Three go down for SSG. And can Sentinels hold long enough to make this game closer than it is right now? 30 seconds separate these two teams. Right there, you saw Falcated went down with the shock, but made sure to burn the ammo before fully going down. Doesn't trade that weapon off, and I think that's a big deal against a team like Space Station. We can absolutely pop off with it. They've got three dead once again. It's a 2v1 on the map. Looks like Stellar not going to make it easy for anyone to get out. Gets a trade. That's a massive trade. That means the rest of Space Station can come off spawn and move a bit faster. Love the use of the shroud to rotate this ball, but doesn't grab it originally. It looks like maybe he kicked it on accident and didn't get the grab as quickly as he would like. And he's unable to actually rotate it to long haul. That might end up biting them here. I really thought they were going to have that rotation to long haul. And it looks like despite a little mini fumble there, despite the use of the shroud screen, Sentinels aren't going to get control of it. You saw Boo Boo Doo with it for a short period of time, but that was Bulls Gold is bound and the rest of SSG were swarming, pinching the long haul. And the gold side of glass now with oddball in their hands. 20 seconds left for the win. You see shock is up. Two go down though for SSG. Numbers edge. Three go down for SSG. And Boo Boo Doo Boo has the camo. This feels like the comeback path for them. You've got three down for SSG. You've got Boo Boo with camo. But don't let this be another camo for Sentinels where they go down shortly after. Instead, Boo Boo's going to rotate it, wow. but he does go down. Bound reaches out with that fragmentation. I imagine just a millimeter of the fragmentation finds the back of Boo Boo Doo Boo, takes him down. That's all they needed. Has two go down on each side. It's a little mixy right now, which means a lot of that regulation clock is dwindling. Less than one minute left. <laughs> where did Bound even throw that grenade right? from? It just came. It was two grenades, actually. It was two that... It knocked Boo Boo, kept him weak, and then a second that killed him. So I don't even know some kind of perfect grenade throws coming in from Bound, but Sinnoh's still able to scrap some more ball time. It's now only a 16 second round. 
Look at the collapse though from Space Station hitting both sides. Boo Boo somehow getting a double kill despite getting oh. shot in the back. And this is absolutely unreal. The level of play that we're seeing here. Legend gonna see if he can get away with the ball, but no, members of Sentinels are right here and they're gonna steal it right back. Legend able to utilize his momentum and movement to get up to glass to stay alive, but not for much longer He's as he goes down, but bound has the shock in his hand. And if there's anyone that plays aggressively with the shock in his hand, it's bound for now. Recognizing some cross shot opportunity on the tower. Has his teammate Stellar down, so he knows the push is coming from that location. He can see the, uh, the oh. blue X. He can hear the callouts from Stellar. Takes down one to trade out. All the while, that clock dwindling away. Only six seconds left. Sentinels were looking for slaves. They needed more time, but there's not much of it left. Two, one, and that will do it. SSG take round one and take the early edge in this series. Oh, wow, look at this. this. These were the grenades that I think Bound was in Whirl here. I, I don't even know exactly I, I thought he would have been class. That was Eco. Was he A? Um, I think, I don't know where those grenades came from, but they landed perfectly <laughs> into the long. I'm pretty sure he was in Whirlpool when he threw them, but massive How play, does it so even work? Uh, uh, geometrically to bounce that in there though anyways it's probably something to, to review on vod because that toss from bound quite literally stopped the rotation from boo boo and honestly the comeback it was only a 10 20 second game there at the end sentinels made it close but instead ssg take that 1-0 lead already 30 seconds off the clock here a little bit more focus on the oddball everybody inching their way we saw a four second start for ssg and then nine for sentinels much different complexion here in round two is Sparty looks to earn the early ball time, but he gets taken down shortly after on the rotation as things reset 3v3. And it looks like Sentinels does have goal control, but another member goes down. That's lethal. It's going to be up to Falcated to maintain numbers, edge and presence here at gold. What has he got? A couple grenades, a couple body shots. Wow. They're not enough to take down SSG and SSG says, we'll just take the hot ball and rotate it back to see if that's the case. I mean, honestly, it's impressive that Falcon even lived through that. He had three different people throwing grenades and shooting at him. Gets damage on all three and gets away with his life. Falcon had an absolute force on the map, but as is Legend, they trade out. Shock Rifle's gonna sit bottom tower. Looks like Lethal, if he can stay alive here, might be able to earn it back. No, more trades go out. That's good for Sentinels. Means they will continue to hold the ball, but actually no, Bound decides to drop the ball. Or sorry, he, he picks up the shock rifle. He's going to try to get some damage out of down, but Sentinels right now have a strong setup. But look at the two-man push just sliding in together, beat the crap out of Sparty, and then the all ball has to get rotated to A. Sentinels looking a lot better in this round, though. SSG, their preferred hold is at the back of C. Sentinels, you can really see manipulating the map to make sure they have it here on the gold side. As Boo Boo Doo Boo, 90 seconds in rolling. He's really been the OBJ support player. Hybrid for his team, even a Slayer at that. He's number two on the squad in Slays, leading an assist all time heavily. As Boo Boo having himself a bounce back performance here in round two because of it. Sentinels building up on almost a minute lead over on SSG. This one go like an entirely opposite round two. Yeah, and look at that. They find Bound who had the camo, which you have to think was one of the ways Space Station could break in, but they isolate him and shut him down very quickly. Three-man push through the gold pipe door, though, is going to be enough to take down two members of Sentinels, and Stellar's going to continue his path forward, make sure that that player goes down, and suddenly this is Space Station's best look in round two, but is it too little too late? A minute lead now currently for Sentinels. Ball drop. Stellar, I really thought he was going to trade out. Thought maybe he was even playing for the trade out. Instead, he stays alive momentarily, though, as he goes down shortly after. Two down for SSG. But despite the numbers disadvantage, they're coming back in this oddball. But that's what the lead affords you, Eli, is Sentinels here. You're going to force these guys from SSG to maybe grab the oddball when they don't have the positioning or the numbers edge. And looks like we just had a, a lag out there for Sentinels. Unfortunate occurrence as we'll have a reset official <laughs> word on the admins or from the admins on what that will look like as we get back into the action. Hopefully have a quick one for you here. Is that oddball recharge was a frenetic start to the series and Eli I love in a best of three especially you got to have an oddball in the mix maybe even just throw an oddball as a game one in every single one of these series a little weird but it ensures I think that the better team wins and oddball right now a full display of the teamwork and coordination needed as it's been a really close match back and forth Sentinels though actually kind of interesting fact that we'd get uh, because of the reset have uh, almost 40 more seconds of time in total in this uh, in this matchup so far. So despite being one, down 1-0 in this particular game one, 
You could argue they look better than SSG. Well, it's just because that first round was low scoring and they had, what, a 50-point lead in the second round? By the way, Booba Dooba with two minutes, his next nearest teammate had eight seconds in odd ball time. So Boo Boo, the, oh, sorry, 10 seconds. So the two minutes and nine seconds time is carried massive. He still went positive and had 10 assists. So Boo Boo waking up is definitely what you need if you're going to take down a team like SSG. Sparty also back to doing Sparty things, 22 kills, 12 assists. But with the reset here, you know, I, I was wondering, did, did an SSG fan go flip the circuit breaker at, at Lethal's office? Because pretty sure Lethal's playing from the office. He was the one that lagged out here. Um, Got to wonder if there's, hopefully there's not an issue at the office because that would be hard to fix. Hopefully it's just something simple, right? Doesn't require IT. Maybe a coworker tripped over a fiber cable and spilt coffee on the keyboard. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to Lethal. And for Lethal, it's no worries, right? That keyboard can be as covered in coffee as possible. It's not going to matter to him. He plays on the roller. So hopefully Lethal is able to get back into the mix. Maybe uh, while he takes a break, maybe enjoys some of the <laughs> facilities at his office in, in, in Dallas. I, I just I love the fact that everyone thinks gamers, we got it so easy. All you do is play video games from your home. You don't even have to get dressed or show up in public. Not Lethal, man. This man's driving. He's got a nine to five. He's got the commute. He's he's filling up his tank in the morning. He's He's got his 7-Eleven <laughs> sausage egg roll or something. I mean, this man is a nine to fiver and love to see that for everybody in the chat who also works a nine to five. And yeah, like I said, kind of like throws a little shade at gamers for not working a real job. Uh, lethal, just proving that. Blue collar lethal should be this next smooth <laughs> tag, dude. Just, this man's showing up with a briefcase in a polo. Ready to do some work at the office uh, with the roller in hand. But yeah, it looks like he was the one that crashed. These situations are always so interesting to me because, I mean, we got to figure out what the ruling is. This is a C9 sponsored tournament, so they technically don't have to go by HCS rules. Sometimes the players are the ones that make the call, as we see here in the text chat. Boo Boo says, we need 50. Bounce says, I I guess that's all the admin that we need right there. <laughs> it's like, uh, the, okay. the I is, uh, yeah, GG's, let's go. Uh, I think 50 was 68 to 18. Uh, we get the K from Stellar. Looks like the players agree. Problem is, Lethal's still not in the lobby, so. Uh, that keeps it simple, though. Uh, I think maybe they're going to switch sides. That would make sense uh, to, to switch sides here so that it's even as far as the team changing and spawn rotation goes in oddball, but uh, this is an interesting one. All right, guys. Well, while we wait to see what the official word is and wait for Lethal to get back in the mix, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We got the continuation of Sentinels versus SSG when we return.
Samson fight comes out of top gold, well, that's the rest of your play. And that's a that's a risky play, but you got to make risky plays like that if you're going to be successful. And uh, honestly, I, I love it. You know, it, it comes down to a little bit of a a little bit of gun skill, a little bit of a heady uh, play from him, and gets the kill on Gilkey. Eventually, secures the camouflage, and Cloud Nine never gave up the lead from there. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's one thing that I did see on the other side of things, you know, I'd definitely give a, a shout out to Gilkey with the uh, 16 kills, only 13 deaths. You know, it's kind, of, it's kind of, you never know how much value to put in on, on, a, on a a great individual stat line performance and a losing effort, but you know, it, it, it's still good to look at. And obviously, he was doing something right on the map, and a large reason why Proton were able to close the distance time and time again onto Cloud Nine, who at times had great leads on them, it has to be because of him and and getting those slays necessary. So. So definitely want to give Gilkey some love on the other end, end of things. Meanwhile, we're going to be going into Forbidden. And you talked about this map, and uh, I want to give you the floor again and, and talk about some of the things that you love about this map. I think you, I think you used the, the term one of the, one of the better prototypical Halo maps coming back in. You want to talk more about that here on Forbidden? Yeah, so, so when we think about old school Halo maps, it's always been sort of the same sort of game plan um from the beginning right you gain map control once you get map control you get kills once you get those kills you move up you play the flag out and then you move it back towards your team uh it, it's really simple on paper mm. but it can get kind of muddied in game right it can it can become not crystal clear uh, the thing i love about forbidden is because of how wide and expansive it is and how intuitive the spawns are on this map it, it becomes a, a really clear focus on what your uh, objective is on the game Prim primarily what you end up doing is sending a player towards the sniper hut to block out those snipe spawns as that's the route that you want to take to run the flag then you put a player over on the main platform looking down into the base and then the other two players uh can be a little bit more flexible in their position but you basically want to create this uh this big l on the map between your your perimeter players and, and keep the opposing team spawning in the back base once you pull that flag out, even though the bottom half of the map is so open, there's no clear sight lines from the base to the flag runner. It creates a really easy flag route for your teammates to take it through. Um, honestly, it's a it's a fantastic map. It, even though it's a it's nothing like the composition of an old school Halo Three map, like Amplify or Onslaught. And which one? Which one's the flag map, Tony? I think Amplify is the Slayer, right? Yeah, Onslaught, you're right. Onslaught. Onslaught, right? So even though Forbidden is nothing, like when you look at how Forbidden is built, right, with sniper rifles on the map and, and huge, long, expansive lanes, it honestly plays a little bit more like Onslaught than any other map in Halo Infinite does, right? Because all it is is, right, get control of the spawns, get the kills, pull the flags out. You know where the next spawn is, like spawn trap, spawn trap, spawn trap. It's all about trapping. And once you get that trap in, it, you can get flag runs uh to be successful 70 to 80 percent of the time yeah and, and, I, and I, love, I love the i love the the and, and I, maybe you didn't use this exact phrase and i apologize if i'm butchering it but i love i love the the fact that you talked about it being like you know the step by step you know starting off on your side of the map get getting those slays moving to the 50 and like slowly starting to take control also reminds me of a you know almost like a, a chess game you know start making sure that you secure your side attacking that 50 and then slowly starting to limit the options of your opponents i thought you uh you put that really eloquently as we see our game number three getting started proton gaming and king nick starting off with trying to control their snipe side at the moment meanwhile grammy has the responsibility of holding on to top mid control and so far you're seeing the action really be prioritized in two focus areas right the sniper and the platforms you want to keep that high ground and you want to be able to look down into the bases whoever's able to do that more uh, uh more effectively will end up winning the game more times than not we down go cloud nine and proton gaming wanted to make sure that they finish off that fourth player oftentimes that fourth player can be a nuisance but they take down Diagram and Yoki looking to take down some more. Four shots in the sniper as the flag is being started and ran through. Diagram gets body shotted. And the second one not gonna connect for Yoki. Tusk taking down Yoki from the long range and Suspector still running that flag in, I I believe. 
I think we had a game crash. Oh no. Unfortunate. A game crash. Uh, so I believe the players are still in the game. Uh, they'll be playing that third game out, but uh, unfortunately we don't have any eyes on the game at the moment. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I could uh, at least find like maybe like a stream that's open so I can maybe give you guys like a radio type of broadcast, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. like a little bit of radio commentary right now. And I don't think I'm not no, seeing no, any of them. Nobody on Proton is live. And I don't see anybody on Cloud9 live either. It, it was just when it was starting to get good, right? <laughs> oh, man. It was so interesting, right? Because, like, they killed the sniper player, but, like, there was no, like, they weren't going to be able to stop the flag run, right? So the flag run was going to go in, but Cloud9 were going to have a good shot at getting map control and trying to work on that counter cap. We'll have to, like, maybe try to find a way to, like, cheese our way back in. I don't, I will, we'll have to see what we can do, Tony, but. Uh, I imagine we'll be maybe just waiting to see what that game three result is. Yeah, and uh, just just highly unfortunate. Uh, but guys, if you if you if you didn't happen to see what was happening with the first two games, that actually was game number three was forbidden, and obviously the best of three series that was elimination game. So one of those teams after after forbidden is done is going to be advancing forward into round number four. Meanwhile uh the the ladder will be dropping down to that elimination bracket and uh, although we're not in the game right now we'll definitely keep you updated uh as we get more information uh, information on that um and uh yeah now who uh, it, it was proton gaming if i if, if i'm wrong that did start off with that flight mm -hmm. being ran out, and i'm gonna assume that ended up going in from what i saw especially with that stuff on the sniper side uh from gilkey eventually goes down but everybody was stuck on their back spawn i want to say for cloud nine so i think it's safe to say that that's starting off one out so, uh at least i think it is <laughs> no i think i think you're you're spot on with that i think it's going to be a 1-0 start i i'm curious how cloud nine was going to bounce back from that because they were able to take down the sniper and that sniper was in a strong position to for cloud nine to pick it up and then gain control once again so we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye out on the on the data hive you know maybe maybe find the game ending as quickly as possible but when we have a match to watch i mean we'll we'll be in it right away yeah guys uh you know what i think what we're gonna do i think we're gonna take a short break here and uh obviously when we come back we're gonna have some more information on what exactly happened within that series and have more halo action
All right, gamers, Lethal is back, and so are we. 50 seconds needed here in round two for Sentinels. SSG will need 100 after the reset. Eli, quick thoughts on this series so far, as it's been uh, just one round, but plenty of action so far. I mean, we just had to space out the drama a little bit for you guys. You know, who's going to win? Sentinels got the lead. Now there's a lag out. Will Lethal actually come back? Does the office have power? Where's the internet? What's going on? Just had to make it a little bit more dramatic for you guys, but we're back in the action. Just so you guys know, the call was made. It looks like Space Station still have that round one victory under their belt, but it's going to be Sentinels with a 50 point lead now in round two. So they're not going to have to get as many setups to secure another round. Space Station now in red as they go four down off the start. It's a good one for Sentinels, but some uh, favorable spawns over on the, oh no, no, blue. Okay, sorry, I got confused by that. Blue is still Sentinels. So we hop on board here with Lethal, trades out with Eco. As the oddball is now grabbed by Legend after three go down, Sparty, the last Spartan standing over on the opposite side of C, not going to have an angle to put any shots into Legend as he's going to escape the first bit of all time. Right here. It's like both teams really just fighting for the shock rifle and control of this side of the map. We know that A, B hold so powerful. So is the shock rifle. Massive headshot from Falcated. This man seems absolutely on fire today, but I don't even know why I say that. He's always on fire. This guy is always slaying out. I don't know if I've ever seen Falcated having an off day per se. This guy just slays out, and that's what you need if you're going to keep up with a team like Space Station. Sentinels with that lockdown location. Wow. Falcated locking it down with a remote detonation. Not allowing Boo Boo Doo Boo to inch any further into A, but Stellar finds a cleanup instead to go down on each side of the map is in a really close start here 13 to 11 remember though after the reset that sentinels only need 50 seconds ssg come into this reset with the 1-0 lead so if they win this round game one victory for them eco accidentally grenading himself grabs the extra plasma grenades there puts them immediately to work kind of just using them as a zone denial tool uh, a lot of players like to do they like to place a grenade in an entryway. They don't want their opponent walking through just to slow them down. Eco really just trying to stay alive, though. It's been taking heavy fire from members across the map. Lethal inbound trade. By the way, new network update. This is the first time we've seen a tournament with the new network update. There's a lot more gun trades that happen now. We'll see two abandoned players trade out. Uh, and there's definitely some different nuances to pay attention to. I think the shock rifle, for whatever reason, to me, it's harder to use, but if Alcated says it's not that much harder to use, it seems like he's hitting every shot. Maybe not getting as many headshots as we're used to seeing, but absolutely outputting maximum damage here. Yeah, seems seems a little less sticky, but no uh, worse for the wear is Falcated. Adds another slay to the docket. Nine, three, and two. <laughs> My God. Uh, you worry sometimes after a reset like that, Eli? 10 minutes passing without any game time, you could kind of ice a player out with that. Not Falcated. He stays on fire. I was going to say warmed up. He stays on fire with nine kills already in this lobby. A little bit of positioning here on the triangle to stay alive. Did the Space Station boys know he's up here? Yes, they do. They take him down shortly after. Three go down for Sentinels as SSG regains the oddball in this lead. Some people in chat might be confused why the names have changed. Switch sides. Uh, that's because there was a reset. Now, Oddball switches from Cobra to Eagle spawns from round to round. The reset happened during Sentinel's Cobra round. So the team's opting to switch teams to keep things fair for those spawn positions. But we see Stellar right now fighting for control of the elevator here. He's taken down by two members of Sentinels. And Sentinels, once again, have the ball. Keep in mind, they only need 25 more seconds because of that reset. Once they hit that 50-point mark, they'll probably just hold it until the 100-point mark 
So go ahead and advance to the third round. Yeah, this reset's been extremely back and forth, but it looks much closer than it really is as Sentinels now have a much bigger lead, a full minute plus. And they might just earn more as Falcated sneaks away with Camo. No, he goes down shortly after. Two go down for Sentinels. SSG's first stretch where it looks like they might be able to secure more than 10 seconds of time in one fell swoop. It looks like bound. If you can win this 1v1 with Sparty, should have even more time spamming those shots. Telling Sparty he can keep jiggle peeking. He's just going to keep getting hit as he goes down shortly after. Oddball gets back in the hands of bound and SSG are right back in it. This is she looking good for an extended hold, but this has definitely gone back and forth. Sparty getting a kill in the kill feed is massive. Make that two kills for Sentinels. They're going to hold forward now with that numbers edge. Boo was actually going to grab the ball from Bound, who I think just dropped it to try to fight. Boo said, sure, I'll take that. Holds on to it. And now just seven seconds needed, but the pressure is in here. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold it until the end here. Oh, three went down on each side. Sparty tries to milk out the final three seconds of time. It gets stopped just short as two will go down for Sentinels. Oddball back in possession of Eco as he looks to take it back over to A. You have to play this a little differently now, Eli, knowing that Sentinels only need three seconds. You have to hold the line or you have to get a cheeky reset, a rotation that keeps them away from that oddball. Two down on each side. Sentinels with a chance to push through and finish this game. Malkade with it in his hand. 49. No, he gets stopped just one second short. Oh. Oddball gets repulsed, it looked like. No, grenaded instead. Looks like it was going towards Boo Boo Dubu, but Boo Boo Dubu goes down. Two members left for Sentinels. It's Sparty and Lethal. Lethal goes down. Sparty goes oh, down wow. too. And Space Station with one second left to stay alive, have life, and potentially the lead. That was Boo Boo trying to grapple it. Keep in mind, no more repulse on this map. So Boo Boo tried to grapple it, but he gets killed mid grapple animation. So the ball just kind of looks like it travels through the air towards the gold pipes. And this is essentially 76 to 99. Use your imagination here because Sinnels just need one second to advance oh to God. the third round. But every step of the way, Space Station is shutting them down. You have to think maybe Sinnels is getting a little impatient. They get two dead. And there it is. There's the grapple play. Boo -Boo! The grapple sneak play takes that oddball, and I'm actually surprised to see him go down. Usually, players let the other players hold on to that oddball so the respawns can switch without having to switch colors and teams. But they are just going to reset it instead. All right, maybe a little uh, upset about that sneaky, cheeky play there from Boo Boo Dooboo with the grapple to steal round two. We are now tied, heading into a crucial round three, especially in what's just a best of three series. This game is going to be one you look back on at the end of the series as a big reason why whichever team wins, one. Wow, yeah, I'm assuming one of these players wanted to reset their game or something. I'm not sure because usually they'll just hold the ball until the right. end and advance to that next round. But a player on um, SSG actually left the match. So I'm assuming they're going to just reset the game, make sure it's functioning properly going into round three. And uh, yeah, it's high it up. It's basically... Whoever wins this round goes up in the series, and that is so massive in a best of three. Looks like they did go ahead and switch sides. So now uh, okay. it's going to be red Sentinels, which, man, whenever uh, I feel like all of us can relate. If if a team like Sentinels, whose logo is red, <laughs> right. but their Spartans are blue, it kind of like breaks your brain. So I'm glad they decided to switch and uh, get these colors correct for you guys. I think they actually reset it just for you guys, chat, just so you wouldn't be confused. We know you guys are easily confused, but all good. We got you covered here. Going into the uh, rubber match here. This is to see who takes that 1-0 lead going into the rest of the series. Um, and just even for my sake, Eli, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited because it did actually uh, twist up my brain a little bit, the color switch, and then seeing uh, Sentinels in blue. That's not normally. Here we go. Sentinels in red. SSG in blue, and it's a 1-1 tie game. Don't let that score deceive you. Both teams have secured one round, and this next round determines the winner of game one. Three go down for Sentinels. Sparty, the last player alive, a little caught out in the cross, but he takes down Legend with the cross map shots. Bound, though, still going to be able to rotate that oddball to gold, so I thought maybe Sparty might have done enough to, present, uh, to prevent the hold, but SSG do a good job nonetheless to milk out some time. Only four seconds, though. And the push is already on from Sentinels. Lethal on the bat ledge takes down Legend. Bound goes down. That's all four down for SSG. Four seconds, four down as Sentinels regain control of the oddball and the map right back. 
that was all started with that huge piv from Sparty across the map. Last player alive on his team. If he loses that fight, they're in a numbers disadvantage coming off spawn, but Sentinels takes that advantage and steamrolls it into a four dead and an oddball hole. Wow. Sentinels have really taken over in this third round. Nah, it's good to see Sparty looking like Sparty because that's the type of win that Sparty earns for Sentinels. Last Spartan standing needs the win. Otherwise, SSG have an easy hold, easy ball time at the top of gold, which you can see they're trying to work their way through now, but instead, the score flips. Should be 25 to five, if not for that Piv win from Sparty, but instead it's a 25-5 match. Sentinels with the lead. SSG have the oddball once again. This is massive for Sentinels, but if there's anything we know about Space Station, it's never over till it's over. These guys have produced some of the most exciting comebacks we've ever seen. Seemingly always icing up when it matters, as we saw them win that game seven at Arlington in the grand finals. Right now, Boo -boo -doo -boo. trying to rotate the ball away. Trade's going out once again, but it's three dead for Space Station. Falke is going to be able to move this oddball. Looks like he's getting ready for a play ball. Probably understands that Space Station is nearby and he doesn't want to give them a free oh, set. That's bait. Wow. Falke had showed like he was going bat ledger, maybe resetting the oddball and the double, double comes kill. through instead. The chase grenade went through previously. Well, teammate support as Falke had stays alive, but Legend has the camo, but he's got to watch his back. Gets a shoulder smack onto Sparty, and Sparty goes down from the grenade. Legend staying alive with one HP, goes down shortly after the lethal's grenade, but my, 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 what a play again from Falcated. I love that little shoulder shimmy shake, a uh, juke, if you will, stepping onto the bat ledge, fooling the opposition as Sentinels are gonna win the defensive effort. They're gonna win that defensive push here as SSG push through, they go three down. Sentinels are gonna have even more time and now have a one minute lead. Sparty is back to doing Sparty things. This is not the Sparty we saw at Arlington. He's healthy. He's here to play. I saw him win a 2v1 off screen. Stayed alive for long enough to deal additional damage as well. This man falcated, trying to put the shock rifle to use. That's a big kill from Eco though. The shock rifle, if he can get a few slays, this bound does in the kill feed as well. This could be where SSG start to pull away with their own momentum. And this feels like SSG's chance to strike as Eco strikes with the quick scope. Drop shot onto Falcated, and especially important to put it onto Falcated, who is one of the main slayers to worry about on this Sentinels roster. I feel like they got a couple of goats in that category, but all the while, Legend securing even more time, up to 20 seconds for himself personally, as Space Station have done a great job to cut this lead in half, and then some. Huge kill out of lethal there. Able to make the shot difficult for Eco. I think a bit of a team nade coming out. Legend get, getting taken to one shot by his teammate. Maybe a miscommunication there. Or maybe teammate isn't used to the player playing as fast as Legend. But yeah, that's going to play very well to Sentinel's favor. And now they're still holding the ball in A. Sparty just kind of holding space on the other side. Both teams opting to play perimeter, which is commonplace on recharge sometimes fighting for space on the complete opposite side of the map just to have another lane as an entry point but look at this sentinels if they can hold on to this which they look very likely yes. to do they might just secure game one yeah eco has to overextend a little bit fight a 1v3 on the a side because of the time situation now ssg have just one Ooh. final push bound is going to take down one but he trades out Party gets the, uh, doesn't trade out on the tower one side and Sentinels are gonna do it. Sentinels look incredible in rounds two and three as they ride that to victory and take a 1-0 lead in this best of three. Huge win. Like we said, this is not a round four matchup we're used to seeing. This is an anomaly. Sentinels placement at Arlington, putting them as the eighth seed in this tournament. SSG usually not used to facing competition this stiff until later in the tournament. Sentinels trying to just overthrow SSG. Would this not be the best possible way for Sentinels to bounce back in oh, their yeah. current redemption arc? And their best position to do so. They just got to win one of these next two games now. That's easier said than done against a team like SSG, but they're looking quite good so far. Yeah, I think ultimately uh, Sentinels are going to have to get their mojo back on land because everybody knows that they can perform at a high level online. But again, because of how much of a shock that performance was at Arlington, the top 16 placing for Sentinels, I agree, Eli. I think Sentinels can regain some of their stees and some of that 
some of those vibes online, believe it or not, with a big series win against SSG. And Eli, I go back to Legend sliding through at the bottom of A, and he got teammated. So look at the best team in the world, right? These are the land champs uh, of Arlington. But I still think SSG has some things to work on. The timing especially, communication maybe as well. Still in the works for SSG, so it goes to show they even still have some things to work on and some upside, I guess, on the other side of that as we kick off our Game 2 Team Slayer Sentinels with an early edge lead. Falcon we're going to utilize that pillar to stay alive, provide bait to the stalker of Sparty as he cleans up the opposition. And I love the way Falcon is baiting his possession positioning. We saw it previously on recharge at the bat ledge, baiting a push in that turned into more ball time for Sentinels. Now, Falcated baiting Sparty into two kills, and it's a two-kill lead for them. Just kidding, we're now tied after a quick two from SSG for all. Bound just made a huge play for Space Station in that moment. Sentinels seemingly had them all pinned in C, but Bound takes a sneaky route with perfect timing through the front, goes up the B stairs, takes out Sparty, who had the Stalker, and that was the opening they needed to get control of the map and the camouflage. Bound putting the team on his back here. He's only got one kill, but so far made the play of the game. Bound has the camo. He has low shields as well, so he's going to have to be very cautious and careful with his shot selection as every shot alerts the enemy of his position. Now with no more camo to work with, he can freely hold forward, push into the seaside as he's done just that. Blanking through to the red room now as Bubu Dubu goes down. The disruptor in the back pocket for Bound could support his teammates here, but instead Sparty under one HP. Lethal with the bait and switch says, you want to take Sparty down, you're going to have to take me on first as Bound continues to push through, but numbers dwindle for SSG. Love the positioning. We talked about Falcon and earlier working with Sparty, and there we see Lethal keeping Sparty alive. The bait and switch is on point for Sentinels, but the lead is not in their favor. It's actually a five kill lead here for SSG instead as Eco starts off six, four, and two. Big reason why. The team shot is absolutely there for Space Station. I mean, Bound, look, look at the assist column for Space Station. Almost every single kill has been assisted. There might actually wow. be more assists than there are kills. I don't want to count it right now, but on the side of Sentinels, they have three out of their 12 are, have been <laughs> well, assisted, whereas Space Station has at least as many assists as there are kills. You put it like that, and yeah, it makes perfect sense why SSG now has a seven, six kill lead. It's going to come down to maybe uh, that next camo. We saw Legend with it earlier. Uh, Sentinel's going to need to prioritize a guy like Boo Boo Dubu getting that instead. As they're now down six, looking for the comeback. Melee battle ensues at the arcade. Maybe a disagreement between uh, quarters as two players go down. Make it three on that side of B. Lethal goes down, trades out with Bound. It's back and forth, but Sentinels are able to chip into this lead, making it a one possession game, 18 to 22, four kills separating these two teams as it's now close once again. Now five. Team shot coming online for Sentinels. They got to work together to get some of these kills. But look, Space Station strategy on a lot of maps is to just create two duos that kind of work the map on opposite sides. They work really well together, just playing extremely fast to get kills on one side and sprint at you from across the map. But usually works out in that moment they kind of sprint to their death as two members of sentinels kind of place a trap there in the pd they were ready for it now suddenly sentinels are the ones that are rolling it really the conversation around assist really is incredible because if you just counted up the assist for ssg they'd probably still be in the lead just by assist much less the slays but for now the slays are tied 27 all it was a two possession game previously to start things off space station running out to a seven kill advantage but sentinels have regained control of this map, tied up things here at 28 and going into the 30s. This one is going to start and be extremely close. Both teams really know how to press their advantage state. When Space Station had the lead, they were able to roll with it. Sentinels, when they get a few kills, then press their advantage state into a steamroll of their own. This one's now going back and forth. Neither team really in a clear advantage state. It's going to really come down to who earns this camo right now. Looks like Space Station closer to it, but Sentinel's in good position to bait it. No, Bound going to be able to get away with it, and this could be what Space Station needs to regain that lead. Yeah, this could provide the separation going into the 40s. We're in the mid-30s now, but I feel like Bound with this camo could flip the game on its head. He's working his way towards that stalker. Wants to put some three 
perfect shots into the opposition as Lethal drops down from the heaven. He's weak, so too is Boo Boo Dubu. Flank from Sparty, but Bound actually outflanks him with the back smack. Unbelievable communication and, and or heads up awareness there. 360 into Lethal, don't do it! He does it. Lethal does ultimately go down. Stock rifle ammo depletes. But for now, SSG do in fact find the separation with the use of that camo and stalker. Now up five once again. Sparty with a massive remote detonation kill on Bound there. If Bound was able to stay alive and continue rolling, could have been the end of the game. But that remote detonation keeps Sentinels alive. They're now only down by three, previously down by six not too long ago. But now they've got to play out of the base. They're going to fight for that 50 yard line. Boo Boo with two kills in the kill feed. Boo Boo's popping off on the other side of the map. Looks like he's one shot over here. And you know Legend wants to shut him down. Legend gets shut down and now a two kill game going into the end here. This is where Sparty usually finds the ice and brings Sentinels back. And what a comeback this would be to make it a 2-0 sweep on SSG and say, yeah, Arlington, that was a fluke. Falcated now pushing up towards the B side. Bound back smack Sparty, but Sparty trades out with Legend. Another trade out in the feed is gonna trickle down to a 44, 45 all match. Five kills left for each team. This one's tight and close. Everybody's back on the respawn screen. Camel's up in two. Shotty goes through for lethal. Thought he had a blank, but he actually finds the finish. Good shots on the eco. Did enough just to take him down to one HP. Will it get cleaned up? Yes, Sparty does. 48 all. It's tied. Two kills left for each of these two squads. Sparty looking to stay alive, leading his squad with 16 slays. Has that Shotty in the back pocket. Grenade goes out. Stellar goes down. 49 48. Sentinels need one kill for the series sweep, and they get it. Sentinels bounce back from the Arlington disappointment and shock SSG with a 2 0 sweep. Like we may have just lost Eli the Ninja, and I'm not even surprised. He probably just was so shocked by that in-game sequence. He might have flipped his table or just started mashing a bunch of <laughs> keys on the keyboard as Sentinels take it and ice up. They were down by multiple possessions. Multiple camos went into the favor of SSG. They seem to have the sandbox. They seem to have the lead. They had everything they needed to make it a 1-1 series tie, but the ice and in particular, Sparty McFly, icy as ever, leading his squad back. And that's the question we started with today. Are Sentinels back? I think so. I think I'm back in the mix. That game was so exciting. My internet gave out for 10 <laughs> seconds. Could not handle the action, but I think we are back. And wow, what a way to bounce back for Sentinels. I, I agree with you. I think they do have to do it on land as well to really feel the bounce back. But this is a massive momentum shift for them. I mean, the number one seed going down in winner's round four. Absolutely oh, unreal. What? I mean, you have to think they're going to make a crazy lower bracket run. But this is kind of upset that can happen when a team like Sentinels, who arguably top four, has a Here's bad performance. Thing. Yeah. This is, this is really cool. One, for Cloud9, just for providing us with more content months and weeks out of a, the next LAN. But this is going to... Man, this Sentinel's performance at Arlington is going to cause chaos in the uh, online split between Major 1 and Major 2. Because until Sentinel starts playing for points once again, this is just for cash, $5,000 on the line. But I'm looking into that first HCS Open Series. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but... My goodness, it's going to cause chaos online for all the brackets and all the teams that are going to have to face Sentinels a little bit earlier in the bracket because of their performance at Arlington. And SSG is the first victim of that. They take the 2-0 L. I'm, I'm having a hard time believing it. But you can see again, the series was extremely close. 2-1 in that oddball. SSG actually took a 1-0 lead in it. And then 50-48 Slayer. They had the lead in this too. A big one. A fairly convincing one. Especially when you consider the context of having camo and stalker or the six or so kill lead heading into the 40s. Sparty and Sentinels flip it on their head, though, and take the series sweep. The most electric series so far of the day goes to Sentinels. So impressive. Now, on the other side, keep in mind, uh, there's a few people that might be confused about uh, Rebellion. So Rebellion actually had to DQ today. One of their players could not play. So that part of the bracket... 
a little weird because that means a team kind of got a buy that doesn't normally get a buy against a top team. So that means it kind of stole the seed. Now complexity ran into that team and defeated them. So now Sindels will face off against complexity in the winner's semifinals here. Woo. And then on the other side of the bracket, it's not filled in on your screen here, but I keeping you up to date. We've got optic versus native in the winner's quarterfinal. And on the other side, Proton defeated Cloud9. They're likely to face off FaZe Clan in that quarterfinal. So a lot of heavy hitters left in the tournament. I think we might be going to a quick break here while we get everything squared away for you guys. And don't go anywhere. There's a ton of amazing Halo action left in the tournament. TikTok, haters wish that I slip. No, I don't miss. MJ all hits. Watch me pop off, I'm the king now. Moonwalk to the ring now. Keep on wondering how. Let that choir sing now. Ten, nine, paid on my dues, waited in line. Eight, seven, now it's about time that I take mine. Six, five, king of the jungle, heart of a lion. Four, three, two, one, watch out.
All right, Eli, here we go. Sentinels, after a 2-0 sweep on SSG, take on Complexity in this next matchup. And I recall in the offseason, it was Rebellion, Complexity, and Sentinels. Those were the big three, outside of the big three, that had the best case for contending and maybe breaking through. So this series is going to be exciting. Where do you think it heads? It's hard to say, man. Both these teams are so good. They're at the top of their game. I think that both these teams are especially good at this game type because they play very fast. Sentinels just got off a victory against SSG on this map, so you got to think maybe they're pretty warm on it, but Complexity had to defeat another team on it before they got here as well. I can see this one going either way. Uh, in typical online mid-season uh, format, uh, Complexity losing to an amateur team already in the tournament. SSG, we should have noted also already losing to an amateur team as well. So Complexity and SSG facing some shocking victories for the other side. Can Sentinels take advantage of a little bit of a slip up from both of these two teams in back-to-back -back fashion as they now take on Complexity here in game one. Strongholds on recharge, but it's Complexity getting the early edge with the control of A and B. And what looks like could amount to a 30 second plus lead as four go down for Sentinels, full map control and a trip cap easily secured here for Complexity. Yeah, this looks all complexity early on. How does Sentinels play out of this? So much map space being earned by complexity. They've got so many parts of the map to work with. Falcated can't comfortably sit in B for long enough to cap it. Tries to chase a kill, but Huss has got the shots down range. And right now, complexity just kind of trying to force Sentinels into the spawn blender here. Kind of let them all spawn in A and then push in. And this is all wasted time for Sentinels. So yeah, even if they trade this out and it goes even, that does not mean they're going to start scoring. Looks like Lethal's going to try to shut down Ryan Oop here in A. And Sentinels do actually hold, get B control, but it doesn't matter. It's not enough to start scoring after Ryan Oop and the rest of Complexity are able to secure A. Lethal there looked like he, his player animation tripped over the barricade. Instead, it's Sentinels tripping up in the early goings. 1 to 60 here as Complexity is 59. As Complexity has been in just about full control, Sentinels did a good job, though, after going four down to quickly secure A. They prevented the trip cap. That's about all they have to their name right now. B and C still in favor of Complexity as more and more of those cap points start to trickle in favor of the Cobra squad. Complexity could roll to a 100-point lead here, and it looks like they're absolutely going to. A, B, and C are blue. Complexity with possession of the shock rifle as well. But the camo could go to Sentinels now after that big win from Lethal. And he stays alive with it for now. Players dropping Hus, looking for him as the last member alive. But for now, four will go down for Complexity. And Sentinels now have a chance to regain and find their footing. This is definitely looking very good for Sentinels. This is certainly a game type. You can put the other team in the blender, but they've got to make sure they shut down Complexity on this next cycle of spawns. So they can maintain this trip cap and maintain their comeback. They do have a couple of kills already. They're forcing the split spawns by moving aggressively towards complexity. Hus last member alive at sea, and he's not going to have a chance to cap it unless he can get a miraculous double kill here from his back foot. Lethal with the camo. Didn't see him necessarily pop off in the feed with it, but he stayed alive throughout the duration of it. And then some because of it. You could say 83 seconds of life continuously here for Lethal or the 86 seconds now that Sentinels have on the board. What looked like was going to be a 100 to 1 start for Complexity is now a lead for Sentinels. 93 and rolling to 89. What an incredible regain. Wow. And it all started with that camo win from Lethal as two more go down for Complexity. Numbers edge for Sentinels. Can they secure A? Yes, they do. Scoring is going to continue into the 100s. Sentinels with a massive regain. Three go down for Complexity, and Sentinels are rolling. Sentinels wants to go right back into the pipes here. Know that this is where they spawn Falcated, extended to C, forced to spawn into gold pipes, and Sparty finds Ryan, who caught off guard, just hunts him down. Former teammate, former rival. I think they're good now, but love to see the aggression out of Sparty. Gets the camo. And this has been all Sentinels ever since they got control. Complexity have not been able to find a way out. Desperation reeking on the side of Complexity. They're not able to cap B. Descendants all by himself. And Double this kill. is unbelievable from Sentinels. The pressure is just so great. They've got all the items. They know the spawns. They're flying around the map. They're not letting Complexities get anything started here. That's a blender. Strawberry banana smoothie for the likes of Sentinels. 
And I say that because of them being on the red squad. They are eating up the competition. This is unbelievable. Now doubling up on complexities. Great start to this game. And Eli, if I could point to any difference in what's been a wild game one so far, it's got to be the coaches. Ash is not behind the boys here for complexity today. I imagine Chig is for Sentinels. I'm starting to notice a little bit of that, that regain, the ability to slow things down, find a, a counter. The coach helps with that a lot, but the complexity doesn't have that today. And I think you're seeing a little bit of that as Sentinels will soar into the 200s with a 100 plus point lead. Ash is absolutely the fifth man on this squad. He's humble about it, says we give him too much credit, but we know how powerful that man's coaching is. And you're exactly right. I mean, just to have a voice in the comms to, to keep everybody cool. I don't think complexity is necessarily panicking yet. I think they understand that all it takes is one good sequence and they can flip the whole map on its head and do that same thing right back to Sentinels. As we see here, they get the trip cap, they're back in control and they're already sprinting at the spawners on the side of Sentinels. And can they hold on as long as Sentinels did? It's still a hundred point lead, but now it is Sentinels in the blender and complexity in firm control. And complexity, despite being down 100, if they just put together what we saw to start the game where they had a 100 point lead, this could be a comeback now for complexity instead as Falcated pushes into Tower One, doesn't like what he sees there. Two players from Cobra on the bridge side of the map. Now you got Precision jumping up for the grapple hook. Two players down on each side. It's a 2v2 for now. Bait and switches could be a factor. Camo could absolutely be a factor, but Lethal shuts it down instead. And that's been a big win condition here in this one. Two camos went to Sentinels. They utilized that very efficiently. The next one goes to Complexity, but it gets shut down right after. So important. The Complexity holds on to this. They've already been put in the blender by Sentinels before. They can shut this down. Love this rotation from Descendant. Maybe decides to back up a little bit, but I think he should just go ahead and cap this. Yeah, recognizing the action is currently in A. Gonna actually push this player out while his teammate caps it. Unable to finish that one. Sentinels do get control of two strongholds, but they still have to fight for the map. Yeah, Complexity are able to take C, but they have the back foot spawns of recharge here. How can they push out and swarm this Sentinels roster? Earning a numbers edge could help just that. The 1v1 on the A side as Sparty takes down Descendant. That's huge. That gives A back to Sentinels. But for now, it's B. Trickling in favor of complexity at the 75% mark. Eli, they're looking for a trip cap, and if they secure this, they are right back in it. Enemy team. This has gone so back and forth. Both teams knowing how to play so well in advantage state. Huss actually left A here. A. I, think, I think the intention was to just go ahead and let Sentinel spawn A, just because e A is an easy place to spawn trap if you do have gold and tower control. But after recognizing they actually spawned in C, they do go back and cap A eventually. But I think the thought process was to try to force those spawns into A, but Hus just, just did not leave fast enough. Not only forcing maybe spawns into A, but maybe making the opposition think, hey, A is clear, we can we can go get that. So uh, cheeky play there from Hus, uh, wondering why he didn't secure A ultimately, but it does eventually go in favor of complexity. And so too is the momentum. About the only thing going wrong for complexity right now is that self-damage that Descendant took from his own grenade. Otherwise, Complexity are swarming, they're rolling, they have all the momentum, they have the scoring in their favor, if not for Boo Boo Doo Boo securing B. He goes down shortly after, Lethal defends the turf, but below him is Camo. Oh no, it's behind him, just kidding! Raidoop snags it, he steals it, and he could just steal the lead with it if he wins his one on Falcon, and yes, he does! A, in favor of Sentinels, but not much longer as Rhino will take B. No, he's going for the shock instead. And if Rhino can hit a spree, Complexity could hit a lick in this comeback. Love this positioning too. Falcated unsuspecting. They get the trip cap secured. Rhino was just hunting Falcated down. But the play from <gasps> Falcated somehow turns that around, but I don't know if it's enough. He's the last player alive. He's got the shock rifle. Only 10 seconds or so need to be had in this trip cap for Complexity to close out the game. Sentinels get in both A and B at the same time, though. Falcated gets shut down. This is going so down to the wire. Who's going to win this one? 238 all. 12 seconds left for each team, but it's Complexity with the edge in control of B and C. The push is on through to A, but two members for Sentinels go down. They're going to try to take B instead. Boo Boo Doo Boo with low shields. He's going to go down. That score cap is going to get reset, and Complexity 
uh, despite a, a horrendous mid game, have a good mid game, a, or excuse me, a good beginning game and a great end game to secure the 1 0 lead in this series. Eli, I thought that was going in Sentinel's favor, but complexity on the ice. I mean, like I said, this complexity guys, they are never out of it. They know that all it takes is one good sequence to flip the map and they can spawn kill just as well as Sentinels had done to them. They proved that there with the end game ice. They were down by over a hundred at one point, I want to say. I think it was 215 to 80 or something before they got control and just able to hold it to the end. That just goes to show you, I mean, it's never over till it's over. You can't give up. There's, this is a very snowball-y game. You just got to have one good sequence of spawns, get some slays, you can flip the entire map. Great stuff from Complexity. And love that game there from Complexity. Love the gamesmanship as well. Right? And especially, I'm going to go back to that play from Huss when he let A trickle to the halfway mark and then got off of it. I mean, that, that is the type of bait and a big brain, I think, decision-making that you need. And I'm, again, I'm so impressed to see that from these four players without the coach ashes who i think in most cases would probably suggest something like that or i don't know you got guys like ryan noob on the squad who are essentially a player coach so he's taking on that role maybe today but nonetheless complexity take the comeback and take an electric game one tied 238 all a complexity narrowly take it and now need just one more win to move on to the series unbelievable stuff i mean sentinels just upset ssg the number one seed in the tournament complexity come out win game one against them to some warped rock paper scissors we're witnessing i'm not really sure i think it does come down <laughs> to the game type <clears throat> excuse me i think it does come down to the game types that these guys are playing but live fire slayer feel like it could go either way capture the flag i kind of feel like might weigh in sentinel's favor i feel like they're just a very good ctf map especially on the dual sniper maps but i mean complexity have looked just as strong in yeah. just as many situations so i mean this one is definitely possible to go either way yeah, you start building a, a case in your head for Sentinels and Slayer on live fire. Oh, Sparty. Allocated with the snipe. Man, that could cause trouble. Boo boo dooboo with the camo. I mean, there's all sorts of sandbox to work with for Sentinels. But on the other side, I think guys like Descendant, even Hus could pop off with the snipe. So I don't know. Who do you give the edge to, at least in favor of sandbox here in this one, Eli? As it's uh, it's a close one. I don't know, man. I think sandbox, maybe Sentinels, but We've talked about it before. Every team Ryanube's on just knows how to win Slayers. I mean, this guy is always coming up with unique ways to play around the map. Sometimes you'll see four man pushes to one side. Uh, what I like to see when I watch these guys play is like they'll start a play sometimes, but if they earn some more information that says that play is not going to work out long term, they'll just turn on a dime and completely shift the game plan into another part of the map. I think we're going to see some of that, but we'll also see some of that from Sentinels. I mean, Booba Dooba, another mastermind, just like Ryan Oob, that's going to come up with some on the fly strategies to keep their team unpredictable. And unpredictability is the name of the game this stage uh, in, in the late stage of the meta here. I want to thank Gray for the intel in chat says that Ashes is coaching. So despite Ashes, I believe, being uh, previously committed to other engagements this morning, he's back in the mix. So I think he said, complete. Hey, you guys got these early rounds, right? <laughs> Uh, so he's here uh, for round four in a pivotal series against Sentinels where, like you said, Eli, they get that momentum shut down from the SSG series. That feels like a, feels like a long time ago. It was just 30 minutes ago, but that, that feels like a long time ago as Sentinels are going to have to find another way to regain. But I think this is great for Sentinels in the grand scheme of things because they're having some response right they're having to respond right they're having to go through adversity and i think the more of that they can face and find themselves victorious at the end it's going to bode well for them after that really uncharacteristic disappointing finish at arlington as we have our game two started here one to one now two to two off the start as a qt goes favor goes in favor of complexity so too is the snipe with the camo as well sparty being back in form definitely massive or sentinels he is kind of the cornerstone of this team but yeah so far early going sniper in the hand of precision this guy unbelievable with the sniper rifle sentinels do a good job to shut him down before that gets out of hands but look at huss huss in perfect position to not only grab the camo but shut down the play from sentinels regain the snipe and now he's got that ever dangerous camo snipe combination as we were talking about huss might not be sniper number one on this complexity team but he is a damn good sniper at that now lining up his shot 
onto the forehead of Boo Boo instead prioritizes the positioning of Sparty instead, maybe because he's a little bit further pushed up on the map. Three players go down for Sentinels, and that process is going to be played perfectly. They should be able to swarm Falcated here. Almost a guaranteed death for him as he goes down. A little bit staggered from this Sentinels roster, now spawning in A. Lethal with a huge slay. Opens up the break. If not for Lethal there, Sentinels could have been stuck at the back of A. And they're now rolling off of this disadvantageous spawn and are coming right back. Now down only two. Complexity up by two. Sparty trying to push across through top center while Boo Boo pushes in through this door here. Kind of feels like Sentinel's still playing at the same speed they were last game. Kind of have to think that they do have to play their process a little bit more carefully in some of these situations. A team like Complexity is going to play very fast, of course, but when it comes to Slayer, got to be a little bit more methodical about your approaches. Now Falcate is going to try to wrap around the tower. Knows two players are above him. Probably calling out their location and hopes his teammates show up quickly here. And they do secure one kill, but look at this complexity. Get two of their own, and they're going to maintain the lead for now. Boo-doo-boo. Using the edge of the map. Could not use any more of the geometry to stay alive. It almost looks like he's ghost jumping around on that box as he stays alive. One HP. And the positioning to boot. Sparty with that opening break slay on Descendant now. Actually continues to roll numbers in favor of Sentinels, and they've now regained the lead. It feels like ever since Sentinels spawned at A and pushed out, it's been all A spawns for Complexity, as Sentinels push through once again into A. That's actually going to give Complexity a free chance to quote-unquote break out of that spawn trap, as they'll now have to work with B spawns instead. Like this, looks like they are kind of... You would think they're trapped at B, but no, they've extended out to the tower as well. These two positions do go well together. Ubu Dubu reigning supreme at the tower right now though he's gonna play spoiler they do shut him down falcon has got the sniper so looks like on sandbags and he does get shut down precision's gonna probably try to get that sniper if he can but this is going back and forth both teams not really finding major separation three kill lead probably the biggest lead we've seen so far for sentinels sparty looking to take the whip for a drive push out of the garage door but he's got some Defensive positioning here from not only Precision, but Huss as well. And my God, he's going to take down both. Yes, he does. A little delayed, it looked like, but Enemy the trade goes through. Victory. It's a plus one net outcome on that trade. And that's going to be critical here as Sentinels have an, uh, a slight edge, 26 to 23. Ryan Newt now collecting what looked like could have been a couple stickies. Not quite sure if he did actually grab those off the rack. He's a player known for manipulating trades, finding a way to just body stuff a sticky if he goes down. Not going to have that chance, though, as he goes down at the tower location. A tower control here for Sentinels has them in what feels like more control than we've seen previously for them. Up by five, Boo Boo with the snipe. This is massive. Not only do they have the lead, but they've got a good positioning edge as well. This tower side so powerful. Not another camo spawn for another 38 seconds. Look at the nose go from Boo Boo Doo Boo, though. Shuts down precision after being chased. It looks like Sparty's here to clean up the mess. Falcate is going to run away to get his shields back. And looks like Falcate rotates back to the team on A, but Sparty stays here. I think he recognized he did not get seen and that his position is unknown. Oh, no. And look at this. He catches precision off guard. That trade is so massive in this moment, even though he gets shut down, they get closer to the finish line. Every trade in favor of Sentinels. It's also going to make the fight easier for his teammates to win on the other side. And Wow, Boo Boo and Falcated just play so well around each other. Boo Boo calling that player out, Falcated to the rescue. Precision coming off spawns, trying to just earn a kill so Complexity could potentially get some space, but the sandbox control has definitely been on the side of Sentinel so far. Yeah, Sparty trades out there, but he earns the opening break, and another opening break slay for Sentinels could just close the door on Complexity in their hopes of a 2-0 sweep. The Sentinels need this one to bounce back in the series, send us to a decisive game three for now. 37-32 edge has Sentinels in the driver's seat. Falcated earns another missed, and he trades out. He sticks him. Oh, my God. He barely, like a nanosecond, found the, found a way to attach that grenade to Huss almost from the grave. It felt like it almost felt like he was in the grave when he stuck Huss as he ultimately earns the slay, and that ends up being massive here. This could have been a two to three kill game. Instead, Sentinels maintain that one team wipe lead. Massive kill, though, from Boo Boo. Look at Precision. This is such a sneaky pillar. 
Probably didn't expect to be found so quickly, but he's still gonna get a kill, almost two. Valkyrie gets a double kill of his own though to kind of shut down the efficacy of that play. Now it's plus five advantage for Sentinels going into the game. Maybe uh -oh. plus four. Complexity could potentially come back into this. This next couple of kills is gonna be super important. Uh oh, and because of the three going down for Sentinels, not only does that make it a three kill game, but Boo Boo Doo Boo staggers out. Falcon it staggers out. And now Complexity, if they swarm, they're gonna have the edge. They have the numbers edge, the damage edge. And despite not having the lead, it feels like we could see just that momentarily for Complexity as they claw their way back into this one, down one. Brian Noob with the sniper in his hands, the game in his hands, potentially the series in his hands. It's gonna have to really make use of this weapon. The game slowing to a crawl. Sentinels know that Ryan Noob has the sniper. They don't know his exact location. They're trying to minimize the number of angles they're visible to. Looks like they're trying to just hold Five different angles. Remaining. Falcated and Boo Boo opting to just push through bottom center. I think Ryan Noob saw the corner of that player. Ryan Noob hits the body shot and a good grenade. Also just wasting their time calling for help from his teammates. We were able to shut him down, but where's the rest of complexity? You have to think they're on their way. Yes, the cavalry has arrived. Ryan Noob's call was heard, and now it's complexity in the lead by two, make it three, and could just close out the series. There it is. There's that lead that we were feeling intrinsically when Sentinels were still up by a couple kills. Now it's complexity have flipped this map on its head. Now up by three, four, five. Oh my God! In one fell swoop, Sentinels aren't even gonna have a chance to deny the sweep. And after sweeping SSG, the upset maybe of the tournament, this isn't quite an upset here. Two evenly matched teams that we both see vying for a top four finish at HCS London. But for now, it's going to be a 2-0 clean sweep for Complexity. What an impressive regain from them in both matches. They were down considerably. Fair. I mean, both of those games could have gone either way, but it was Complexity icing up in both to secure themselves a spot in the winner's bracket finals. We're talking about a tournament where all of the best teams are here. The top six in the world have signed up. So for them to find themselves in winner's finals is absolutely massive. Granted, Rebellion actually not here because they had to. I was about to say, we, yeah, we, they, we, we, we almost need like the command bracket and then it links the bracket and then says in parentheses, Rebellion were uh, DQ'd because <laughs> everyone right. I see everyone coming into chat, everyone new joining the stream today. How did how did Shopify get swept by, by Billy Bob 420? It, it didn't actually happen. That was a that was a technicality in the bracket. Shopify signed up, but we're not able to compete. As we're gonna send you guys on over to the A stream, Optic versus Native with Tools and Tony. Just lucid thieves. How in the world do you let him get away with that time and time again? A killing spree out of Lucid brings them closer and closer to ending this game and the series. It's a four kill lead here for Optic Native. They got to awaken something big. They're going to have to dig deep if they come back, if they want to come back in this game and force a game number three. But as of right now, Optic seem like they just wanted more. That's until APG with the long range shots able to take down Dead Zone. The Stalker still getting some value here, but Lucid hits the black screen and so will formal native bring us with them too. Top, top little position there for uh, formal. It, like, great sight line, like a line of sight to, to get those shots down range, but he's just a little bit off that Stalker rifle. And it's the most precise weapon in the game, honestly. Like, it, if you're off just a tad bit, it's gonna cause, uh, it's gonna cause you to not get any damage. Whereas it, it can kill mighty quick when you're on point, but I don't think it's going to matter at the end of this game. Just one more to go and off to gaming 2-0 over native as we see uh, a huge surge from Optic at the end. And I think it was all thanks to Lucid. Uh, phenomenal work at the back base, uh, Tony. It's been a... Uh, it, it's almost eye-opening the way that uh, Lucid plays the game. It makes you realize how bad you are at the game because <laughs> he's just <laughs> get away with murder sometimes. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait say me personally, or, or we say like, yeah, I, like I, you I guys in general? Play, I think of your game. <laughs> uh, fair, fair enough. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! No, nah, I think I think it was great for Optic. I think it was a, a huge win. That killing spree was was incredible. Uh, also, Trippy with the fifteen and nine six assists to go along with it. I know you dis I disagree with me a little bit, and 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 well, you know, uh, I still think 
I would have loved, I really would have loved to see, <laughs> I would have loved to see Nader play with Vic Wynn as Dead Zone in the chat. I would love to bring that chat back up. That was, that was funny. <laughs> Let's let's get that back up. I, I think they're having a little discussion about what what uh who that's should be around. So they're on the starting lineup, apparently. Uh, that's so funny. But I mean, Hoax is like a coach that could like come yeah. in and, and play for your team and play well. Native was in that situation in a land where they needed to play with their coach, and I think now that's like that. Now they experience one time they're like, okay, we need a coach that's like pro level to come in and and help win when we need to win and i think i think hey hoaxer hoaxer's good man you know i, I wasn't wasn't there a time correct me if i'm wrong wasn't there a time it was like uh you're wrong i want to say it was like prototype i want i want to say it was like it was a prototype ho uh, uh hoaxer like a bunch of like uh free for all gods on the team i'm trying to dig deep onto this why i want to say it was prototype hoaxer straight and straight sick i want to say maybe like uh the threes up maybe, roster back maybe, in the day maybe, maybe chick I, I you know what i'm i'm, I'm sorry i i i the way i'm going to play a prototype all the time straight sick they were like they were, they were, they were free for all players oh, no there was someone else though. i'm like trying to remember their name oh dude it's like it was like when he was playing like on threes up it was like prototype oh dude it's on the tip of my tongue tony i'm gonna i'm gonna lose my mind because i can't think of this who, who <laughs> used to play with prototype back in the day oh no wait, never mind never mind we're, we're moving on we're moving on. optics great lucy got the killing spree i can't believe the killing spree that we saw I feel like we haven't given that enough love i mean what in the world was he doing he's in a 1v3 back in their base they can't even find him they're, they're just looking for him he gets two kills out of it almost got the third on apg uh, honestly i felt like lucy was like a superhero in the middle of that game he really was. I, I think he really was incredible, and so was the entire Optic roster. I want to give Native some love, though, as well. On the opposite side of things, I thought that round number one was fantastic. You know, a couple of things go their way in either round two or round three, and maybe we talk about them winning that game number one, and even in game two, keeping it as close as they did throughout that entire time. You know, at one point, within two kills, going towards the, the later game, I think I think native were phenomenal as well, but it's gonna be optic that move forward. For Devinator. I think that's who I was thinking of. Okay. I wasn't didn't wasn't that a team for a little bit? I don't know. Either <laughs> way, we got more matches to come. I'm trying to take a look over at this bracket. We got phase and proton, the teams that need to play each other to figure out where we're going next. With that match still in progress. So I think we got to figure out who will be the victor of that. And then we'll be right on with the winner of FaZe and Proton going up against Optic Gaming in our next match. I'm taking a look at some uh, at the bracket myself here. And uh, did, ooh, whoa, did we? We didn't mention this. The Sentinels upset Space Station Gaming mm -hmm. in round four. I feel like. I definitely feel like that's worth us talking about real quick because we talked about said which by the way sentinels also beat ssg pre arlington but we talked about the fact that obviously um they didn't have the best arlington run now sentinels you know out, out for blood again out to prove that they are you know a legitimate top four team a legitimate top three contender and another win on ssg good for them yeah honestly it was uh it was a great game i was watching it over on the lvt channel um Really, it was uh, it was surprising. They were on Street Slayer. It was uh, it was forty eight all, and then they they get like some uh, some janky spawn. Spartan stays alive. They find the the kill on Stellar. Then they wrap back over and eventually able to find some good nades for the final kill. But huge win, right? Uh, obviously, and then two really hard game types to to win against SSG, right? SSG a really great Slayer team, and then going you know oddball against those guys where you have to it's a battle of attrition against the best team in the world at the moment huge huge win for sentinels so with what i believe shopify rebellion uh not playing this tournament so far uh which i believe that was the case i there's a chance we could have optic and phase on one side of the bracket on the other side of the bracket complexity who we know to be really good and maybe sentinels being like the only 
team that I would say is like surprised to make it this far, even though we've seen them beat SSG before. Things still kind of going, you know, according to the script, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go, to go on a short break. When we come back. We're going to have our final winner's bracket matchup in, you know, the tournament. Kind of coming down to the conclusion. So start paying attention. Start getting back in your seat. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back with some more action. the ball. 
Ball drop. Enemy has the ball. Ball drop. the ball. All right, here, uh, here we go. Eli, Proton Gaming off of their win against the host, Cloud9. Now take on FaZe Clan. And FaZe Clan enters this tournament maybe a little disappointed, absolutely disappointed with their placing in Arlington. You expect them to get at least to the grand finals. They didn't even get there. So expect to see a little bit of a vengeance uh, tilted type of squad here for FaZe Clan. I know this is online, but ironically enough, despite being the world champs, I think they got something to prove here today. I think you're exactly right. I mean, these guys are used to being on top. They are the world champions, uh, reigning world champions. And for good reason, these guys were absolutely dominant toward the end of last season. Starting off with a third place in new bandit meta, not where they want to be, but these are some of the hardest working players in Halo, in my opinion. I feel like Snakebite, anytime any tiny change happens, he's bringing to his squad things to talk about. You know, spawns are different. How do we adapt? The, the, the bandit is different. How do we adapt? Game types have changed. You know, network is different. They're, they're coming up with ways to win no matter the circumstances. And you're exactly right. They kind of have something to prove going up against this Proton Gaming roster who performed about as expected, I would say, with that top eight finish. They did lose to Foe in that match for top six in an electric series that could have easily gone the favor of Proton. Uh, but going up against FaZe Clan, a whole different beast here. Yeah, Proton in that series against Fo actually just needed one second in the in an oddball to make it a 3-0 sweep. Wooed him and the rest of the boys iced up. So for Proton, maybe they still got a little bit of meat left on the bone that they wish to avenge here today. They're gonna have their opportunity against FaZe. And after a nice start, 55 and rolling, it looked like uncontested for FaZe Clan. Proton have cut this lead just about in half or so. Yoki with the shock, potentially some camo to work with as well as Proton. Look primed for a potential. No, but just as camo comes up, the focus goes away from the camo. Frosty going to take advantage of that and take the camo for his liking. No, Sab gets the cleanup, and that's huge. That's going to allow Proton to not only thwart the camo from FaZe, but it looks like an entire push as well as they're all still on that gold side, needle side of the map. All the while, King Nick securing more and more time. Very clutch stick here from Suspector. Shuts down Royal 2 who had a great entry point into the ball carrier's hold there if he had killed Suspector. Bilky's gonna hold down the A side and I love this setup. They're holding both C and A, forcing FaZe to spawn gold, which doesn't give them very many options to escape. They're also very exposed in a lot of the routes they have to take Enemy to the ball. the ball. And that's gonna lead to an extended hold, almost tying it up before having to play the ball. Great hold out of Proton. FaZe gonna have to earn their space before they can get another hold of their own. A great timing on the reset as well as Proton made sure that they had members of their squad set up on the gold side after the respawns phase, push into C and then have to double back over to the A side. It looks like Proton have the edge in positioning, not in the slays, but in the positioning at least. You almost wonder if phase Clan, they're gonna have to probably dismantle gold before they're able to grab the oddball on the other side of the map. King Nick takes the fight to Frosty, but Frosty wins it. The oddball does get grabbed. It's being rotated, though, by Proton as they seem to be set up because of that positioning, because of that well-timed reset. The game is close. Only three seconds separating these two teams. Wow, two go down for each side as well. So both teams still vying for control. Sab and Gilkey have good control. I think Gilkey also has the shock rifle. Sab going to be able to take out Snakebite. And he might be able to take out Royal 2 as well. No, Gilkey is the one to finish that kill, but Sab does a phenomenal job to stay alive. 
And man, Sab has really been unlocked in this bandit meta. This guy, absolutely one of the best players in the game. He has been keeping Proton and Firm Control double positive against FaZe, by the way. Not many people can say they've done that. It's huge. Gilkey has the shock, but Snakebite on the other side has camo. One shot at the stacks. Fields are going to recharge, though. He does not take damage, does not stop that timing. Six seconds from fully depleted shields to get back to full as Faze are going to get that, but Snakebite, the only player alive with that camo. So three go down, only the camo up, and it looks like Snakebite. Is he going to push the envelope? Is he going to wait for his team? He's not going to have the option, actually, as the Spectre takes the proactive play, takes it right to him, and now Snakebite staggers out. Everybody up for FaZe Clan, and FaZe are probably going to have to wait for Snakebite now to push up as a collected team of four. You can see the positioning split. Two gold, two on the blue side. And for now, it looks like Proton might just reset. They do. Two go down. Four go down, though, on the side of Proton. And that ball is going to be quickly picked back up. Eight seconds needed for the win. Only 52 seconds left on the clock. And FaZe Clan down 30. Snakebite was momentarily the last player on the entire map. Living in a ghost town. Takes the oddball comfortably into A. Gets his teammates to spawn around him. Proton got to figure out a way in now. Looks like they do have a good push going in through the top and bottom A at the same time. Sab, the nice kill, but he gets taken down shortly after. King Nick still alive. Snake by having to retreat. If he can stay alive, he could come back and contest the ball. He's going to have to. Is it only seven oh. seconds now needed, but gets the shots through the staircase to shut down King Nick. And that's going to be just what they needed to stay alive in this round. Snakebite, the Spartan under the stairs and maybe the monster under the bed. Causing nightmares for Proton is it looked like they probably felt like they had round one secured if they Ooh. were able to sneak away to duel. But no, Snakebite's going to shut down three out of four members for Proton. Make this now a 20 second game, but there's less than 20 seconds left. FaZe are going to have to hold strong. Snakebite is going to make this almost a 3v4 because of the fact that he cannot drop that oddball. Doesn't have much time to manipulate. 10 seconds needed to come back and only 10 seconds left on the clock. Might have missed it, but that was a ghost jump. New meta that has been sweeping the pro scene where basically you look like you're about to fall off the ledge, but you can get a very late jump backwards. Snake by using that to hit the perfect shots on King Nick. Must have thrown off his aim. That's and it. Look at, and just like that, though, it's going to be Proton taking round one. Here's the late jump right here. See that? It looks like he's falling, but then jumps backwards, throws off the aim of King Nick. Love to see that meta uh, evolving among the pro players. Yeah, and the way you can kind of visually represent that in your mind, and this is something that goes back to the classic Halos. Imagine like a little ledge sticking out over the ledge, I guess. And that's what the players are utilizing to ghost jump. We saw it there. On the Dorito side of Recharge, another popular map with plenty of options for that is Solitude. As we see the game continue to evolve and form here three years deep into Halo Infinite competition, the game still has plenty of new things to show us. As three go down for FaZe Clan, Gilkey with more control of the snipe. And Eli, I gotta say, this is probably one of the most underrated snipers in the HCS. Gilkey, I don't want to be staring at him if he's staring at me down the scope. I have to agree with you. I mean, when he's on my team in matchmaking, I just say, here, buddy, take this. Just drop the sniper for him. There's not many teammates that I'll do that for because, you know, I like to snipe. You know, I might hit a montage clip, you know, but Gilkey, though, just one of those guys so precise all the time. Look at this. The positioning, a big part of the precision. Look the quick flick onto the head of Royal 2. Almost gets frosty as well. He's got one shot left in the clip. Tries to hit the... The remote detonation, but even after missing the grenade, can switch to the shock and still hit the headshot, proving to us why he is one of the best snipers in the game. Great example of that right there. As we hop on board now with Royal 2, 22 seconds though for Proton have them in the lead after a round one victory. This at least FaZe Clan kind of scratching their heads a little bit. Proton, can't be surprised by this, right, Eli? This is a squad. Probably in terms of collective years of Halo competition, probably the most stacked, right? This is probably one of the most veteran stacked rosters in HCS, so not necessarily surprised to see them giving Base Clan a lot of trouble here <clears throat> as they shut down that push on the A side of the map. Yuki just looking for who he wants to toss the oddball to. Tossing out some grenades for now. All the while, 30-second checkpoint reached for Proton as they followed up a great round one with maybe one better here in round two. Can they close, though? 
Wow, the beatdown with the oddball. By the way, oddball has one of the fastest uh, melee animations in the game. Can definitely out melee a lot of other weapons. It's not going to be enough, though. Goki trades one out, but it's four dead clean for Proton. And back into that comfortable A hold here for FaZe. They are still down in the round in the game, so they're going to want to hold on to this for as long as possible. Third of the way there. With every passing second getting closer and closer to cutting this lead in half as they've done just that and then some. Lockdown location here with this oddball. Brel 2 protecting his duo snake bite. Push isn't coming yet from the tower side. Gilkey over there all the way on the C stairs. Doesn't quite have the positioning to push into Aegis yet, but he might just take down the gatekeeper, Frosty. Great utilization and prioritization. Gilkey knows he's not the guy to break through. He's the guy to provide those shots across map. But it looks like FaZe are going to shut it down. Proton shut it down. It's a 1v1 for now between King Nick and Renegade. This Renegade looks like he's going to make the, make his way to C, but Proton are spawning at C. Tied at 35 now. Three minutes left. How often in any game type do we see FaZe Clan getting massively outslayed? I mean, sometimes it's FaZe Clan outslaying, but maybe not performing an objective as well as they should be. But they usually find a way to win anyways, but in this case, Proton are leading objective and slays by a pretty significant margin here. So Spectre plus two, Gilkey plus four, Sab plus 13, King Nick, the only Jeez. player negative on the side of Proton. And that's why they have the lead here, but he's doing a good job to keep it close. We haven't talked about Sab enough, Eli. Sab with the, the most positive, most slays, most ball time. For just about everybody in this lobby, outside of Snakebite with 118, but you look at his slays, they clear double that of FaZe Clan, a roster where, well, they're known for slaying out. That's their greatest strong suit. So to see Sab, Uno reversal that and, and almost carry the banner of what FaZe, we expect from FaZe here for Proton is a big reason why. They're now up by 20 seconds, looking to go up 1-0 in this best of three series. Sab definitely one of those players that can absolutely take over a game. I feel like he's feast or famine sometimes, but learning how to feast more often than not as he's maturing as a player and really becoming an asset for this Proton roster. They've still got that oddball hold on the long haul. Yoki, last player alive, just racking up time, finally gets taken down and he's unable to throw the ball out. Yes, actually, he does. the ball rolls all the way to the batteries, <laughs> just barely from the momentum. And uh, yeah, at this point, Proton, they just got to continue to try to slay out so that FaZe can't get that ball comfortably into gold. Unbelievable. I could not believe. I thought the same thing, Eli. He didn't get the reset, but that ball, like a, like a golf ball from Tiger Woods, oscillating before it goes into the cup. Ball drops down and makes it a little bit more difficult for FaZe to regain here. They do, though, and they're down 30. Minute 54 left on the clock. Proton have looked like the better team throughout this match so far. But FaZe have the hold at goal, and it's looking like a strong one at that. Crucial 1v1 piv. Gilkey trades out with Renegade. That might open the, up the long haul to push through, but Proton are sending two through gold, and the push is on. FaZe looking really good right now. They've almost tied it up. They've got a nice, comfortable hold here in the pipes. Holding off the push, but that grenade comes in. Massive grenade for Proton. I think Frosty is one shot. He's going to go towards Renegade here just for some extra cover fire. Snakebite getting control of the gold side. Sees that player, but elects to not fight him right away. Maybe thought another player was on the way. Love the patience out of Snakebite, but Sab Strafe a little bit too strong. Somehow gets the turnaround reversal. It makes it very difficult of a target to be hit there. And now he's going to contest Royal 2 for the camo, and I think he's going to get it. It looked like Sab was taking like an extra half step with every step. I don't know. That was like a sweeping strafe. It really fooled the opposition there as Sab wins that one and wins the oddball back for Proton Gaming. And despite a six second lead for FaZe here in the end game of round two, Proton have the lead and the oddball right back. Now looking for a stretch run finish that could close the door. Sab now with camo has the back of a couple. My God, gets instantly peeked out. I'm almost thinking he doesn't have camp of the way. FaZe recognized that and took him down. On the other side, though, Gilkey with a double. Line it up the triple. Does it connect on it? And that's going to allow Royal 2 as the last player alive to maybe work his way up to A and reset that oddball, toss it out. And that's exactly what he's going to do. I don't know if you meant to exactly. That grenade was actually what threw the ball out. I think that was his intention. But King Nick now in a good spot to 
at least gatekeep it. There's a minute on the clock, which might come into play, but only 15 seconds needed for Proton. Ball's in a precarious spot, though, so both teams gonna elect to fight pretty heavily before they grab it. No, they actually force the ball over to C. Royal 2 last player alive, but he's gonna be able to get this reset. Maybe even get the lead for FaZe before doing so. Having the lead in the end game is so crucial, Eli, because you force the other team to have to make the first move. As no one's gonna have the lead. 85 all. 30 seconds left on the clock. That oddball gets reset. Camo's up soon as well. That adds a little wrench into the operation. Royal 2, though, with the opening break slay. Snakebite defending the backside of C. Almost wondering if he's opening up a rotation. No, instead, they're going to take it to Needles. Does Frosty. Two players are on the gold frags. 86-85. One second lead here for FaZe Clan. But they're starting to make it away to A with that oddball. And if they just play keep away here, they'll win it out. That looks like the strategy. Just 10 seconds ago, they're going to leave the ball in a comfortable position where they can defend it. Frosty doesn't care about anything but keeping these players away from the ball. They're able to go get through. Suspector, though, last player alive. And FaZe are going to scrap their way to a round two victory to stay alive. These guys just know how to somehow create winning conditions time after time. And Proton got to be reeling after that one. They, it kind of felt like the game was in their hands and it just slips away at the last moment. Going to see how they can bounce back in this pivotal round three. It all goes back to Snakebite, making it through the white hall to the back of blue to make it 85 all. And we talked about how important it would be to have a lead. Spays were eventually able to take a two second lead. The chase was on for Proton. They overextend. And now it's kind of rolling into round three. Renegade with three takes down multiple members of Proton Gaming. Doesn't get the triple kill medal, but a delayed triple almost works out better in his favor. Could potentially force some split spawns here. Staggered for Proton. King Nick finds the camo. It's pretty massive. It was FaZe Clan that have the ball comfortably in gold right now. No one on Proton, Proton really that close to stop him. King Nick going to try to use this camo to break in. Sab gets a kill in the feed. That's going to be on Renegade. But ultimately, King Nick gets shut down, and Sab's going to have to find a way to make a miracle happen with this shock rifle. Does get a kill on Frosty, who was the oddball player. Now it probably predicts that Snakebite is on his way in. Can't finish the kill, though. Snakebite icing up. Hits the shot that matters most. And now it's FaZe still back in control with the oddball in gold. Yeah, it looked like Sab got stuck in between a YY there as he pulled the shock rifle back out after getting his opponent down to 1 HP. Dead. Sab will head back to the respawn screen. So too does King Nick after Renegade takes him down. Renegade trades out, though. Sab on the bridge looking to take down two. But no, it's instead Royal 2 who wins that outright. A Slayer almost being played, it feels like, for now. As both teams buy for the Slays and map control needed to feel comfortable at this oddball time. You can see the Spectre thought maybe he had a chance to rotate the oddball. He did not. And then there, I think it's World 2 thinking he can rotate it. And Snakebite, he cannot. So Proton has the counter and now has the oddball down by 30 seconds. What can they do with it? Gonna be a massive one. That's a massive 1v1 win for Sab. Looked like Frosty thought he hit the three shots before the melee, but he did not. Sab doesn't trade out, gets the kill cleanly. Now I think this oddball is gonna rotate to the C side. Proton gonna try to make some space on this side so the oddball player can make it through. And now what can Sab do with this camo? Enemy has the ball. Sab with the camo and a teammate behind him. He's got Royal 2 in front of him though. And he's not going to get the jump on him, uh, despite having that camo. Royal 2 pick it out. And now has Sab a little bit on the defensive, manipulating his way left and right, trying to get that camo back proc. But Renegade wins it instead. My God. That camo provide no advantage to Proton Gaming. They're able to bring it back to within 10. But because of that inefficiency with camo, FaZe Clan have retained control of the oddball and a more comfortable lead. Royal 2 gets shut down immediately by a grenade and two players barreling towards him. Let's see if that shock rifle trades hands, but these players are rushing the setup of FaZe. They're all trapped here in A. Huge shot from Sav. That's going to get Frosty to no shields. He's going to have to scurry away. Oddballs is going to be rotated to the tower, but members of Proton are just there waiting for it. And these two players are still stuck oh. in A, but Snakebite somehow getting the kill from top. Uh, the top of the map. I, this is so hard to follow. The skills are going back and forth, but it looks like FaZe barely edging out that victory for that fight, and now they're going to earn even more oddball time as they take it to A. Now, we talked a lot about it in the offseason. We're starting to see it now in-game. That last shot, so crucial to hit. 
the switch to Bandit DMR. Zap could not hit that last shot on the snake bite. And because of that, this lead, despite being just a 10 second lead for FaZe Clan, is now doubled up and some. As FaZe, they're now in the stretch run finish. Proton felt like they probably had what felt like a upset game one victory, but now FaZe Clan have the lead. But after two go down, Sab has it at the lockdown location. C spawns for all of FaZe Clan. Camo up now. Problem is Proton aren't really in a good position to even contest this camo. They've got the right setup. They've got A and gold, but those are not good angles to approach camo. They're going to have to give it up. Understanding it's more important to hold the setup, but because of that, FaZe is able to just break right in. Royal 2 hasn't even shot a target yet with this camo, but it doesn't matter. The rest of FaZe are winning fights around the map. Now he's finally going to show up, try to get some shots on Suspector. That's basically four dead. It was two and then a delayed the other half of the team dead, which means Proton are going to have to wait even longer before they're full force again. Royal 2 dropping from the top rope. Allows Frosty to clean up on Gilkey and Faze is looking to clean up on a game one victory. Now needing just 15 seconds to secure it as Sap pushes on through the gold Dorito side of the map. Faces shots from World Fuel on the bridge and Frosty's going to now clean it up. It feels like to me, Eli, I see numbers doing only for Proton, but it's really just a matter of taking on gunfights that they don't have a mathematical edge in. Mathematical edge going to Phase as they take round three, come back against a Proton squad that Seem to maybe have a game one win secured, but FaZe, this is when they're at their best, when their backs are against the wall. That's when we see their best performance as they show us that here in game one and take a lead in the series. FaZe, these guys know how to win games. Proton look to be in firm control throughout round one, which they won, and a majority of round two. But FaZe flipped the switch and said, let's not go down early. What a huge win from them. Proton have to be really, you gotta understand how much energy was just expended trying to create that win and to not earn it kind of sucks a lot of energy out of the squad. We'll have to see if they can bounce back in game two here. Yeah, it kind of sucks the energy out of you when you drop 40 plus kills like Sab did and you lose the game. It kind of leaves you wondering as a player, like, man, what else could I have done? Uh, a moment for confidence building is now a moment for questionnaires as Sab is gonna have to figure out what else he needs on top of 40 plus slays to earn the victory here in game two. I guess that's something that bodes well for them though, Eli, is the fact that I I think Proton may have outslayed FaZe in that game one. If they can carry that to game two, it's a series tied before heading into game three, but what else are Proton gonna have to focus on here going into a game two on streets? Their life is on the line. I mean, this game type, you cannot get too complacent. If you get an advantage, you have to press it and press it hard. Just because you're playing against FaZe, you, you can't play scared. I think that a lot of lower ranked teams, when they face off against these top teams, they do play maybe more defensively than they otherwise would against other teams. But the name of the game is aggression and maintaining your advantage state. I don't think that the members of Proton are going to play scared at all. These guys are very confident. They know their abilities. They're going to play fast. And once they get an advantage, they're going to make FaZe sweat a bit here. Slayer on streets reminds me of a Aqua CTF. It's the fast track, I would argue, of the Slayer game types. And that's going to make it so that if there is maybe a, a snowball forming, like you talked about, Eli, it's going to be really hard to stop, right? Because this is one of those maps that a little tough to slow down the pace of play. You just spawn too close to the opposition to really force a slowdown. Now, we do see that. You see it occur on streets, but I'd say more, uh, more often than not, the action is fast and continuous. Which I think bodes well in favor of FaZe, uh, despite the fact that they got outslayed in game one, just about. Yeah, I mean, it ended up being close. Proton was definitely outslaying into the mid game there. But FaZe, once they got control, really started slaying out, almost like they were just warming up in that first round and really brought it together through the later stages of the, of the game. So I think in recent memory, FaZe is currently outslaying, you know, at least in the last five to 10 minutes of that game. But it really comes down to the item control, I think. All these players are very talented with the Stalker Rifle. The Shoddy is an obvious power item on this map. We're gonna probably see whoever does get away with the camo. It's very hard to survive with the camo on this map. Sometimes it just gets burned out for majority of the times that it spawns. But if somebody can survive with the camo and a player drops the shotgun for them, that camo shotgun combination is so deadly. That's the type of play that I expect to see from both of these teams here. I almost wonder if throughout the course of year three, 
we'll see teams prioritize less and less the camo because I, I recall a moment in that last match where Sab jumped up, I think it was Sab, jumped up to the box on the A side and FaZe, I don't maybe they had the comms, maybe they had a death cam or something, but they shot him immediately after jumping up on the box. We are seeing so much more often in HCS season three. The camo just kind of build it up for this exciting moment. Oh, he's got the power up and he's dead. So I, I don't know if camo is going to be as important of a factor here. But we'll find out soon enough as things kick off here. Streets Slayer phase with the opening break win. This early game so important. Who's going to get the items? We can hear the ambience of the rats and the tires there just squeaking away. Stay out of tires. There's going to be a lot of grenades there, rats. You don't want to hang out there, I promise you. But look at that. Frosty gets the repel sticky play, which means he's going to hold on to the red gun, which means he's going to be able to defend this camo as well. So not just a clutch and flashy play, but one that's going to have consequences to lead FaZe a better chance to get this camo. Yeah, Frosty can be brash here and, and say, yeah, why don't you guys go for camo? Because he's got that stalker rifle. Snakebite has the shotgun. So for now, sandbox and the uh, lead in favor of FaZe Clan as Camo's not on the uh, starting point anymore, and I imagine, I think Sab might have picked it up. Frosty cleans it up quickly. Oh, instead, it's Renegade with this camo. My goodness, the uh, snowball keeps getting bigger for FaZe Clan. Luckily, it's not much of a big lead for for now, but it feels like it could grow with all the sandbox control we've seen here in Game 2 Streets. So far, it is a four kill lead. That shotty's gonna definitely be called out. Expect a member of FaZe Clan to go right back for it. Snakebite can't go for it, though. He's going to go for the Stalker instead, which was also called out. Repulses his player away from him, so he doesn't get meleeed. Also dodges the Sticky, gets the kill on King Nick. That's a massive win there. Not only holds the power weapon, but also holds that side of the map. It's going to make it easier for FaZe Clan to push comfortably on the other sides of the map. Frosty goes down, but filling in where he went down are all three members left for FaZe Clan. That's part of the process that you want to play as Proton not been able to find any piece of the sandbox. You can see him almost desperately sliding out there for the camo as King Nick goes down, camo stays down. Suspector now does secure it. Will this be the catalyst that they need to come back in this one? Already a six kill multi-possession lead here for FaZe Clan. They've had full control of the sandbox. What can Suspector now do with it? It's gonna try to not get spotted as easily as we mentioned happened last time. He's got a disruptor as well. Don't expect him to use it though. Bandit just way too strong. Pushing with his team. I like this use of the camo. You don't want to just go in alone. You want some other distractions to be around so the camo's not as easily spotted. Teammate there pulls some attention away from him. That means he can show himself and they play this very well, all flooding in through multiple parts of A simultaneously. Base have nowhere to go and suddenly they brought it to within a two kill game, but they've got to stay alive here. Oh, I loved how Suspector utilized the camo to earn the finishing shots, not the opening shots that normally alert the opposition to your location. So there we see Suspector with a very good use of the camo. We'll count him three kills that he uh, attributed to. And that brings Proton back to within three, just two now. Now back to three is a 19-16 game. Gilkey looking to push in and potentially clean up the damage done previously. But instead, he spots players across the map. He's going to have to watch his back now. That flank has come through. Another player there for Commando. So Gilkey uh, losing the positioning of two players for FaZe Clan. They're going to take advantage of that. And was what once just a couple of the kills between these two teams is back now to a multi-possession lead. Now back to four. So here we go. One team wipe separating these two teams with Camo up soon. But just doesn't feel like Proton have done much to ultimately come back, to ultimately flip this match and gain a lead. What can they do with teamwork? Because for now, it's been sandbox control in favor of FaZe. I feel like FaZe expects Proton to make a mistake here. You see the way they're just holding certain angles. There's no reason to die. I think FaZe understands this would be the worst time to lose numbers as the camo is almost up. They're not going to go for the camo, understanding that it's bait. They want to kill the players around it secure some space on the map and then go for it. Looks like Proton saw the opening Double to grab kill. it, but they wow. go for it dead. Perfectly played and executed by FaZe here. They understood that situation 30 seconds before the camo even spawned. They were coming up with that play and they yeah. executed it flawlessly. That's kind of alludes to what I was talking about in the, the early game or the before the game started. How many teams are going to start deprioritizing camo? And what I'm seeing is FaZe, they view the camo as bait. Proton views it as a power up in there. Phase 
get the advantage, win the sequence because of that. And they've now ballooned it to a near double digit lead, Eli. So, and then that's especially important with the lead. You're gonna force Proton to feel like they need things like the sandbox. We're calling it out ourselves. So the desperation is already reeking here. Only into the 30s and 20s, are we? But Proton gonna have to find something, whether it's a stalker, a shotgun, or just a nice grenade like that to finish off phase and earn a couple well-needed slays. They can't let this get out of hand going into the 30s. Otherwise, we've seen FaZe do this more often than not. Run away with it. Look at the team rotation here. Feel the pressure being applied by Proton through the A side. They say, all right, we'll just rotate through Shoddy together. They're already into tram side, so able to completely flip the map. Proton unable to capitalize on their positioning advantage in the moment. And now Snakebite with the shotgun is just going to continue slaying out. It's been lots of trades. It was 30 to 20, now 35, 25, just been trading left and right. But every trade does play to FaZe's favor. And Sab's going to try to turn this around with a nice AR kill, but going to have to get a lot more than that if they're going to win this game. What shotgun skin was that <laughs> Snakebite was using? Looked like a meat cleaver. Chop some of these Spartans up in two with skin I just saw from Snakebite. As Royal 2 now, hopping on board with him, sitting at 12, 3, and 8. Frosty 11, 3, and 7. Seeing how he can do, utilizing some stickies. And the chase grenade on Sab. My goodness. A frenetic uh, sequence there as it was all grenade tosses from Frosty. Sab plays it patiently, earns the win because of it. He's going to need more macro wins than micro wins at this point as they're going to need some chunk gains. They're going to need three down, no one down for their uh, side if they want to come back in this one, but it's the opposite of that just about. Three go down for Proton. Frosty the only member down for FaZe Clan, and if they're going to do even more than trade out here, they could find themselves in the driver's seat for a 2-0 sweep phase. Looking good here after, a, again, the eye test in game one, I felt like went to Proton despite the game going to FaZe. Look at this patience, too. FaZe know there's no reason to overextend. They know all of Proton are in C. But there's no reason to push in. They've already got the lead. They know that Proton are going to have to find a way out. They're just watching all the exit points. They are like a boa constrictor, just squeezing their opponent to death. There's no Five options left. Remaining. Three go dead. It's a clean four dead ultimately for FaZe Clan. And now they're just looking to do it again. They just got to sit still and wait. Proton are forced to aggress here. The clock is winding down. Yes, there's five minutes left. It's not going to go to time, but... Proton feeling the pressure here, have to move. If Face Clan just watch all their exit points, there's nothing Proton can do. What was once a close game could now be a spectacular. Oh, oh, oh snake bite with five perfect shots for the double kill. King Nick barely able to survive and avoid a triple kill. Almost montage moment there as he does stay alive. Proton with life for now, but it's not much. They're down big, and it feels like for FaZe, they recognize when they're up big. They're going to let the other team come to them. They're not going to overextend unless they need to. As Royal 2 pushes on through, takes down Sab. That's another one of those trades that are going to play in favor of FaZe as they need just two more to secure the 2-0 sweep. Yeah, this is just feeling like it's over. They just need two kills. 16 needed for Proton. Renegade finds one. This player's one shot. He's going to get hunted down. Trade goes out. That's the end of the game. FaZe Clan secure their spot, I believe, in the winner's finals. Uh, just checking the other side of the bracket. Sorry, that was to get to winner semi. So this side of the bracket was a little bit behind. I believe they'll be facing off now against Optic. FaZe versus Optic oh, up oh, oh. next in winner semifinals to see who gets to winner's finals. El Clasico around the corner. And what is it about FaZe and Optic meeting up so early in the brackets now? Way, uh, winner semis, I feel like, is more often than not where they meet. I believe they did have a winner final match against each other in uh, Arlington, but I feel like uh, previously no, seen this SSG. matchup. Other oh, team that, you're right, that was SSG. So uh, yeah, I feel like more often than not, we're seeing FaZe versus Optic in the winner semis, which. I guess it's just uh, more fun for the Halo community because this is a series that you could very well see in the Grand Finals. Instead, we're getting the winner semis. This is uh, coming down to the wire now. Maybe a few different teams we didn't expect to be here on the other side. I mean, complexity awaiting in the winner's bracket. Or sorry, yeah, in the winner's finals. Going to see who between Optic and FaZe are going to come out on top. Huge win from FaZe. FaZe are looking very good, so Optic better come correct here. All right, gamers, FaZe versus Optic on the other side. Sentinels versus Complexity taking place right now. And wow, Complexity jumping out to a 2-0 lead. 
We're actually going to take you guys to that uh, to a different series. Uh, we're going to listen in on the A stream for Trailblazers versus C9. Shock and, and, and Berserker team with the likes of like uh, Glitchy and Simply Fear Me, and they make pretty decent runs. We've seen Leaderness and Dakota teaming with uh, uh, Calder and the boys, but these two duos coming together for what I believe might be the first time in tournament play and maybe making it the furthest that we've seen them here in some of these online events. And clearly it's a mix uh, that's working out for them. And as I said, they do end up going forward down and Diagram and Cloud9 are going to take that ball quickly. That's us able to spot out that last player alive. Great damage to let Rami clean it up. And now the positions of Trailblazers are well known. And uh, with having this ball in between everyone on Cloud9, it's going to be really tough for Trailblazers to stop this ball anytime soon. A side set up right now for Cloud9. Tusk is supporting that over from the bottom gold side of the map, watching those crosses and Septify. And a bit of an off angle with this shock, an, an angle that Trailblazers obviously did not suspect them to be at. From the needle side with the shock, good for one kill and some damage on top. Shock is going to get the shock out of his hand. That's going to be confusing. <laughs> I will shock back with that ball once again first little bit of time for trailblazers on this game the question is how does cloud nine try to break in what i like from this tusk he's playing the opposite lane he's on the weak side of his team but he still is able to find the big kill and then basically i uh make sure that there's no one else there to contest once again ball rotates out and there's just too much space between this ball and the enemies at almost all points in time for trailblazers to be comfortable from the weak side to a strong setup and eventually played off the map this cloud nine and tusk making sure that ball gets nowhere that could have that easily could have been 10 to 15 seconds worth worth of uh, uncontested time if he's able to turn the corner and get that ball toward the gold side but tusk shutting that down with just a clean kill with the br and dakota's advancing forward with the camo yeah that camo shut down right before it could really make some big impact on the game all is back into this pipes multiple players here i would have liked to see tusk wait for the push of rammy and diagram behind him instead he pushed in early and that noob combo i think just absolutely shredded cloud nine right you got a full charge on the first a little pea shooter action on the second and the third and well the result is the same keeping cloud nine at bay nothing they could do to get themselves closer big hold by trailblazers What's crazy to me is that with the update, they purposely tried to nerf the single fire and, and kind of bring it more in line and being used for the charger shot. But apparently that doesn't stop him. He's still using the pea shooter to perfection, even with a single shot. Meanwhile, Tusk making his way down long haul, a 15 point advantage right now is cloud nine. And Tusk wants to make sure that Trailblazers get no free time. So Bob played off the map. Dakota gonna try to slay out while moving this ball forward towards gold. Should be good for now in the kill department, but also for a time for cloud nine, cutting off this angle right away. Trailblazers, they need to slay out. Uh, the first couple kills gonna go in their favor, ends up being a 2v1 in favor of cloud nine and they're going to be able to get this ball and what i love for tusk is he notices the spawns of his teammates right away in the pipes what does he do he tries to close that distance down tries to get in between and now he's working with rammy to basically trap players that are pushing him tusk is going to know about shock's push right here from rammy's information and look how quick they took him down just a great setup from cloud nine to have a lot of information that's why you spread your uh, your net wide when you're in these objective games try to get as much space on the map as possible it just makes it so much easier to to account for the timing and position of your opponents love the way rammy plays camouflage really really picky with what angles and what gunfights he chooses to take and how he's able to almost get out of situations like that which he had no business doing it still ends up trailblazers taking down camo but they end up going three down in order to do so shock does get a big kill though he is going to go in for the challenge. Curb slides his way right into the bandit shots of Tusk. Leaderness and Dakota chase down that kill. And Berserker wants to watch this angle, wants to make sure that nobody from Cloud9 sneaks down long haul. Don't worry, they're going A side. 
Yeah, well, it's a, it's a battering ram that's basically pushing in on the other side. It's going to be a tough play for Shock because he's going to have to win a big fight against Septify, but a quick jump snipe is probably going to be enough to secure this game. I don't think anyone's in position to, to get to him in time. Round number one going to Cloud9. As Trailblazers uh, have their back against the wall. Elimination at this point but also just two rounds away from pulling off a major upset. Cloud9, you have a one round advantage, but Trailblazers are not going to give up. In fact, I think they're gonna come back in this round even hungrier than they did in that round one. Cloud9 immediately going three down, make it four. Trailblazers come out with that heat, come out with camo, and now should have a gold side setup. Gotta take in some Damages as he was spotted out. You really want to get that shock rifle in your camouflage player's hands, but Cloud9, they've been obviously taking uh, taking a moment to try to spot out that gamma. You saw three players at Cloud9 basically brute forcing their way towards that hill, and while well, Trailblazers were not ready to work with the overwhelming numbers that Cloud9 would have. And, and really just the timing on that. Like he, he went early to go and watch from Battlers where the gold side didn't see anybody. So you know what? Maybe I have a second to go for shock. Then by the time he looks back, there's three players from Cloud9 that are infiltrating from the A side to the gold side. So just unfortunate timing there. At least the Cloud9 breaking that setup and eventually maybe getting one of their own. It's a 3v3 scenario. And Septify has the shock, or I should say, maybe had the shock taken down. Names are going down as well, but Trailblazers, they're in here. They're in A. Cloud9 find on the, find themselves on the on the outside looking in. But the question is, is it really a firm setup for Trailblazers at the moment, right? They have the they have that position towards ball, but Cloud9 seem to be quick on the attack, but Trailblazers overcome the damage. Leaderness able to stay alive and leaderness really uh causing some mayhem by being that point of attack player cloud nine not able to get close to this ball Rambi's able to get oh, the kill on the pole zerker and make it a double after the team damage that comes in cloud nine taking down half the members of trailblazers as quickly as they came in, Tusk gonna win his individual battle, and you know Diagram is gonna win his as well. Cloud9 have taken back control, 21 to 15 lead. Three down, go Trailblazers, and now Trailblazers the one coming off a of spawn. Well, the big difference that we've seen between Trailblazers and Cloud9 is how they've approached the, the breaks of these oddball holds, and Cloud9, it consistently run in a pack it we we've seen multiple times now where there's three of them at, at the same exact point when they find the break trailblazers point they're spreading themselves a little bit thinner when they're pushing through and that's not necessarily a bad thing right it's just two different strategies we see this time trailblazers able to use those multiple lanes that they're that they're occupying to to break in right away but just as quick as they were able to grab that ball of cloud nine is roaring back as these players speed their way towards that ball three down go drill glazers and cloud nine once again bring that ball towards the back seaside leader this he wants to get there quickly and force the play ball looks like they are able to do literally just that they have a momentary slate advantage right now does trail glazers and even have some presence over toward the ball side, you saw, you saw Trailblazers not only get forced to play ball, but now bringing the ball back toward the seaside. Everybody's sitting here and stand set up right now. Leaderness is able to trade out his life, taking down two with them before going down. Septify wins his battles. Dakota gets the cleanup and the play ball. Could have been worse for Cloud9, mm. but I will say I really like what I saw out of out of Trailblazers. <laughs> I would like to see Dakota just have confidence that I'm going to win this fight and hold that ball where he was, but ends up working out either way. Cloud9, we're, we're not quick to get onto that play ball, and instead, Trailblazers able to get on it once again. Three players going down on either side. It's going to be Rami that gets the camo, but can Rami stay alive? No, the trade is out. I feel like I, I don't want to use the, the phrase desperation, but I feel like a sense of urgency right now. 
coming out of Trailblazer. I feel like they understand that this is the elimination bracket. This is game number three. They It's do or die right now. And you're seeing a little bit of a pep in their step. You see them really play fast, really play more aggressive, and really uh, multitask while moving closer to that ball. Cloud9 are obviously winning some of these engagements, but I think I really like the way Trailblazer are playing. Now we just need a bit more execution. You're only down by single digits. And you've taken down Rambi. You've taken down one more. That's a double kill. This could be a triple. Tusker's one shot leader just gives up that height advantage to trust his teammate to bait and switch. Trailblazers are going to take the lead right back. All right, leader, this is him, man. I, this is uh, this is a performance that we see in uh, that game two where he basically guaranteed it for his team with a with an eighteen and nine performance. He's coming in once again, plus four in this game, holding on to this ball, making big impactful plays. Uh, Leaderness is is absolutely playing out of his mind in this game thus far. A determined leader leading from the front lines, not just managing, but really, but like I said, leading his team, going in there, doing the dirty work, whether it's slays or objective, he's doing it all at the moment, but Cloud9 do get that ball out of the hands of Leaderness and Trailblazers. A double push out of Trailblazers off a of spawn leads to a double kill from Berserker. Tusk does find the one-shot player and finds the rotating rest of Trailblazers. The nades go down, but he's chased out his Tusk. Teammate does come up. Another chance for them to push. Another chance to maybe get this ball out. There's a player riding in the corner. It's gonna be Shock. Shock takes down Tusk. Except to find now with the chase three down for Trail Glazers. Cloud9 wanna get that ball back. Oh, and camo. I really love the way that Tusk plays in that spot, right? He's last alive. There's two players up on ball. What does he do? Right? He applies pressure, but he doesn't necessarily apply so much that he's going to die or even get a kill. What his job is, is to make that ball carrier uncomfortable, make them drop it a couple of times, minimize the harm that they can do. And while well, he does a fantastic job at that, eventually his teammates come off of spawn. They're able to get towards him. And now a powerful setup with Septify having this camouflage. He can quick flank any player that tries to go through the pit or into tower. And well, Leaderness is in trouble. Just there's not really much he can do. His position well known, but Dakota bails him out. Leaderness is alive and ready to go on the challenge. It's a single digit game right now with just 40 seconds on the clock. But the moment that Cloud9 are able to grab a hold of this ball, time will stop here. Cloud9, they can end it. But more importantly, if they start to lose control, we could see an early play ball and maybe even an early regame by Cloud9. Trailblazers are really the ones who have to get who have to make a play who have to make something happen and with them going three down now four i'm not sure if they can they have to come off a spawn which is already going to take so long for them to do and they need to get the ball out of tuss hands oh tuss is so smart he like goes through that doorway it doesn't linger right doesn't take that damage catches a player throwing a nade is able to get some buffer time for his team throws it back down into the pit now seven oh. seconds of neutral time but cloud nine at least will be able to come off the spot and have a chance to contest this ball shocks in trouble the ball goes down five seconds remaining final seconds are in I don't see any player diving in for the ball and the only one who does ends up running into a grenade and cloud nine just squeak away with a few seconds but more importantly time management against trailblazers in that round in, the, in that crazy round in a crazy best of three well played by cloud nine to win that one but also shout out to trailblazers for really being those guys i uh, i think leaderness his stock is up Go check him out if you're if you're if you're a team that's looking to like maybe add some firepower to the team. Uh, that that man is him. Uh, he, he made he played incredible throughout that uh, that second game. Really guaranteed it for his team. Uh, I think he deserves his roses for how he played. Cloud Nine just proved to be just a little bit too powerful at the end of the day. And uh, Rami uh, has been doing Rami things throughout this tournament. Look at his stats line, the stat line for this game right here 24 19, right? That's impressive. But when you add the assist.
Welcome back to LVT Halo's coverage of the Cloud9 5K Showcase. Eli, we got a great series on hand as two of the darlings of the open bracket at Arlington, both making it out of open and into a top 12 finish. Cloud9 and Tenrai, formerly of Darkest Hour, meet once again. Where does this series go? It's hard to say. Like you said, both these teams looked very good on LAN. Uh, I would say both of these teams also teams that are known to be better on land, maybe not so good online. Uh, so I could really see this going either way. Cloud9, though, look very strong right now. This guy, Septify, has been really stepping up his game ever since Bandits became part of the action. And we're going to hop on board with him first. He's also a demon with the sniper rifle. Gonna hit a big body shot. The beginning of this map so important. You want to make sure you don't lose everything because that probably means a flag cap for the other team. Septify taking up a defensive positioning at the top of Snipe. Takes down the Rockets for now. He's got Envoy pushing up as well. Takes him down to one HP. Rami cleans it up. Three go down for Tenrai and Septify with that Snipe and the defensive positioning. Now he's working with the T2 combo. Instead, it looks like he's calming. Telling his teammates, hey, boys, no. meet up with me on Greenwall. Tony's gonna get Rockets for free. It's almost a little weird. You you made that noise, Eli. Did you think someone lagged out? This is like a weird no, process. No one's picked no. it up yet. What are you seeing? The rockets are glitched. They can't be picked up. It happens sometimes. No. It's, it's happened since the last patch. I don't know what happened, but occasionally the I've actually lost the matchmaking game because my teammate lost his mind trying to pick up the rockets for 10 <laughs> like seconds. I just did. Yeah, and uh, like just completely threw the play because he was trying to pick the pick up the rockets for 10 seconds. But uh, yeah, it looks like those will be out of play for now. Common though has a shotgun, gonna be one of the more powerful weapons left on the map. Snipers though, always reign supreme on this one. And uh, right now it's probably a good thing that Tenrai didn't get capped on, or that Cloud9 didn't get capped on immediately after losing some of those items. But now they're gonna wanna shut down Common and steal the sniper, and they do exactly that. That could have been really huge for Septify to have Sniper and Rockets, even if he just allows a teammate to push through with him through the green all with Rockets. Completely changes the complexion of this opening break as now Cloud9 have pushed through into the Tenrai side of the map. Three Mauler spawns and a teammate for Diagram lifting up over the lift. So they have two on the tower. Tusk goes down. Still two in the back of flag. Diagram trying to work his way through, but the defensive posture has been strong here from Tenrai. As looks like Diagram I'm gonna wait for the rest of his squad to push on through. Rami goes down, and now Tusk, the last player alive, can seemingly clean up a couple kills, but I don't expect him to stay alive here in the back of flag. If he does, though, this would be really impressive. He's gonna instead get a flag out and take it towards OS, causing a little bit of chaos and confusion for Tenrai and what looked like a potential simple run through the long haul. Instead, they gotta worry about Tusk now. He gets that flag directly to the 50-yard line, and they got the OS as well. What a huge play here from Tusk. Last part in standing could help single-handedly reset both flags. Wow, look at the huge play from Common, though. Common uses the Plasma Pistol to completely neutralize the OS player. Teammate there to follow up on the kill. Looks like Yaxen gonna have the Rockets, though. These ones do stay in play, and they're gonna use those to get the return. So what looked like a good run for Cloud9 turns into a counter cap for Tenrai. Wow, what a topsy-turvy sequence this has been to start off. Uh, Deep into the lower bracket, your game one, best of three, Diagram. And we've seen multiple players of Cloud9 with the positioning at the top of Snipe. Hasn't worked in their favor just yet. Can Diagram do it with the Snipe? Now pushes up into the pit, takes down a low shielded Envor. Now with a 1v2, a 2v1 opportunity. Could take down Haynes, but Haynes draws in the opposition with the shotgun. Smart play to trade out there, make it a 1-1 exchange instead of what could have been a big numbers push here for Cloud9 through the long haul. Like this positioning from Diagram. He's not going to walk all the way through. It's a long haul. Knows that the spawners are coming up. It'd be a little bit too risky to position himself on the other team's side. He's going to wait till he has a bit more space and information to work with. Still has four bullets left. Does not want to pass these over. So stays on his half of the map. Going to hit the body shot. Try to open the map for his teammates. Going to have to back up once again. But every time he hits a body shot, that means a member of Tenrai has to sit back, which means going to be a little bit easier for Cloud9 to move forward as he hits the no-scope headshot with the last bullet in the snipe. Huge kill on Common, but I don't know if it's going to amount to much. Trades go out on both sides, and we're re resetting to square one once again. Envor, we'll see if he can find a cheeky route, but no, that could shut down as well. 
Looks like both teams. No, Septify and Rami get behind the setup. Look at the sneaky play. Now they get the flag out. This looks like the best opportunity yet for Cloud9 to get this cap. You have to imagine if Septify just gets through the long haul, he's going to get the score. And this match, Eli, based on kill death disparity, has been dead even. Now the score reflects that too. One all after five minutes of gameplay. Rockets and OS are up soon. And I, I wonder almost, is that glitch issue going to come up again? Is that something to worry about if you're on the side of either of these two teams? Is that now something you have to think about in the back of your head? I mean, it's something to know is possible so you don't lose your mind and waste time over it when it happens. But... Definitely unfortunate, especially if you're the team that maybe you kill the rocket player. There's still one rocket left, but you're unable to actually convert that into any value. Hopefully it's a bug that does get fixed, but not something you can really think about in the moment, I don't think. For sure. All right, well, there you have it. One to one, 6.30 left on the clock as Common is now pushed into the sniper side of Cloud9's base, but they pick up on that just uh, about as quickly as everybody else in the chat did is they take him down quickly. Thought he might have had a little bit of a sneaky push blank through the snipe side, but Cloud9 pick it out. But they go no, go they go two down shortly after that. Tusk looking to clean up any damage he can on the green hall, but instead it's Diagram getting cleaned up. Tusk, the last member alive on the map for now, trades out to make it a little bit less advantageous of a push for Tenrai. But after five perfect shots from Envor, they might have this in if they need, but no. Septify. I'm not sure. Did he spawn S1 with Envor there? That was a little wild. Uh, Septify though. Better for it as he takes down Envor, stops the push for now. Last two members of Tenrai that pose any threat are in the mauler. And now they're both dead. I think Septify spawned in the flag, just ran through cuts to shut down Envor. Must have been called out. He did just get a double kill, so certainly a high priority target. Yaxon gonna pick up his team's sniper rifle and rotate it all the way to the mauler. He's gonna hit the beautiful headshot on Ram. He might get two here. But no, Septify with the fist takes him down. That sniper can trade hands and uh, Cloud9 can have two snipers to work with. That could be a win condition type situation for them to get another cap. Big play. And now Husk, the big woolly mammoth, pushing on through the green hall with the use of that snipe. Clean up shots, go through on a common. A little sketchy there, but it's the spree, or excuse me, gets the slay and the spree. Nonetheless, now Rami. Working his way down the snipe side again. These are two pulls we've seen for Cloud9 go the unorthodox snipe spawn route, but this makes perfect sense. Tenrai are forcing spawns on the Mauler side, and because of that, Tenrai's not even gonna get a chance to look at Rami. Not a single shot gonna go into Rami. Oh, if not for Envor, who makes it through to the other side? Envor somehow escapes. I didn't see that. I saw the three players spawn Mauler, but Envor had positioning. Envor saves what could have been a 2-1 lead for Cloud9, and that, they're now counter-capping. What a huge play here from Envor. Even if he goes down and flags reset, it's still a monster play from him, but it looks like they might just edge it out a little bit further. Jackson get it, gets it down to the sword ramp, but Tusk cleans it up, earns a double kill, and things will reset at the 420 mark. Definitely a good opportunity for a flag run shut down by a clutch play from Envor. Yaxon showed up shortly thereafter, but during the, the attempt to get a cap of their own, looks like Haynes able to sneak away with the camo as well, or sorry, with the overshield. That gets shut down immediately though. No more overshield or I think one rocket left for Diagram and Cloud9 looked to flip this into another flag run. Game has been back and forth. Every introduction punch has been met with a counter, and the tie is on for now. It might get broken though, as Rami has a flag out. And if he could get it past the long haul once again, he can't. Yaxon actually, with the positioning down now towards it, takes down one, but he goes down shortly after Common, the last player alive for Tenrai. And it really depends on what side of the map he's on. It looks like he's actually behind the opposition. And he gets some shots into the back, but it's not going to be enough. Nice toss there. Just in case Diagram does go down, you have the full shielded Septify instead to score it. He does. Cloud9 to get 2-1 lead. End game approaching in 10 seconds. Excuse me. We're in the end game. Just three minutes left. Tusk popping off. 23-10. and 10. Seems to be getting some very clutch plays as well. Love the insta explode nade from Rami. Just guarantees that that player trapped inside. Green Hall dies, gets another kill on common afterwards. Tusk now with the sniper, gonna try to peel some heads, try to open even more space on the map. Septify and Rami pushing in through the training side. No, they're gonna kind of hold a defensive stance for now. 
understand that it'd be, be a little bit too risky to push through and die in this moment clutch snipe out a tusk but to go down envoy's got that shotgun I have to imagine he's going to try to push up and shut down tusk if he has the opportunity us the 2.4 kd he's powering over the rest of the uh, competition and his own teammates eight more kills than the next highest person in the lobby a big reason why this latest disparity trickles down into that scoreboard a 2-1 lead for cloud nine and they're setting up defensively you can see with that snipe at the snipe tower not looking to allow common and tenrai to push through but if common can hit a couple shots here he hits one one to the body on tusk they clean that up and that's going to be massive common was the win condition you could argue for tenrai and now with septify on cloud nine with an os and a sniper this battle just got even more uphill for tenrai envor goes down septify continues with the snipe and cloud nine seem to be in control of this match with about 90 seconds left Septify predicting exactly what his opponents are going for. Also listening to his teammates, that rocket actually interrupts the no scope that looked like it would have been good if that rocket didn't displace him just slightly. But the overshield gonna protect him from dying to the rocket. It's like Common clearing out their side, but he's got all three teammates dead. Septify Ow. hitting the body shot, applying even more pressure. And with just a minute on the clock, if Cloud9 can keep Tenrite pinned in their base, that's one of the ways to win the game. And look at Cloud9 here, working their way off of the snipe tower and pushing that line of scrimmage out to the 50 yard line, but they're gonna play right around that. They don't wanna push in too far. It looked like previously though, they were using offense as a form of defense, playing up on the map is gonna allow Tenrai a chance to wipe them. And they do, uh -oh. Cloud9 go four down. Oh my gosh, that's the risk reward we were detailing. And Tenrai with the risk, earn the reward. Can they earn a pull with 45 seconds left? <laughs> They do, and they get two more kills. These players are spawning on the snipe side. It's so difficult to stop this flag once you're spawning in the court. All members of Cloud9 die again. This one's going home, Hunter. Did they double All this? They could potentially double this, but I think they're going to play it smart. Haynes is going to backtrack. Just make sure there's no overextenders. They still have time to run back, but just getting to sudden death is a win of its own. Huge plays out of Tenrai. Yeah, on four. More often than not, he has extended that line of scrimmage far beyond the means of where you think it would be regularly. As more often than not, on four that finds himself in the Cloud9 base, really been that thorn in the side for the Tenrai roster. And wow, they ice up to tie it up. Sudden Death OT is up next. We'll have a reset. It's not quite like Aquarius where the reset winner has a big advantage on scoring next, but I guess here on Pit, a reset win could you earn you the sandbox and then the pole to ultimately score as Envor gets the opening break slay onto Rami. Diagram pushing up through the bridge side of the map and it's Envor once again working his way through. Holding forward continuously, always, always finding himself on the Cloud9 Ross, uh, side of the map. That's spelled problems for them. Exactly right. Haynes on the other hand, on the other side of the map, trying to neutralize the efficacy of the OS. Gets the peak shots down range, stays alive, so just neutralizing some of that value. Septify needs to hit the no-scope on the shot he player does. It's the cleanup as well. Tries to turn it into a double on for being a difficult kill. kill. Finally finds it. I think he knows there's another player lurking over here. Yes, clearly does so. Maybe a teammate called this player out. Common was shot. And now it's the flag is out. I think the rest of Tenrai probably spawning in the courtyard. Septify really she focused on Common. That kill took a long time. We'll have to see if as much time as was wasted there will bite them or if they'll still be able to get this cap. Tusk now doing his best Envor impersonation as he gets behind. Well, Envor himself takes him down with the flank body shot. And shoot that flag a little bit more forward, but he's got to worry about Yaxon pushing up on him. Yaxon, a great player. Ooh. Wow, gets good shots. Doesn't, I thought, maybe got that out DMR. And instead, he had help from Common. But Yaxon, a player to watch out for. I am so excited about this kid's potential. He is absolutely cracked and a player I always keep an eye on if he's in the lobby, but for now, his eyes are on the black screen. Three go down for Tenrai, make it all four, and this is gonna earn Cloud9 the mid-map control and the chance to pull, but Septify goes down in the flag for Tenrai. That's a massive slake. Common gets a remote detonation, and after what looked like could be a pull for Cloud9, they're gonna get wiped instead. Back-to-back -back wipes, one for Tenrai, one for Cloud9, resets this thing entirely with three minutes left in OT. This is going back and forth. It's felt like Cloud9 have good opportunities to, to make something happen, but the tenacity out of Tenrai to just time and time again, shut it down, 
once again it's two dead on both sides common in the other team's base though gonna try to pull this I don't I think he recognizes he can't really take it anywhere he's now the last player alive on his team best thing he can do now is just waste the time of cloud nine it doesn't even matter if you get a kill as long as you waste their time and become a nuisance then that means your teammates can push up further and faster off their spawn points he does a great job of that but does cloud nine have the answer and that could have been huge if you take down tusk diagram has to begrudgingly work his way back to the tower to take him down instead that fork in the road the butterfly effect has diagram push on through take down Jackson, and now earn control of the sword side. Can they get a pull? And it seems like a pull's not even enough. A, a team wipe's not even enough. We've seen both of these team teams in OT, no less, earn team wipes and a flag pull and somehow not score. So with two minutes left, it's anyone's game, despite the fact that it looks like Cloud9 of a slight edge in numbers. I mean, so both teams just making such good plays. That whole time, the common wasted Cloud9's time on top tower, that open enough space Orton right to get the OS, but Cloud9 also shut down the OS player. It's just one less tool that they can work with. This push looking pretty good, but they're also getting flanked. I mean, this team's playing so close, we might have a full reset if neither of these teams can find a way to get this flag home in the next minute and a half. Two down on each side, 1v1 for now. Diagram wins it, Rami wins his one on the other side. As three go down for Tenrai, 90 seconds left, Cloud9 gonna have one maybe two final pushes into the base if not like you said we're going to ot number two and we're fully resetting but diagram looking to change that gets the headshot opening break on yaks and onboard and tusk trade out that's gonna be a net win condition for cloud nine by a count of one as they continue to push through stickies go out Haynes goes down double kill in the feed for diagram yes the killing spree no less instantaneously pulls that flag but on four somehow finds a way to take him down on four then gets sniped in the face by rammy Rami just daring the opposition to scooch a little bit further to reset that flag. They're not going to take the bait. Instead, Rami's going to take the initiative to push on through. Boxer Metal, Pugilistic takes down Common. Three go down for Tenrai. And if Rami continues to have this stellar performance in the back of the flag, this could just spell a game one win for Cloud9 as they have the flag through the long haul. Rami just trying to stay alive, be a nuisance, but I think he's done enough to earn Cloud9 the victory. Camera switch to the flag. Yes, that'll do it. Tusk scores it. And Cloud9 take the win. Up 1-0 in the series. What an absolute barn burner of a match that went back and forth. Time and time again. What a hard fought victory for Cloud9. The tenacity after getting shut down in so many different plays. Finally, with 30 seconds on the clock, all the pieces of the puzzle come together. They're able to shut down all members of Cloud9, even when Envor comes off spawn and kills the flag runner. Rami's right there with the other team's sniper rifle to shut it down, ultimately bring it all the way home. Great stuff out of Cloud9. I feel like this Cloud9, I feel like both of, I, honestly, this is why this series is so intriguing to me, Eli, is because I think we're looking at two teams. I think one of these two teams are gonna wind up in pool play, not from the open bracket, from the starting bracket, if you will, in ACS London, and my God, this, Kind of feels like a grudge match in that sense that there's only so many opportunities. There are only so many spots available. Top six NA have already netted their spot in pool play. You have a couple more spots up for grabs, and I got a pretty strong feeling Tenrai and Cloud9 are going to be fighting for it. I think you're exactly right. I mean, these guys, all these teams, I mean, Halos are the most competitive it's ever been. I feel like there's 16 different teams that belong in the top eight, but it's just not how math works. So it's going to be, <laughs> it's, it's just going to be a, a battle at every single tournament to see who can get there. And uh, these two teams very close and I could see them playing each other for top eight at some point throughout the season. Right now though, hopping into recharge Slayer. Can Tenrai bounce back and potentially send this to a game three. Hopping on board here with Envor. Ooh, had camo, but he goes down. As Yaxon going to try to clean up on some of the damage and attention that Envor drew in. Instead, Yaxon going to deflect back, try to regain and group up here for the 2v1 with Envor. They do a good job to take down one, but Yaxon goes down shortly after. Envor gets cleaned up shortly after that. And those two kills are going to lead to a two kill lead here for Cloud9. Four to six off the start. Rami gets the shock as well. Kind of favor the positioning for Cloud9 here. Generally a bit more difficult to play out of the seaside. There's only so many ways out. Cloud9 also had the positioning to watch it. Envor tries to force his way into the whirlpool and it works. Shuts down the shock rifle player, but he gets shut down shortly after. 
I think that shock rifle will go back into Cloud9's hands. These players understand that that weapon despawns very quickly, so they're definitely going to be calling it out <clears throat> when it's on the ground to make sure they don't lose that item. I think Tusk is the one that has it now. I love the game from Envoy. There's just there's almost no element of surprise. He'll tell you where he's going and then go there and then come out find a way to win the gunfight. I just love the aggressiveness. He's really the tip of the spear for this Tenrai roster. More often than not, brutalizing the mid map with damage. He's got five slays in this Slayer so far. Ops in the lobby is Tenrai. Get on top for now. It's it was a two kill previous two kill lead previously for Cloud9, but now that has flipped in favor of Tenrai as we. Up on board here with the man himself, Envor, pushing into the back of blue. A couple of grenades going to stop that push for now. Perfect timing. Works his way back to us for the easy cleanup body shot as Tenrai maintained control of this lead, the shock rifle, the map, and maybe even camo. Look at this. Opting to play with his bandit out. I guess it's a little bit more comfortable to fight with it. Probably pulls the shock back out with camo, I would think. No, he's going to continue to push with his team bandit. He's got one maybe shot calls. A little Double bit better. Kill. Yeah, he's just managed just a little bit better to team fight with. He's still just running with his bandit. Wow. I, mean, this I guy's told just you, man. Running around the map, playing SWAT essentially. Teammates doing tons of damage. He's just there to finish the job. Once again, just have any of these players even looked at him? He's an absolute monster in the <laughs> night, just roaming and uh, just finding seemingly perfect timing. Talking about perfect timing, though, Rami with the sneaky play in the corner gonna shut him down finally but not before Tenrai take a nine kill lead <laughs> that was awesome from Envor his his left stick probably needs some WD-40 after every Halo session because my man's he's holding forward he's clicking it down he's holding it down and I love the aggressiveness now at nine two and four Tenrai and Envor in particular yeah I gotta shout out Yaxon too though who's ironically enough having a better game you could argue than Envor himself so this is when the teamwork starts to shine. This is when the composition of this roster, they got some heavy hitters on Tenrai. Don't count them out. And don't count out Jackson, especially. I think Envor kind of came on the scene in season one. A lot of people knew he was a player to watch out for, but I feel like year three is the year of Jackson. I mean, both these players, very good. I mean, Envor seemingly a bit more focused on Halo. I mean, this is a multi-talented gamer. I mean, I know he plays a lot of Street Fighter. I've seen him play all kinds of games at a high level. But right now, once he's focused on Halo and he's fully invested, he's a dangerous man to play against, as he's shown here. Now 12 and 5, big part of the reason why this lead is here. Yaxon, like you said, another one of those players to look out for. Really on his grind, but the sneaky plays from what? Cloud9 keep working out. His Sentify was just chilling top catwalk, predicting the fast route out of his opponent. And he gets that kill, but Envor sneaks away with the camo and is somehow alive long enough to get a kill. But that just denies one more resource that Cloud9 needs to get back into this one. Yeah, Envor gets two win conditions there by trading out uh, with this big of a lead. That's a win. And then he keeps Camo out of the suit of the Spartans for Cloud9. And with 10 kills separating these two teams, this is feeling more and more like our first Game 3. Like I just realized we've had some great matches throughout the day. I figured we'd have a Game 3 so far, but if I uh, collectively recollect my memory, I think this would be it. Our first Game 3 of the tournament, at least as far as we've seen, if Jackson and the rest of Tenrai can shut the door and secure this game too. It's looking like it's all but over. I mean, it's going to take a miracle. We've seen comebacks of this magnitude happen, but they're extremely rare. I feel like even with the network update, the fact that you can now trade in gunfights as well kind of makes it even less likely to go to time or sorry for a comeback to happen because even if you hit perfect shots on your opponent if they also hit perfect shots oftentimes you're just trading out in the gunfight so almost feels like comebacks of this magnitude even more difficult now under these conditions <clears throat> now just three kills to go to close it out three kills before game three <laughs> is on your screen Jackson looking to secure the final slays other trade out occurs in the feed, all gonna benefit this Tenrai squad that forced OT in game one. If not for Cloud9 icing up, it would have been a 2 0 sweep for them, but it's a butterfly effect to be discussed on another day, as we will, in fact, have our game three. Jackson looking for the final two shots on Deceptify. He's weak. Haynes hanging the location of Whirlpool. He wants some help there. He knows the finishing touch could be in that location, but instead, Tenrai having a little bit of trouble finding this final kill. 
And I think I might even have to toss this one back to Eli before we see it. I thought for sure we'd already be talking about a game two recap, but this one's still going for now. Cloud9 down nine. I guess they got a chance. They do. Rami has that shock, and they can bait this camo here. Let's see what he does. They do. <laughs> Look at this shot. This play, Rami also sniped a player that was chasing Skep when he was one shot in glass earlier. So even though it's super unlikely, they're doing everything they can so far. Look at that. Very good discipline to cancel the grapple. If he had just gone into the pit, it'd be very difficult for him to survive. I don't know what Envor's doing here. Maybe he thought the camo was still down there. Looks like they're just trying to force a kill. They do finally get it. But wow, I mean, Cloud9 looking like they were not going to give up until the final kill there. Yeah, Cloud9 don't earn the Game 2 victory, but they earn plenty of confidence kills at the end that <laughs> even had me thinking, all right, maybe, you know, it's a, a big deficit, but no, we won't hold out hope. We've seen Rami ice up like that more often than not on the main stage. So we're going to give him a chance, give him hope, but I'll hope him at the end of the day as Enri take Game 2. And now, Eli, here we go. Our first game three of the day, at least as far as we've seen on the stream. Where the hell does this series go? I don't know, man. Let's see. What is the game type? King of the Hill live fire. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. I think both these teams are actually quite good at this. Tenrai not usually thought of as like a methodical team. You know, they seem to be very brute force, but I've played with these guys. These guys definitely play a methodical play style. We also know Tusk on the other side and IGL coach player combination. I think both these teams definitely know how to play this game type correctly. I would not be surprised if this comes down to the very last hill and ends 4-3, but it's going to come down to who has the ice and can win in the end here. I don't necessarily love game threes, but I love the idea of a series ending on an OBJ. <laughs> so I guess you gotta take the good with the bad here is we have our first game three. Live fire, king of the hill. Camo gonna be a priority. The snipe is as well. And keep an eye on Envor, man. I just, his aggressiveness in this series has really stuck out to me. And it could spell trouble for Cloud9 here as we get things started off. Hopping on board here with the OG Common. I will say one thing. I played Halo all day yesterday. I'm not ashamed to say it. There's a lot of days that I play Halo all day. But you know who was in all of my matches all day? Tusk. This guy was on literally all day. He started playing at 11, and I'm still matching him in my games at like 11 o'clock at night. Like, this guy is absolutely grinding, and I think that's why he's been so effective today. I mean, he was making sure he was warmed up and ready. Who I saw a lot in my games as well? Common. Common was out there in the streets as well, just practicing all day long. And uh, look at this though, Cloud9 oh my God. With massive, just complete Hill shutdown of the first hill. They've got, Haynes though has the camo, but I mean, if you gotta pick one or the other, I think I'm taking the first hill over the camo, but he's gonna turn it into two kills, leave that snipe on the ground. And now it's a four dead for Cloud9. Tenrai could very well bounce back with the dominating hill of their own. Five seconds of regulation. That's all the time it took for Cloud9 to jump out to a 1-0 lead here. One of the fastest scores you'll see in Halo as Yaxon now takes to the top of Snipes. Has possession of the Snipe Tower Hill as well. And if Yaxon does what Yaxon usually does, hit a couple shots, this could be a 1-1 tie. Septify takes a body shot diagram. Thinking twice about pushing that. Yaxon gets back into the fight at just the right time to keep his teammate alive keep his life alive. He can now force a bait and switch where a teammate swoops in and helps him out, but don't think he has the numbers there. Looks like Ains actually does go for it. Yes, perfectly played process here from Tenrai, and we talked about a five second score for Cloud9. It looks like Tenrai are gonna take you know, a little bit more time to tie it, but tie it up nonetheless, as I think Cloud9, they're gonna say GG's go next. It's kind of what I expected. It's going back and forth. Both teams know how to play in their advantage state once they get control. It's going to be very difficult for them to break into it, but that means at this type of meta, whoever gets to the new hill first usually has the best chance to cap it. Right now it's Cloud9 with the early feet in this hill. The problem is this is one of the harder hills to hold on to, especially if a team as good as Tenrai oh. is pushing in. But yeah, the patience from Envor on that jiggle peeking player 
Shut him down, uses the QT, also gets the melee and then portals back to the hill. Oh, and stop he's it. still alive with the portal plays. This man is an absolute oh, menace and they get four <laughs> dead and Envor was just a thorn in their oh. side the whole time. I love this rotation too. He goes to block the green spawn. So heads up awareness. They want to spawn the opponent as far from this hill as possible. So it's very important to go to this green side and block it. And we warn you to keep an eye on plays like that from Envor. My God, remember that distraction metal you used to get in Halo 5? I feel like he could have yeah. gotten a triple distraction uh, from Jeff Steitzer if that metal still existed in Halo Infinite as Envor does a great job here. Hill only tied though, despite that impressive sequence with the QT, as now Tusk holds the line at top A with the use of the snipe as a chance to take Envor down. Now just drops into the hill. Haynes pushing up on that small door, takes a melee to the face, goes down, trades out. Three down though for Tenrai, and wow. Tusk makes double it all four kill. with the double. Nice, heads up, almost delayed double there. Is going to earn Cloud9, the 2-1 lead, and Tenrai are going to be set up, though, most fortunately for them, on the side where the hill just spawned. Septify, though, with some mid-map control. Might just spoil it, but no, I'd imagine not. After two go down for Cloud9, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for them. Tusk, though, doing his best job to stay alive, continue on with the snipe. As I do believe, might have had an observer reset. I still hear audio. I don't know if that's enough to cast off of as we'll uh, reset things here for a little bit and try to get the Observer back in this match. I do believe Laz game might have crashed. So we're going to go ahead and go into the alpha stream for a short while. We'll come right back to you here shortly. Shredded four players down for off the game. Renegade's quick on this uptake. Dead's on the first player alive. With a huge fight, are you <laughs> kidding me? Oh man, the, the iciest veins in the lobby right now. Dead Zone will keep this a flag standoff. Dead Zone takes the individual fight and puts his opponent in the Dead Zone right there. Beautifully played as he takes down Renegade and now Lucid with Rockets. He knows that Royal going to be pushing up here, actually. If he gets, there we go. Refiring him with the Rockets, <laughs> but Royal 2 lives. Oh my gosh. And that overshield's OP sometimes, man. It just it takes a bullet and it takes a second. Oh, man, that those rockets uh, neutralized. But you'll, you'll take the trade out, right? The overshield quickly taken out after that. And it, it's really going to come down to just a 4v4 push, uh, seeing who can just get control of their base. So it goes all the way down to absolute one shot. Wants to make it back in time to keep yeah, this like flag the alive. Back because no one else was dying on the map, right? If he would have kept pushing forward and let's say they, they do get three, four down. If no one dies quick enough, I don't think anyone was going to be there in time to return that flag. Still tied up at one apiece, guys. Three minutes and 31 seconds yeah. on the clock. So even if either one of these teams are able to capture a flag, it doesn't mean that the game ends here. Still plenty of time on the board here in your game three. A flag halfway returned just by the neutral state. Optic's gonna have to go back and give that thing a touch soon. One player does, and honestly, it's surprised at how cautious both these teams are being about approaching the mid line. With snipers coming up, you have to figure that's gonna be the priority for both these teams. And Frosty, well, he's immediately spotted. He didn't get one lick of damage down. This is gonna be Optic Gaming opening the floodgates, but Renegade tracks it all up. Great shots by him. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Dead zone once again. He's still with the big fight. 36 bullets of AR and ammo does it. Flag is working on the return. Their own way home. Oh my, the flag standoff ends with both flags coming back to the whole base. Gotta love the assault rifle play coming out of dead zone. You ain't gotta outshoot your opponent. There's plenty of sandbox for you to work with and let the AR do the work right there. Formal with the body shot. Sniper quickscope looking good. Renegade wants to push him out, but ends up running into the middle of three different players of phase. Phase, get the sniper out of the hands of Trippy. While off the screen, Lucid takes down Frosty. Two minutes and 12 seconds on the clock. So that means very soon we're going to see both rockets and overshield coming up. And Renegade's not able to stay alive. A Renegade tried his best right there, though. A really creative place. Jumping up, trying to get that timing on Lucid. Just not quite able to get the reticle where it needed to be. And this could be devastating for FaZe. Optic 
have the flag out lucid with a sniper bullet and an overshield could be enough to get them over this line he has a full overshield to work with there's no way they're stopping this man in time and even if they were able to get a line of sight on him you had formal puts his body on the line in between phase and his flag runner an unselfish play coming out of him leads to a two one up the game he had the lead with a minute 20 seconds on the clock and oh, it's trippy not just satisfied with one, he's going back over. He's trying to close this game out before FaZe can even work on the counter. Snakebite perched up high in the opposing base, but there's no real pressure to, to mount another flag grab. He's going to have to be the defense line for Trippy all the way on the other side. Frosty hits a big shot. Well, uh, that looked like about to be a little bit of body disrespect right there. I don't know. Maybe I'm going crazy. But I also know that Frosty still has the sniper and he takes down Formal 3 down once again, go out the gaming and within just a few seconds, probably of, of overtime here, looks like phase, oh, excuse me, a regulation phase are going to capture another flag. We will end up seeing an overtime most likely unless, unless a sudden death opportunity arises here. Well, fantastic work from FaZe. Understanding where everyone was on the map. Understood that the weak side was the sniper side. They had it blocked. One player spawned up. It was Frosty that took quick advantage, got the trade out. And you don't see it too often in matchmaking, but you will see it with the top pro teams in the HGS circuit. Sword side runs, snipe side runs are viable. And in fact, they are just as good as long side. Here we go. Extra time. Trippy has the flag out. Snake is gonna try to push his way out to the courtyard side. Meanwhile, Trippy already has this flag through long haul. Renegade is the overextending player. Starts off with running this flag, but right into denial grenades. Now that flag sits between cuts and S1, but Frosty with the sniper is pushed up. And now so are the rest of the members of phase. This could be a return. This could be a relay. Cause Optic right now aren't finding the kills. Formal takes down one, but they need more. Luckily, Dead Zone with the spawn. Frosty with the snipe. This is a war it's chaos and phase had to make a decision that flag could have they could have gone to extra time overtime instead they touched the flag they touch it again they're convinced that they can get this one back home it's a foot race snake bite all the way to their side is there anyone there can anyone stop this in time Snake fight through the cuts, through the flag. Apparently, the answer to your question is no. Phase three, two, knocking Optic down to the elimination bracket. Just absolutely the best game we've seen yet. The back and forth, the flags going both this, uh, both sides, and the snipe shots from Frosty to end the game. The man just could not miss. If you don't like that, I don't. I, I don't care. Well, no, no matter if you're a fan of Optic Phase SSG, it doesn't matter. If you don't like that, you don't love Halo. If you don't like that, you don't love Halo. What an absolute fight that was! And for Phase to take it that way, there was no luck. That was just straight skill. That was just that was just straight execution. That was just straight beautiful. Halo that we just saw there, three, two, phase are gonna take the win, trying to take back that number one top dog C, that top dog spot is phase. Well, you just be the team that made it to the grand finals back at Arlington. A uh, fantastic work from them. Complexity is what's up next, right? Uh, uh, Complexity Ooh. took down SSG earlier in this tournament. Sorry, I'm... <laughs> no, I mean, I we, we still got to recover. Yeah. We, we're going to need a moment, yeah, I gotta, right? I got to take a bit of a, a, deep, a deep breath. <laughs> but like you said, I mean, the tournament's not over. We still, you still got complexity to go through on your way into the grand finals here in this tournament. And I will say, although obviously I think most people have FaZe as the favorites, we've seen complexity upset FaZe in online tournaments. They are no strangers to doing so. And in fact, they probably want to do it again. So... Uh, really excited to see FaZe win that matchup, but like you said, Gary, the job is not done yet. And job definitely not done yet. Complexity is what awaits. Uh, yeah.
the they already killed one monster what's another right keep that sword dripping with the blood of their enemies we'll see that up next after this break the 5k showdown cloud nine putting on for us guys everyone give love to cloud nine first of all like, yo go they have this hat is actually my favorite hat tony that chair you gotta tell me that's your favorite chair right Oh, absolutely. In fact, I wish I could say I have it most of the time. My girlfriend keeps stealing it and putting it in her library. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, guys, everything that the, this organization is doing is fantastic. We appreciate them throwing on this tournament. Get Go go get some love to them. Go, go get yourself a secret lab, Cloud9 Cherry, because that thing is, uh, is a big... Enemy team took... team took the hill all right here we go back in action for the cloud nine 5k showcase this is the b stream coverage provided by lvt halo Mikowski joined alongside my duo eli the ninja and it looks like eli cloud nine were able to ice up in that previous series and now they take on a tall test in ssg ssg previously getting swept by sentinels 2-0 it looks like here the off the hill. start they got the lead and looking to bounce back yeah, this is not where we're used to seeing SSG trying to earn their way into top six. I believe both these teams have already secured top eight. But Cloud9, a little bit unfortunate, right? You usually expect to face Space Station a lot later. But Cloud9 <laughs> yeah. done a great job to, to make it this far. And maybe they're playing against a Space Station that's not on top of their game like we're used to seeing. So could be a potential chance for an upset. But right now, SSG look to be in firm control of the first hill and they're looking great as they rotate to the next as well Enemy team uh, interesting historical kill. context to note as well in this series you've got the old cloud nine season one cloud nine roster on the right and the season three cloud nine roster well, obviously on your left so a little bit of a grudge match in that sense as well a 1-0 lead though for ssg they've got positioning on the next hill as well eco looking to plasma pistol his way through do enough damage goes down shortly after and d9 are back in the hill oh nice sticky there from diagram turns 180 slides the death from the grave trade out but a nice sticky nonetheless and that keeps things even a 3-1 edge in lives for space station instead is a 2v2 you get stellar patiently waiting for that player to have damage shows up at the perfect time to try to earn this tower control so important teammate signing though tries to go for the ninja but they are ready for it. Cloud9 do a great job to shut that play down and Space Station kind of staggered here. It feels like they're maybe trying to force it a little bit, but Legend shows up behind the tower with the camo and the AR. This is exactly what you need to disrupt and buy time for your squad to come off spawn and get back in sync. Oh, huge for Legend to get around the corner and maintain the last few seconds of camo and open up the sniper possession as well. He's going to get it for free. Diagram sees that icon go off the screen, shoots a Refire shot his direction, so too to Septify. And now Legend, knowing that two players know his location, probably the whole team, looks to maybe reposition. For now, Stellar drops, drops back to the respawn screen. Legend! Septify comes for him at top mid, but he's able to stay alive. Rami's now the last player alive for Cloud9. And despite having the edge on the hill, this is looking more advantageous, I'd argue, for SSG. Absolutely. Legend has a sniper. He's on a killing spree, feeling himself. Also looked like he was trying to force the Cloud9 spawns a little bit further from the hill just by taking some extra space adjacent to the hill and shows up at the right time, right place, gets another no scope, double kill. And yeah, SSG are almost certainly gonna finish this one. I don't think Cloud9 are in any position. They're already setting up for the third hill. Uh, I mean, this is how you stack up stats like we see from Legend, 12, two and four. And it all goes back to just staying alive at the Snipe Tower, earning a few more seconds of camo. Then he earns the Snipe, the Spree. What else can he do? As the European superstar continues to probably feel more and more comfortable with his lifestyle switch coming over from Europe, I believe France, 
to NA. Not exactly sure what state he's living in, but that could be a culture shock to some people and impressed with how Legend has adopted, adapted, and got to give props to SSG as well, making NA feel like home. Big ups to the org on that as we see a big lead for SSG up 2-0. Three go down for Cloud9, and it might just be a 3-0 lead for SSG if they're not able to come off their back foot of the B and Nest spawns and break some level of control that Space Station feels like they've held from the very start of this game. Almost perfect efficiency. Every single time the hill is moving, Space Station have been ready to contest the space around the next hill. At the same time, they capped the previous one. Even when Cloud9 are trying to play in advance, they were shut down as a result. So, I mean, this is almost Jeez. perfect positioning and gameplay. And look at this, Bounds already playing towards the tower, has the camouflage. If he can shut down this player at the tower, which he looks likely to do, they could also set up for this fourth one and turn it into a 4-0 sweep if they can just get control right here, right now. Yeah, another one of those trades occur that maybe wouldn't have on the previous networking code. As Legend and Bound have both put together impressive lives that we've seen recently. Now hopping on board here with Eco. He's tied with Legend. Excuse me! One up! Frenzy. Killing Frenzy! Not talking about Eco. He's like a, a sneaky beaver sneaking his way through to 10 kills. Didn't see any until the last one there. Impressive sequence from Eco and that's pretty tough right for Cloud9. A legend pops off on what was almost a 10 kill spree stays alive for minutes and then once he finally goes down Eco carries the mantle on with a killing frenzy of his own. SSG are looking really good here in this lower bracket matchup. They are looking very clean and a no surprise right? I mean they as soon as they lose a match I have to imagine they, they have a little pep talk about it figure out what was going wrong correct the mistakes and that's what makes them championship caliber team no matter what tournament they sign up for and right now cloud nine although they've looked good at moments just have not been able to find an answer tusk been shut down throughout this game three and ten right now not what we've been come accustomed to seeing from him even just today but that's just what happens when you run into the likes of space station tusk looking to stabilize here and unfortunately uh, for Cloud9, fortunately for SSG, they've milked the clock a little bit on their way to a 3-0 lead. So sometimes you see a 3-0 and there's still three minutes left on the clock. Eli here, Cloud9 just doesn't have the time, space, or the livelihood to work with as SSG looks like they are going to secure a 4-0 sweep. They are going to continue to play for that hill time. Only 90 seconds left in regulation. I just don't know if there's enough time for Cloud9 to come back, even if they are able to secure the next one or two hills. You're exactly right, Clock. Certainly favoring Space Station. I mean, my rule of thumb is like a minute and a half on the clock and you're up by two. It's usually enough to start playing time because all you have to do is shut them down for a few hills. But Space Station are in such firm control that they're not even thinking about that. They might as well just cap it, get the game over with and on to game two right away. And they're looking better than ever right now. And I said, speaking of time, Eli, how about we don't waste anybody's time and we just get this thing over with? 4-0, sweet victory against Cloud9 here in game one. Cloud9 with a previous win over Tenrai. They looked good in that one, but again, the seedings, because <laughs> Sentinels really screwed things up when they play top 16. I mean, things are going to be a little out of whack. You're going to see teams playing a little bit earlier in the bracket, and I guess vice versa, later than you might have anticipated, especially on the lower side, which is what we see here from SSG is... They fell victim to that upstart Sentinels roster after falling at Arlington. They look great here to respond. Haven't seen them since uh, outside of that Complexity series where Complexity made it look like SSG ne or uh, made it look like Sentinels never 2 0 SSG. So things are a little all over the place despite having that lane experience already under our belts. I still feel like there's a lot of settling that's going to take place with these teams. I still don't know if we have a definitive number one team a definitive big three even now we have what you call it a, a big six right i mean on land it did seem like those top three were definitely ahead of the competition at arlington but i feel like as time goes on the rest of these teams are just going to catch up and continue to catch up and yeah I, I would not be surprised to see a very different look of the top six by the end of the year you know which one of these teams rises to the occasion to start defeating these teams or does space station just have a, a firm hold over the competition i i don't think they'll be able to hold on to it every event this year the competition is just too fierce right now 
down pretty fierce with that stalker rifle, but he goes down at the jukebox. I'm gonna play a tune, but instead goes down. Now looking to pick up ammo is stellar. And he does a great job utilizing the process being played. Drops the shroud screen, picks up camo, and now loads that shotgun into the forefront. Now switches to the DMR. Perfect timing. He takes down Septify. Gets some good damage down onto Tusk. Bait and switch potential there with Diagram, but I don't think Diagram has the shields to feel confident about a bait and switch. No, he does not. He's down to one HP. He does a good job to trade out with the melee. For now, SSG gonna take a four kill lead into the 11 minute mark. Bound just looking to apply immediate pressure to the spawners. Like that play from Septify, predicting that those players are coming in, but sometimes you just there's just nothing you can do when a couple members of Space Station are holding forward at you and they know exactly where you are. It's very difficult to survive. Space Station maintain a three kill lead. Cloud9 doing a great job though to not make it worse here. Yeah, Husk and the rest of Cloud9. I'm gonna just hold the line for now. We're gonna have to get on the offensive eventually. Every kill. Creeps closer and closer to a two possession lead. Multiple team wipes needed to come back in this one. For now, it's just at one, 10 to 14. As Septify pushes on through on the pillar side, has Eco down to low shields, takes him down. Legend as well, Bound trying to help out. Bound somehow gets a slay on the diagram as well before dipping and diving back as Cloud9 are gonna take the edge. It looks like on the mid map, but my God, with that push through the tires from SSG, that camo, which I thought might've gone to Cloud9, will probably go to Space Station instead wow. as they build on that lead now up five. <laughs> Rami doing his absolute best to survive there. I can't do so though. Pressure just too strong. Stellar getting away with the camo. Looks like the shot or sorry, the shotgun about to respawn as well. You have to imagine that's been called out. Stellar just trying to shark his way towards the fight here. Looks like the fight might be over by the time he arrives. It is, and now he's just kind of left with his hands in his pocket. Like, come on, guys, let, let me get one of these kills. Finally finds a few targets to shoot at. It looks like Legend with a quick route up the pizza jump to finish off the damage. This man is always in the right place at the right time. And like I said, I think Space Station picked him up because they're tired of playing against this man. Legend oh. absolutely unreal, nine and five to start. And what a sick timing play that was. Yeah, Legend with the aim hero type triple kill there, just dashing that reticle across his screen, clean headshots, SWAT-like. As, yeah, you get a, a quick little glimpse into why SSG picked up Legend. There's probably a multitude of reasons, but there's one of them right there is Bound has the shotgun, but he goes down. Impressive play there by Septify to take Bound down, and now he takes the shotgun to his liking. What looked like could have ballooned open to a multi-possession, little out of control game is now back to four because of that play from Septify. And it might just get even closer than that. 22-25, Legend goes down to one HP and Cloud9 at the halfway mark are right back in it. Septify doing as much as he possibly can to make a comfortable situation for his team. I like the way he's playing over his teammate. Decides to jump through the shroud though. After that player, those legend is still weak here. Good trade in that moment, but the rest of Cloud9 die at the same time, and it's back to a six kill lead. Not really sure what was happening on the rest of the map, but this does not look good for Cloud9. They're now all spawning tram. Space Station knows it, and we saw this exact situation happen earlier today. All they have to do is wait for them to come out. Bound goes wow. for the the ghost jump tech, but Looks like Tusk was ready for it. Great shutdown there. Diagram's gonna also snag the camo. And what looks like a terrible situation for Cloud9, they've somehow flipped into their own advantage state. That's deja vu from just moments ago where, yeah, it looks like, okay, SSG based on the eye test, about to run away with it. A whiff melee for Diagram could actually mm. make that so. It does, seven kill lead, just like that. Cloud9 have been hanging around the four kill mark, but it's now doubled multi-possessions lead. And I think, Eli, this is part of that eye test that we were seeing. It wasn't uh, materializing in the scoreboard just yet, but now this is feeling like, based on what we've seen from SSG, the type of lead we expect from their performance of eight. Yeah, look at this. Found using the jiggle peak, even more effective than it used to be. Diagram tries to run away, but gets caught as he does so. Now I'm just going to hold this positioning. Knows that the rest of Cloud9 are still spawning in C. All he has to do is watch this exit point and limit the options of Cloud9. Damn. More good Double shots. Kill. Bounds looking like he's on the aim hero. Simulation, stellar, legend. I mean, unbelievable. As legend now has a little bit extra to work with. With that shroud screen, could use it to potentially 
Close the gap here, but no, he's going to use the tried and true EMR. Double no. Tusk takes him down. One shroud screen left to recuperate at the bottom of A. Has three players all back against the wall. All down to low HP and all likely back to the respawn screen as Eco earns the double. And what was a pretty tight and frisky game for a while, now is ballooned open to a double-digit lead. Space Station in full control, looking to send Cloud9 home. Space Station in form. I'm just going to try to deny any possibility for Cloud9 to come back. That melee means that Space Station can go in, find that player who's waiting for their shields. Wingman Metal comes out. That means that player was killed. Ammo's up. Legend's not in a great position to contest it while one shot. Bound is the one to get it anyways. He's also got the Stalker Rifle. He's looking to close out the game right here. Ninja 360. I don't know what he's got. What he's got planned. All right, there we go. Off screen. The kill feed secures the 50th and final kill of this series. Cloud9 put up a good fight, but go home with a top eight finish. I think that's a strong performance from them. Hot off of a really good run through the open bracket into pool play and champ bracket at Arlington. That run today, they're going to stop a little bit short. It can't be too devastated by the fact that, well, you went down to the previous tourney champ. So tough bracket for Cloud9, tough matchup. And uh, an SSG squad that is going to move on in this tournament. But GG's nonetheless, Cloud9. I actually looked back at the bracket, and I do have to correct myself that uh, that was for top 12. Okay. And now, or sorry, no, that was for top 8. That was for top 8. So... That means Cloud9 do finish in top 12. Space Station would go on to face Bittersweet now for top six. On the other side of the loser's bracket, we've got Seaway versus Proton. Seaway being that lore gaming roster we saw in Arlington. Oh, That's wow. going to be a great, great matchup. Uh, didn't even realize they were playing today because they're under that different team name that kind of threw me off. But yeah, facing off against Proton, I think that might be a rematch. Didn't Proton defeat lore gaming? at arlington if i recall correctly i, I can't so. so uh that'll be an interesting one for sure all right well the bracket is starting to materialize more and more lower round matchups are set as we'll reset take a quick break don't go anywhere the conclusion of the cloud 95k showcase coming up
Welcome back to the Cloud9 5K Showcase. This is the B stream coverage provided by LVT Halo. Mikowski joined alongside my duo, Eli the Ninja, as we are getting deep into the tournament. SSG, after beating Cloud9 in that previous series, now takes on a bittersweet roster that, unlike Cloud9, I think got a maybe a head or reached where they expected to be at Arlington. I think bittersweet fell a little short. They got a little meat left on the bone. What do you expect in this series? And is the comeback possible, or excuse me, is the upset possible for them? I think it's absolutely possible. I mean, there's a ton of very talented players on Bittersweet. These guys, when they pop off, can absolutely hang with the best of them. Piggy, I mean, this guy posted a screenshot to him shooting 90% accuracy. Like, is this man cheating or what? Like, that's is just... snipe down? <laughs> it's just, just <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, but we've also seen Mortally be an absolute menace on the map. Breaking shot, Cherished has been absolutely leveled up in the offseason as well and kind of like that glue player as well just seems to know how to fabricate victories but you can't forget who you're playing against these guys space station after being sent to the lower bracket they have been on a tear i mean you got to think back even to season one they were known as that team that made the lower bracket run is there something about when these guys have their backs against the wall, they play the best Halo. And I tell you what, it's a team goose right now for Bittersweet. Can they get a kills? Stellar says no, go back to the respawn screen. I don't know if I've ever seen a team goose in a flag cap in, in a game like this. Space Station are absolutely unreal. Okay, we're on the board for Bittersweet. It's finally looking not so bad, but I mean, with the second flag going in, is it really not so bad? I don't know. I don't think any team has ever scored two flags faster on Argyle than Space Station. We saw them score three in 30, 45 seconds in season one on Aquarius. Now they're just 
setting new records. 2-0. Don't adjust the screen. Uh, two minutes not even off the clock, but yes, yes. 2-0 lead for SSG, and they got another one out. Don't make this a two-minute match. There's no way, right? This has got to be the any percent world record speed run of Argyle CTF. I have never in no my shot. life. My it's over in a minute and 40 seconds. This is this is multiplayer, Hunter. This isn't a single player speed run. What am I watching? I, I, I'm only assuming since the grunt apocalypse just occurred on Tuesday, I'm assuming bittersweet loaded into that playlist, right? There's no way. They were actively in the game for all three of those scores because that was unbelievable. A minute and a half to score and win three on Argyle CTF. I don't see Aquarius games that go quicker than that. I have never seen a more dominant performance in Halo Infinite. I know it's online, but that's ever a 3-0 sweep on CTF Argyle. And my God, if, if we continue at that rate, is this going to be a three-minute Slayer 50 to... I think that was ridiculous. To quote Shiz from Super Smash Brothers Melee, unplug the controller, dog. Just unplug the controller. It's over, all right? Oh my God. Maybe they just weren't ready. Like, how does that even happen? Uh, we know Bittersweet is better than that. I feel like they just, somebody was not ready for that game to start or something. They're going to have to bounce back. But man, I guess on some level it's maybe good that they lost that fast because they can quickly forget about it and go on to the next one but my god i've never seen that before i i just i have i'm concerned for all the fans and, and viewers that maybe right when the match started went to go grab a, a snack or use the restroom and they came back probably thinking that they went through some kind of time portal continuum and time certainly not real there's no way that the game's already over yes it is we are live we are in real time this is this is happening we are in the game too despite only having two minutes eclipse in this series unbelievable but bittersweet already off the opening break with w more slays than they had in the entirety of game one so that bodes well for them what doesn't is the fact that they just got wiped and stellar the sniper of hcs the the, the mvp of season two has it in his hand now this guy definitely not who you want to have the sniper. Look at the bittersweet play here. Are they just going to chill? Like, maybe they know Camo's lurking, so they're just going to chill. But, I mean, this seems to be the most obvious place for them all to be. I I don't know if I agree with this one. Cherish going to escape with his life and get a kill. Eco still has the camo, but I think the, the idea behind that is to let the camo expire. But, I mean, you kind of just let space station run you over there they do keep it close though They're still only down by three but very interesting play we saw there all right there we go stellar goes down so too does legend and just like that bittersweet are right back in it the no scope from breaking shot has them tied 10 all and i think eli this performance and what we're seeing in game two makes it even crazier as to what happened in game one because should have never happened. Bittersweet are a great team for great players. And they're showing a little bit more why here in game two is they're only down to putting up much better of a fight. I imagine they didn't even talk about game one. They just said, GG's go next. Let's forget about it. Found there's that 360 medal we were waiting for. He'll throw in 360s. He's not going for trick shots. He's not trying to decimate oh. the competition. He's just playing his game. Now go for the ninja. Another 360 potentially, but no, he goes down shortly after. But it's always fun watching bounce POV. 14 all. You might get motion sickness watching his POV for too long. The man's all over the place. Some of the craziest movement and creative plays that we'll see from anyone's POV. But yeah, you're exactly right. Bittersweet keeping this one much closer. Only down by one. This is why. I mean, some people in chat are like, man, they got destroyed so hard. There's no chance they come back. Why are the commentators talking like they have a chance? But I mean, we've seen what these guys can do. These guys are not bad players. They did have a very bad game one, but that doesn't mean they can't win game two. Almost better. You know, I don't know if I'd want to get a beat like that, but it's almost better to have a match that you don't even, it's not even worth talking about. Let's just move on to game two. And I think that's where Bittersweet is at. They just said, simply, that's that's not us. And let's just men in black, right? Uh, flash the, the pen and <laughs> erase everyone's right. memory. That's exactly what they're doing with their performance here, making us forget that they got trounced in game one, put up a hell of a fight here in game two. And if not for Bound and all of these camos that SSG has gotten, you could argue it could be a different story as Eco continues to write his story, his 
illustrious career. A double kill in the feed for him as Bound continues on with the last remains of that camo. Take down breaking shot. Now in a 1v1 is mortally commando. And look at that. I thought maybe he's grabbing another, another camo quickly, but no, there's a sniper there. What, what else can go right for Bound? He's going to have a sniper. Going to get away with his life. Piggy gets a double kill in the kill feed. That's pretty massive on the right side of the map. If they can find a way to shut down Bound and take the sniper, as they do find the flank here, and two perfect kills, that sniper trades hands into Piggy's hands. It's a trade on the other side of the map, and we're tied at 27 all. Rico down for SSG. Stagger, I would expect here coming soon. Yes, Legend goes down. Killing spree. spree! Killing spree for Piggy. Seeing a little bit more of that 90% accuracy that we're used to from him. And my gosh, I just love the regain. You talk about a stomach dropping game performance in game one for bittersweet that was it and that could shock the system that could send the confidence unraveling but they've kept it together they're in this they're in they're in the lead 30 to 29 bittersweet are bouncing back piggy playing very well here so patient trusting that his teammate would come finish that kill spares his life with the sniper rifle if he can land a few shots this could further cement their lead they're now up by uh three kills Breaking shot to Cherish, pushing across top middle together. And it looks like, I don't know how that player lost their shield instantly when the sniper's in Piggy's hands. It looks like he's gonna shut down Eco without trading out and still got two shots to work with. 35-31, Bittersweet are up an entire team wipe. Uh, team wipe, once again, don't adjust your dial. This is happening. This is reality. And if SSG don't, Bounce back and come back, have a comeback for their own. I, I just can't believe that this series would be tied one all, but that's the way things are looking for now. 36-33, Piggy with the camo, and this is a big difference because it's been all SSG with the camo. Now Piggy has it. Piggy has two kills with it, and Bittersweet look like the best version that we've seen all series, and they ride it to a win. Approaching the end game here, 39. Now 40 to 34, they have a two possession lead. This is unbelievable. This is a different team. It's like everyone's big brother picked up the sticks and started playing for him instead. <laughs> I mean, they. the reality is a, a CTF game, if you lose all the snipers off the rip, you lose every item on the map against a good team like SSG that can hit every snipe, you're going to have a bad time. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're just going to get your face ripped off off spawn. You don't even get a chance to play the game now with a chance to play the game. They're playing the game. <laughs> they're up by five right now. Breaking shot. Trying to bait this player. Crazy movement there. Just tries to waste that player's time while Mortally shows up. Looks like SSG do a great job of playing that situation where Breaking Shot was trying to bait and switch with his teammates. Space Station out bait and switch. And suddenly they've got the lead. They've got the new sniper rifle and they're looking to turn this game on its head. Stellar. As the game in his hands, sitting at 7, 7, and 9. Hasn't had quite the performance we're used to seeing from the MVP, but there's still plenty of game left. Bittersweet, the one kill lead, heading into the 40s. 41 40, now tied 41 all, as Stellar has the snipe. And with a full rack to work with at that, you've got to prioritize taking down Stellar. He is the first priority for Bittersweet. Look at that. Piggy was shown for a, like two pixels for a millisecond Stellar finds the body shot I mean this guy's reaction time is insane I don't think Piggy could have peaked for any shorter amount of time how does Stellar get the body shot in the moment they do shut him down though and normally might get a triple here he does and now they have the lead going into the end game but more than that they're able to force the spawns here Cherish gonna take a perch top tower with the sniper rifle and just watch probably sandbags and left side here and just make sure Space Station can't make an effective push. I think Space Station opt to send their resources through bottom mid. This is so smart. If they know a player's top tower, how do you take the sniper out of the play? You don't give him a chance to see you. They do peek him to try to sh take him out of scope, but looks Bound like more is right there. Where is Bound? I think he just jumped off tower. No. <gasps> oh, huge the shot from Cherish. Cherish stays on the map. Simply takes damage. That repulse looked really weak uh, from my screen as Cherish is going to earn the camo to work with as well. Sniper in his hands. He's got everything he needs to shut the door. Oh. A collateral potential. My God. Stellar goes down instead. Lining up Legend for the no-scope. 49-47. Cherish and Bittersweet are going to tie the series up at one after the most dominating form and fashion of victory we've ever seen. At least an online Halo, a minute and a half to win 3-0 on Arkhouse ETF. But that's a distant memory at this point as we head to game three. Momentum 
Now in Bittersweet's favor. All right, I just got to call you out in chat. Whoever said, spoiler alert, they don't bounce back after we talked about how Bittersweet have a chance to bounce back. What you feeling right now? Just curious. I saw a lot of people in chat. Possible. I'm calling out chat. I'm going to, I'm jumping on this bandwagon. I'm going to call chat out as well. How could they be good enough to beat SSG if they weren't good enough to not get 3 0 in a minute and a half? It's because, guys, it's one game out of the millions that we're going to play throughout the lifetime of our lives in Halo, but at least across all of the Halo titles. Not sure what the new one looks like, but we're going to play millions of games of Halo. One bad game does not define you, and it does not define this bittersweet roster. They show that they got the moxie. They show that they got the morale, the regain to bounce back against the best team in the HCS. And this is a huge stepping stone for a bittersweet team, like I said, to start this series that underperformed in HCS Arlington. They could have taken that 3-0 CTF loss on Argyle and just sulked their heads. Oh, woe is me. Can't beat SSG. But no, bittersweet. Got the, got the fire. They got the comeback. And they got a chance here to upset Space Station. Another upset, you could argue, as they previously lost to Sentinels, which eh, doesn't feel like much of an upset. But this would be bittersweet. Hold on to your butts, because this one's going to be close. Bittersweet, man. You got to tip your hat, man. After losing a game like that, to have the resilience to not let it check you, you know, it's so easy to get checked in this game. Like, ah, we lost. I mean, most of my matchmaking teammates in the first 30 seconds somehow decide that we lost the game. But like, bro, come on, man. It's so possible to come back. Just keep your head in the game. Stop being a little... Never mind. But anyways, we're going to game three. A recharge king of the hill. <laughs> This is going to be a tougher one for Bittersweet, though, because SSG is very good at this game type. Uh, I think that they know how to control space. They know how to push into hills when they don't have possession. Uh, and I think that Bittersweet, if they're going to win this, they got to be very disciplined. All right. Usually we don't both <laughs> call out chat. Usually one of us is like, you know, it's like uh, nice uh, mom's nice, dad's mean, or the vice versa. Here, no, we're just, we're, we're both going to just absolutely throw some shade at the chat but we're gonna we're gonna bring things back chat you guys are great we appreciate you guys watching throughout the day and we want you to keep watching because this series is not done just yet bittersweet not dead just yet they're alive and in a game three situation where they could earn that you know, it feels weird to call it a reverse sweep but that's what it is looking at the reverse sweep here if you hop on board with breaking shot he goes down alongside cherished eco looking to Reverse his way to the middle of the map. He goes down, but not before bound. Secures the camo, and SSG has been so good with it. Look at this. Great setup. I do prioritize the A side of the map for this hill as an anchor point. Just has a lot easier time getting into the hill. Looks like three dead for bittersweet. So Space Station can really choose which side of the map they want to anchor during this. Looks like they do opt for A as Legend and Eco find themselves over there. Stellar just trying to find a way to get some cheeky shots. This man has proven that he really doesn't need that much space to work with to be a successful sniper. Morley does great to get that trade in that moment. Breaking shot going to be earning that shock rifle, at least for now, but this hill is almost over for Space Station. Breaking shot going to contest it at the last second. Actually doesn't have the shock rifle, so it must still be sitting top gold. I think these players... Just being near it is enough to keep it from despawning, but now at this point, it almost certainly has despawned. It's a good thing for Bittersweet because Stellar is an absolute monster with that weapon. Mortally, <clears throat> Mortally and Stellar, the last two players alive and Stellar are gonna keep his life and maintain, keep that possession of the hill and the score as Space Station take an early 1-0 lead. Camo up momentarily, but for now, Stellar gonna drop, look to clean up on Piggy. He does that Mortally on the gold side of the map. Potentially cause some chaos for a pinch, but no. Instead, Eco finds the melee and finds the rotation onto this next hill. And that has been so impressive from SSG. They, they, we saw the double caps on CTF. They're winning hills and then getting the rotation on the next as well. The objective efficiency has been extremely strong. Yeah, we saw in that Cloud9 series the way the space station ran over Cloud9 in live fire. King of the Hill, that was just by virtue of knowing exactly how to transition from one hill to the next, seemingly understanding the timing perfectly and knowing how to prioritize space. And I have not seen a team cap that second hill that fast. That's usually one of the tougher ones to cap. And look at this, the remaining members of Space Station. Stellar was one of the players in A, Bound though, gonna stay alive in A. And that's exactly what you wanna do for this hill in the Whirlpool. 
Yeah. Going a little bit of deja vu elements to this game three as we did in game one, and that doesn't bode well for Bittersweet. They do have the early time on this next hill, but unfortunately, it's all four up for SSG and two down for Bittersweet as two coming back off a of respawn. Biggie, some nice shots, get the opening break, and now two go down for SSG. That's going to give up Bittersweet the chance to get right back in this hill, which they do. Breaking shot with the protective Guardian Angel positioning with that shot up top. We're going to take down Eco, and he does just that bound in the hill. And Space Station are milking here. Two, three go down for Bittersweet. They get the slay, they get the wipe from the hill. Impressive objective efficiency matched with the slay efficiency for SSG has them up 2 0. I don't know if Legend got that shock rifle before dying there. That might be in the hands of Mortally now if it's still on the map, but so far the shock rifle has not been super consequential. Yeah, it looks like Mortally did not have it either. So, so far both shock rifles have despawned before either team can really get much value out of it. This has just been an all out bandit war for the most part. Camo play not really being that consequential either. It's just all about time positioning and those anchor spawn positions. Space Station definitely winning in that department. That's why they have such a strong lead. Look at this. Stellar goes immediately to the elevator before even thinking about getting into the hill. Knows that this space is important for the longevity of this hill. And that's what makes Space Station so difficult to beat. Like, yeah, you might get a few seconds here, but if Space Station have control of the elevator, you're not going to get much time. Stellar locking down the elevator like he was a uh, doorman at a hotel, not <laughs> leaving that location as Legend at the, the mid bridge has some shots across on Piggy, takes him down to one HP, looking for the flank. And I like that there. He doesn't have the flank, but protective nonetheless with the 2 0 lead. You might be expecting a strategy shift from Bittersweet. The lead is not going to shift. Instead, it's going to build for SSG up 3 0. And we tried to build that path, that road to a reverse sweep for Bittersweet, but it's not looking doable after SSG just dominate the objective game out. If right here, right now, they were somehow able to get a four dead, I think it is doable. Three minutes on the clock. It's not an impossible task. You know, with just two minutes on the clock, that's a different story. But the thing is, Space Station are in no hurry to get in this hill. There's no reason for them to risk their life stepping into danger, giving away their location. They can afford to burn as much time off the clock as they want. Now that they have four dead, of course, they're going to get into the hill. But like I said, they were not really in a rush to do so. Let's see what Legend does with the shock rifle from the hill. Uh, great point, Eli. You can see Eco there creeping just to the right of where Legend is now, kind of crouching on that box. A 1-1, one, one, maybe a 1-2 game where you're down. I don't know if you're just conceding like that, uh, the hill, as Eco ends up getting a double kill, bait and switch with Legend to help ultimately wipe Bittersweet, earn control of this hill once again as SSG has reached the 75% mark or so. Not before Bittersweet, though. They're a little team wipe of their own. Eco, last player alive on the tower. What does he do? Does he just stay alive, wait for the cavalry? No, he's going to go down a little staggered. And if not for these split spawns here, Bittersweet could potentially earn even more time. As it looks like Piggy is going to elect to back up. He has one shot left in the shock, doesn't hit it. He goes down eventually after that. So SSG looks like they're going to get back in the hill. But again, they don't have to prioritize it. They can take things like camo instead. That's, the, uh, that's what you afford yourself when you have this big of a lead. Yeah, this one looks like it's going to be not doable. I mean, Bittersweet had the awesome comeback victory in that Slayer, but Legend trying to put an exclamation point on the series with another 4-0 sweep. Space Station looking absolutely incredible at King of the Hill. Doesn't matter the map. You like, can I have a hot Halo take or opinion? Sure, you can do whatever you want. I think we got to find a different game mode for Game 5 in Halo. Because if if if... if if Bittersweet are able to win game two against, we'll call it the best team in the HDS right now, but then every other game is 3-0, like that, why are we putting the game five in, in a... Anyways, you know, I'm just going to stop right there. I'm going to let the, the chat, you guys take that with what you will, but my God, right? Does that not just point to how Slayer may not be the best game five? I'm, I'm, losing, the, I'm losing the plot a little bit here, but uh, this is just... I'm a little astonished as I look at this series layout. 3-0, 50-47, and then 4-0. I don't know. Help me make sense of that, Eli. I'll tell you something, Hunter. When it comes to games, if the better team always wins, it gets boring, honestly. So it, it's okay for somebody uh. else to get it. You know what I mean? Like, that's why poker is so interesting, right? Like, you can be a complete idiot, but you can still win sometimes. You know what I mean? Which is awesome for the game. 
I'm not saying it's maybe a bad analogy here because no one's an idiot that's playing today, but it, it's just you got to have chances to, to win. And honestly, Bittersweet earned that victory. It's not like they True. that was a complete True. fluke. Like they just outplayed SSG. They they continually set traps and they played that Slayer extremely well. So, I mean, it, but like I said, when it comes to the viewer experience, I mean, g game fives can be exciting. But, you know, for, I guess, purity's sake, like maybe game five objective would lead to the better team winning more often. I don't know. I can see both sides of the argument. Even elimination, right? It's that way, like, Halo still gets their Slayer, quote-unquote, in a game five, but I, I don't know. It, it, it's discussions for the offseason at this point, but that series was just a, a perplexing one at that, where we can see a close game two, but games one and three are a blowout as SSG will move on in the lower bracket. Don't, again, adjust that dial or rub your eyes. That is for real. Optic Gaming versus SSG. Sentinels versus Proton will take one of those two series when we return. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Halo. Let's <laughs> go. 
here we go optic versus ssg this is sure to be a great series he got dead zone taking on his former team uh, ssg after stumbling against sentinels optic they fall to phase not much of a stumble there that's a, a really good piece of competition i guess on both sides but where does this thing go eli strongholds wasn't the best experience for optic granted that was on solitude which is i think uh, an outlier but set the table for us as we kick things off recharge strongholds game one I mean, this is a rematch from the grand finals at Arlington, but it's for top six. You know, it's not what we're used to seeing between these two. I mean, these guys went to game seven on land not too long ago about, I don't even, I'm so out of touch with time. What was that three weeks ago? I don't even know at this point, but these two teams very close to one another certainly look like the best two teams at Arlington, but which of these teams has maybe learned since that tournament, who's been practicing more and I think this game type could definitely go down to the wire specifically. Both of these teams are very good at this one. Yeah, someone's got to watch the bot oh back to see how Triple Legend kill. and the rest of SSG are able to routinely secure camo, whether it's the opening break or in the middle of a match. They seem to have that camo at all times. 24 and rolling times two, or I should say plus oh. two seconds for every second. Oh. Another double kill for Reversal. Legend. My God, hard to keep up with the slaying prowess. And the score, as it's doubling up for every second. There we go. I'm finally, finally able to say that before Legend maybe has another idea to pop off once again because of the trip cap. Can Optic Gaming break this and stop the bleeding? That was completely ridiculous out of Legend, man. He got meleeed. That was the first that he knew the player was there. Turns and no scopes him in the face for the double kill. And Optic had to shut him down to, to do anything. Legend starting the game with a killing spree and showing why he was that only player in the world that Space Station was willing to pick up. And my God, he has been an absolute monster ever since joining the squad. Big regain though for Optic to not only stop that bleeding, stop that trip cap, actually momentarily score. Not before B goes back into favor of SSG. And my goodness, Eli, this is looking like a Sol Solitude's strongholds right now for Optic. Maybe one of their weaker game modes and SSG are taking advantage of it. And I think this especially bodes well for SSG because Legend, Legend, part of that Quadrant roster last year that would seemingly manipulate the map a little harder than other teams could in Strongholds. He seems to have brought some of those secret strategies to SSG because they're looking really good here in this Stronghold game one. The first to cross into the 100 point threshold for Optic Gaming or even able to get a handful of seconds. I mean, what's really interesting about that is Space Station was already one of the best Strongholds teams. Then you right. add Legend, who comes from the, the single best Strongholds team. Like, they have to be, I would imagine, the front runner to win any Strongholds game against any team. Here they go with a huge lead up against Optic. Trippy trying to just force his way in here. Gets a kill and some damage, but gets shut down. It's three dead again, and it almost just feels like Optic's like trying a little bit too hard to force some of these situations. But as I say that, they do get control of B and C for now. Legends, or sorry, Lucid is gonna back up here Woo! to let those players spawn in. And with just a pixel of visibility, it's the reversal headshot onto bound, but the rest of his team is dying at the same time. He has to this kind of insane. hold on. Uh, I don't, he's looking like an absolute beast, but how are the rest of his teammates dying around him? Space Station playing so efficiently here. I'm so shocked to see a killing spree on the screen of Lucid at the same time as we see three go down for Optic Gaming twice in a row. I'm not sure how Lucid stayed alive. Previously staying alive on the B side to earn a little bit more scoring from 6 to 26 are Optic Gaming, but that's a small leap in, uh, compared to the giant jumps that we're seeing from Ooh. SSG. Headshot! With the plasma pistol, I oh, think so. I don't see the headshot icon in the feed. Nonetheless, Lucid finding mortality rate with that plasma pistol. It's not supposed to kill an opponent. It's just supposed to take the shields down. But Lucid, he knows something that maybe some of those Platinum 3s and Tools' lobby uh, don't know. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, Mr. Sandbox himself, we've known Lucid to pick up every single item he comes across and finds a max value out of it. Love to see the plasma pistol get a little bit more love. You know, me and you can appreciate that back in the Halo 2 days. Definitely not as strong as it was back then. Basically a heat sinking missile. But here, putting it to good work. Able to bring Optic back into this a little bit, but look at the play from Space Station. Doubling up on the B cap does make it go a bit faster. Understanding that Dead Zone was the last player alive. They shut him down immediately. 
Opta Gaming are now going to have to figure out a way to spawn it, see, not only cap it, but then also survive with their life, and that seems impossible. Down. Finds a trade situation. Eco in a 1v1 with Trippy, and he wins that as well. A little awkward gunfight. As Dead Zone cleans up the remains of those weak shields. Formal now down to 1 HP, but he takes Stellar down and wow. finds a trade. That's a massive 1v2 win for Matt. My god. Two players for SSG had him dead to rights, but that trade win condition for Optic Gaming earns them the trip cap now. Not, no less do they gain A, they gain 3 as well, but C, trickling back into favor of SSG. But after what we've seen from them throughout this game, I feel like Optic is they're going to take this. They'll take A and B and we'll take Dead Zone especially. Shock. Optic opting to just get into the lockdown AB setup. Watch each other's crosses. They know what Space Station has to go for. They're probably going to send players bottom, middle. Look at the Dead Zone's positioning here. He's standing on that little railing on the side just so he can see both bottom, mid, and top gold at the same time. He's watching the major crossing options for SSG. Perfect positioning. He's getting heavily pressured here. Can he neutralize the situation? He's wasting a lot of time. And they do ultimately take him down, but looks like Optic was able to salvage B in the meantime and also got C, so they will continue to score here. 194 to a rolling, now stopping 90 for Optic Gaming as they've done a good job to bring it back to within 100 seconds. I say that like it's a close game, but in Strongholds, you know what it is. Uh, and with Camo now in the suit of Formal, we saw the shot previously in the hands of Dead Zone. Just have enough sandbox control, but they don't have the life advantage. Minus one in that sense. And that flips, though. Bound and Eco go down. 2v2 for now. And Formal, I think, realizing with less numbers on the map is going to work towards the potential spawn location. SSG up next, which appears to be towards gold. And the needle side spots Bound, get some shots into him. Chases out the finish. Oh, wow. perfectly predicted. Bound walked right into the waiting reticle. Perfect pre fire there. And Formal gets another. Uh, gifted, you could argue in that sense. I don't know how Stellar went down, whether it's through his own grenade or wow. a teammate's. Nonetheless, though, Optic Gaming are now down by less than 100. Most importantly, they got control of B and C, and now maybe A for a trip cap. Watch out. That prediction from Formal just comes from having the most experience in the lobby when it comes to these situations. I don't think, yeah, there's, there's definitely no way anyone, you know, combining Halo and... Call of Duty, there's nobody that has played more tournament matches in this lobby than Formal. This guy just knows how to read his opponents, and that's yeah. what makes him so valuable. He plays almost every situation perfectly, it seems. Now 17 and 13 as well. And the Optic are looking good to maintain this scoring position, making SSG's life very difficult. Three dead for SSG, Stellar last guy alive, and he's in a position that's pretty precarious. I don't think he can get out of here very easily he's just going to try to buy some time for his squad to push up and now just sees a window of opportunity to push in a bit surprising but it's at the same time his teammates push into white so there is a method to this madness oh, stellar doesn't have the numbers stellar doesn't have the shields formal gets the intro shots lucy gets the closing as stellar goes down so too does legend now eco in the corner looking to clean up some damage on dead zone he does he's got to worry about the shots into his back trippy might be able to clean him up he does and that got a little testy there for trippy he's down to not only low shields half hp as well those will recharge quickly as he's back in the fight control of a b and c if not for trippy no it's not for bound dropping through he's not able to he doesn't have the positioning or excuse me i should say the the presence on the map with numbers to feel safe to drop down into B and because of that Optic Gaming are going to retain control of it for now but it seems like SSG that's the call that they've made they want oh. B they're going for it they're not going to get it though it's Dead Zone and Optic Gaming clean it up once again they're now only down 20 seconds Dead Zone with a massive win on Legend and that feels like a statement kill right there like yeah you might have replaced me on my squad but I'm still going to outgun you right here and maintain scoring position, make it a trip cap for Optic Gaming, and SSG has been reeling ever since Optic got control. They keep going back to B. They keep going back to B, but Optic have full control of gold. They got to take down gold before they can take B. Space Station, after playing the process perfectly throughout this entire game, they're starting to skip some steps. Will they 
skip themselves to a, a lead. I don't see it happening. I think Optic are in control. 2v2, now make it three. Mm. As Bound goes down, so too does Legend. Optic Gaming, in the waiting moments of this match, have done an incredible job to come back. And they're now in the driver's wow. seat. They're in full control. Chippy with Trippy with the chase grenade on the Legend, takes him down and lowers the chances for SSG to have a little mini comeback of their own. Stellar's gonna get a whack to the face predictably from Trippy as he's going to look to overextend to B once again, but it's not there for SSG, nor two is the victory. Optics steal it and take a 1-0 lead in this series. My goodness, I could not imagine losing that for SSG after the first five, six minutes, but again, it's strongholds in a 249-0 lead. That's not even safe. Unbelievable ice out of Optic. They had to play every situation perfectly throughout the end of that game because if ssg just get in scoring position and get into an advantage state one time you have to imagine they're going to get 39 points i mean that's all they needed to close out the game but optic playing perfect halo controlling all parts of the map making it absolutely impossible for ssg to get back into control and that's what we expect to see from the former world champions oh man that's one of those where if you're on land you're looking across and you got the fist bumps you're like there we go boys all right whoo <laughs> It was looking like another strong hell, uh, holds L for us, but man, that regain is just so impressive. And talked about solitude strongholds getting out of control for Optic at Arlington. They don't got to worry about that anymore, but they do got to worry about a Slayer on solitude. That's up next for game two, which this is an opportunity here for SSG. It, I know we're trying to get the, the tournament moving along, but it, it almost doesn't feel right to see a best of three series with squads this talented. It feels like anybody could win it i really hope we get to see that game three oddball though because that would make it feel a little bit more like a best of five in the sense that oddball at game three probably goes 20 minutes at least right definitely the game type most poised to give the most halo this next one going to be very interesting to me though slayer on solitude i think these two teams respect each other quite a bit i think they've got this game type pinned into a science probably more than just about any other two teams you know, obviously FaZe obviously has this game type down to a science as well, but I'm expecting to see very much of a chess match between these two. Neither team going to be willing to give up much space. If one team does have a setup, there's going to be a very meticulous and thoughtful counter push to try to get them out of that setup. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting one to see who comes out on top here. I'm looking to formal with the shock. I'm looking to... Looking to loose it as well to continue what looks like a resurging MVP level of performance here in season three. Lucid, your season one MVP. Stellar took it in season two, but I think Lucid is probably one of those front runner guys. Probably maybe edge out Stellar because he won the first tournament, but or maybe even Legend, really. I, I see the conversation take place where is Legend a top five player now that he's on SSG? Guys, he, he was a top five player on Quadrant. Uh, last year, so don't get it mistaken, man. This this SSG roster stacked. Optic Gaming is stacked, and that's why this series again is uh, feels like we need that best of five. Can we can we GA a best of five series? I don't know if that's possible, but nonetheless, our eyes are set to Slayer on Solitude for Game Two as we kick things off here. Cinematic B-roll from LVT, so beautiful. I feel like this game is going to be two. You're exactly right. I mean, I feel the same way about Lucid. I felt like. Toward the end of last season, he wasn't the same Lucid that we had seen in season one. I felt like he was just, there was just so many situations where it just felt like he wasn't comfortable or maybe there was a controller issue. I don't know. It didn't feel like he was as in tune with the game as we were used to seeing, but now he's seeming more in tune with the game than ever. And to me, looks like one of the best players in the game once again. Uh, he feels like he's very comfortable. He's making amazing plays time after time. And yeah, if he can step up in this game, they could potentially close this in a quick two. Ammo. We've seen that in the suit of SSG more often than not. They've been winning those opening breaks routinely. See if they got another one planned, but we're going to hop on the flip side. Trippy now hopping on board here with Legend. Ammo not on the starting point anymore, so somebody's got it in their suit. It's probably not Optic Gaming, though, as they go three down, make it all four. As I think down might have that camo to work with. Nonetheless, SSG working with a 4-1 lead off the start. Looks like maybe they were looking for it. Maybe it was grabbed, but not actually procced. Can't think of any other reason that Bound would be looking in that direction right there, but either way, they're going to continue this 
opening start bound with three kills already he finally gets shut down i think legend has the shock rifle at the tower stellar's gonna try to stay alive here yeah here's legend lucid barely escapes with his life that looked like it could have been a clean headshot maybe move the reticle just a little bit too much but space station are rolling early here legend with the shock and he's utilizing it more for damage and assist you can see sitting at one and three one three and oh hasn't died just yet and efficiently but a little caster curse there he goes down eventually numbers advantage here for optic what can they do with it trippy and loose it combined for the team team kill on the stellar but despite that space station maintain that four kill lead five to nine here this bound has control of the snipe tower but you can see all that red like a red wave crashing through the blue it's now optics in possession as that snipe tower and the high ground go into their favor stellar goes down on the truck so too does eco and it looks like optics should be able to get this game even closer if they can take down bound they do it's now just a two kill game yeah all of a sudden optic come back to life this early momentum is always so hard to quell but optic able to reverse the situation make it interesting like i said this is going to be a chess match i do like the positioning from space station optic are going to try to get control of the tower side but that means stellar is going to get this camo and we've said it before camo better on this map than any other it's just so easy to be sneaky maybe it's because all the walls are gray maybe it's a little bit harder to see there's no yeah. variation you know uh, at the same time you can also jump just about anywhere you want on this map that lift gonna give an audio cue though and i think stella recognized that there's no point in worrying about camo so he hits the curb slide to get here a little bit faster so he can collapse with his team but shows up late how many times have we seen this where somebody just walks around the map for 30 seconds just not a part of anything but you, you guys are too good at halo man i can't get any kills this feels like me when i play in matchmaking and i got sparty or uh lucid on my team this is uh, unreal what we're seeing ssg jump out to a big lead they nearly doubled up on optic gaming 13 to 23 it's a double digit lead nonetheless this is not what we were expecting but legend and the rest of the ssg boys this is exactly what they have planned First, Camo goes into the ether. Second, Camo goes into the suit of Eco, but he's not able to really do much with it. And that's impressive, despite that power-up that Space Station has continually used to build big oh. leads onto opposition. They have not used that just yet as formal. This is one of those comeback conditions for Optic. Come with the snipe. That looked like it was an insane shot. We couldn't see it from his POV, but it looked insane from the guy who got his face ripped off's POV. Legend gets two shots in formal and then Formal just turns instantly and deletes him from existence. Stellar gonna ultimately be the one that comes out with it though, after it trades hands a couple times. And this guy finds one kill, sees another potential kill, gets out barely with his life. Great understanding of just how long he could stay in that sight line. Trippy though must have come up behind him. Yeah, Trippy here in the long haul. He's gonna take that shock rifle and Optic, if they can hold on to this and also get this camo, they could potentially start coming back here. Gonna need as many advantages as they can get as the lead has actually grown now to 12 for Space Station. Make it 13. Formal. Finding a trade. That's not what you want if you're Optic Gaming. This lead is too big. I'd say at the six kill, kill deficit mark, it would be uh, too late to trade out. That's It's almost double that. It is 12. Formal. Does have the camo. He's got the shock as well. And if he can say get an overkill here, I mean, yeah, they're right back in it but for now formal just needs to stay alive and maybe just manipulate the timing and control of the shock rifle because they should know optic should have the intel as to when that's up next does operate a little differently on this it's every three minutes a little confusing because recharge it's on that tier two weapon rack so it's a minute after despawn but in this it's just every three minutes like a normal sniper um so both teams will know when the next one's coming up it's gonna be one minute from now might not even come into play though if space station can just get another nine kills before the uh -oh. six minute mark uh, but all of a sudden optic look like they're in it now the lead only seven good point Hila. you're right the shocker spawns on the uh the point as opposed to the the wall right be up in every three minutes six minutes i believe the next time we'll see that up as loose it pushes through on the truck side now dipping into the dip now into cafe couple of stickies to work with a couple of stickies on the plant as well could potentially force a remote detonation but instead no loose is going to get sent back to the respawn screen as space station continue to do a good job with this lead to trade out 
and ride that to victory in a potential game three here. This is a good start. Back to seven, but just feels like Space Station going to be too efficient at trading out these kills. They're so aggressive when one person is called out with damage. Seems like there's always another member of Space Station. Legend going to hit the skill jump here. We'll double, double jump tech for you. Now, looks like Optic not in a good position, but finding a few kills. Legend does trade out, which is very good for SSG right now. Now only three kills to close it out, but if formal like you said just get an overkill you know i mean that's all it really takes if he just got an overkill right now no big deal then uh they'd be right back in this man this is gonna hurt i feel like for optic at the end I, i'd hate for them to walk into this and say too little too late but that's a i think the overarching feeling right now is eco has a camo sneaking his way through finds the back wow. of lucid surprise lucid couldn't spot him there formal is left to one hp and his own demise as Optic Gaming will go down. SSG take the game to victory. And this is exactly what I'm biased for, Eli. Game three. Wow. That was such a good play by SSG. I mean, just securing that last camo was all they needed to just create the perfect play to get three dead. They didn't even lose a player in the last play. Despite Optic having shock rifle control, it just goes to show how powerful that camo really is. Force Optic into a defensive stance. And then SSG just kind of predicted perhaps which lanes they would be watching. Eco finds the perfect path to get the assassination. The rest of the dominoes fall in their favor. And yeah, you're exactly right. We're down to a game three. This feels crazy that a best of three is going to send one of these teams with a top six finish, but that's just how close these teams are. And oddball live fire. I couldn't think of a better way to close it out. You know what, Eli? I just realized a lot of the big three have placed top six throughout the online portion of HCS season three. What What is it that is causing so many teams? It's not just Optic or uh, SSG. Aze has even had a, a disappointing, I, I think a top six somewhere yep. along in the off season. What, what is it? Is it just any given Sunday type of deal? Or what is it about these big three teams getting top six in, in online Halo? Or is it just, again, online? I mean, there's a huge difference between online and LAN. I think the... It's not necessarily that these teams are bad in online tournaments, but they just are so much better on, in land tournaments because they've got more experience. They care more about every single win. They're going to put their all into it. Online, there is a bit of randomness, right? Like, I mean, there's just some funky stuff that can happen. I mean, that's just the nature of online gaming in general. We've known that for a long time. Different connection issues. Maybe somebody's not pinging well to the server. Maybe the game feels weird for whatever reason. You know, there's there's a lot of different extra variables that can that can happen. But I also think that a lot of the other teams that that the top three are losing to are just more comfortable playing from home than they are on land. And maybe they uh, get more nervous yeah. on land too, right? So it, it, it might not be that they're bad or worse online. It's just that everybody else is Woo! better. Oh, speaking of better best maybe uh, one of the best found with a nice headshot on the spawning player for optic gaming that's gonna allow them to not play the video game as eli likes to famously say is that not playing the video game for optic is going to lead to 20 plus seconds for ssg uncontested as they look to reach the first checkpoint of 30 seconds here in oddball before resetting things comfortably back to the middle there's a skill jump for you eco lands a tough one that's a Really one of the more difficult sneaky jumps in the game. Eco hits it. What can he do with it? He's gonna get the rotation because of it. So works his way back to that spot. And he's going back to the well. He's, he's looking to. Oh, that could really cause trouble. Imagine all of Optic push through underneath, and then Eco is able to skill jump his way up to the top. Well, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Oh, but he gets stopped. Shut just short from Lucid. Nice shots there. That's exactly what SSG and Eco had planned. But Optic Gaming coach Lunchbox probably in the comms. Telling them uh, exactly what the play was because they had that figured out. Yeah, they're never going to send everyone through bottom mid. Trippy playing through top center. Even if Lucid doesn't hit that snipe, I think Trippy's in good position. So just a great push overall from Optic. Space Station kind of opted for awkward positioning there. You know, you don't have a lot of sight lines to work with from the bottom of the map. Optic just take the high ground advantage they're given and flip the whole situation. Now Trippy's comfortably racking up time. They're about to steal the lead. Yeah. SSG with the first 28, but it's Optic gaining, surprisingly, that are able to reach that 30-second checkpoint first. Now, Trippy, sensing the pressure through the garage door, is going to rotate it out towards Camo, and with Camo up in 15, 
presents a difficult situation. You're almost playing defense uh, of both the oddball and the camo, but Space Station, they're going to break through. They take down Formal. They take down Dead Zone. They take down Lucid. Bound, the only one to go down in that sequence, which is not only going to give them the oddball, but likely that power up camo as well as it's up now. See Space Station sliding out for it. You know, SSG has great positioning. And Stellar's got the portal. He's going to use it. Chilling I think he's going to portal again to stay. He hasn't died yet. Look at this. Okay, portal has expired. And now this new sniper rifle. You know he's eyeing that. You know he's saying, hey, stay alive. We got to make sure we get this sniper. I want to pop off and get another Twitter clip. It's going to be a lot easier if I have that sniper in my hand. Oh, bound barely able to... Find the edge, clamber up. He says, yeah, whatever. Moot point, don't even need it. Drops back down, works his way through the tunnel system and back to cuts. Not able to find anybody. You can almost see his astonishment as he turns the corner. Doesn't spot an Optic Gaming member. You can read it through the verbal body language. But now, oh my oh, god, god, three members of Optic Gaming. He said they wouldn't push three down bottom mid. You know, there's a whole squad down there. I know this is for an oddball reset instead, but that's not the type of spacing you want. That's going to make it easy for grenades to cause chaos, but Dead Zone has a chance to stop some of the bleeding. He's able to trade out, but not before everyone goes down for Optic Gaming. We talked about it being 30 to 28 previously with Optic in the lead. Now it's 45 to 72 after one fell swoop. Things can change pretty quick in life and in Halo. Exactly right. Stellar tries to get a kill, but Trippy always so tricky. Tricky Trippy out here again. Finds a double kill, one extra bullet, a snipe to work with. Sees Lucid right there. I think maybe a miscommunication. No, Lucid sees a player behind him, wants to take that player down before grabbing the ball. Love to see this process. Just take one more opponent off of the table. It could shut you down, and it's going to lead to even more oddball time. Bound, like he does so routinely, hits the flank. In a little dirty on the mud side, now drops through. <laughs> He's pissing everybody off. He's causing everyone to get mad. I think that's part of what what makes Bounce such a great player. He's frustrating to go up against. As now he's got the oddball in his hand after dealing out damage with that plasma pistol. Gonna milk some time here and it's all SSG need left. A little bit of milk. 20 seconds. Less than that now. To take this 1-0 lead in a crucial game three. Elimination. Do or die. Top six matchup here between two teams that more often than not are in the grand finals. Yeah, they just were at the last land. I think FaZe will have something to say about that in the coming months here. The future lands, but you're exactly right. I mean, these two definitely favorites to find themselves in the Grand Finals one way or another. Here we go. Optic's going to have the camo. It's currently down by 33. See if this can lead to something. Recognizing he can't really... Doesn't have a teammate nearby to grab the ball, so despite being camo player... To hold on to the ball at least for now milk a little bit of time now he can use the last half of the camo to maybe get another kill but wow space station just <laughs> give him the elbow shut him down as quickly as possible they knew how important it was to shut him down quick <laughs> and formal played it perfectly so counter ensues for space station and they're going to counter their way to a round one victory great play there and i especially noted bounds patience formal was one hp with camo it dissipated, so he was invisible once again. Most players, again, in Plat 3 tools lobbies are chasing that out, but Bound actually <laughs> took a step back and almost let the game come to him a little bit. Love that process played there from Bound as it secures the round one victory. As we move on now to game, excuse me, round number two. Three go down for Optic Gaming. SSG gonna win round one and the round two opening break. I love how we're not even working with tools today, but we're still just giving him strays for no reason at all. Like <laughs> he kind of brings it upon himself though, right? Just a certified born hater. Like it's just, it's just life, bro. <laughs> he Anyways. probably loves hearing us hate on him. That's how much exactly. of a hater he is. <laughs> That's true. Just gives him life and gives him energy. But yeah, SSG ever since the end of that kind of steamroll comeback in game one have looked like a totally different team. Yeah. I mean, even the beginning of game one, they, they looked this strong, but now just not even giving up their advantage state. Even when they do, it's not for very long. That's why they've had so much success and holding the sniper and getting every camo is definitely going to make things a bit easier. Now, this game isn't over just yet. This series isn't over just yet, but you do not want to play from behind an oddball. It's just, I'm talking about an opportunity as the team in the lead. SSG, they're going to be able to freely rotate it. The resets, they're going to feel a little bit more comfortable with sending it off into the drink. They're not pressed 
for time like Optic are. So I'm I'm expecting 415 in regulation, but I'd be surprised if you see a little desperation here from Optic as Space Station are gonna milk away more time, make it around the corner to the cuts is Eco. And again, Eco doesn't have to hold oddball like he would if he was down 40 seconds like Optic are. He's gonna drop it instead, play his process. Definitely goes down, but again, the process being played here is so heavily in favor of SSG. Can they ride through to a series win and send Optic home with a top six? I think a lot of teams would maybe start to feel a little desperate here. I mean, it is a pretty big lead right now in this round for Space Station, but I think the presence of someone like Lunchbox in your ear is going to keep these guys calm in just about any situation. They know what they're capable of. They know they can beat anyone on any given day as long as they execute properly. And I think they're going to patiently play through the process, make the right plays. But the thing is, when you play against a team like Space Station that's so fast and so aggressive, so precise, it's just such a stressful environment that it's it's difficult to make good decisions the entire game like because you're so, it's just such a stressful place to be in a game. What sequence there for Optic Gaming to get three down for SSG right when the camo comes up, but the time that they need to be concerned with is that on-ball time as they're down by a count of 12 and rolling to 41. Grippy with the camo and the MK sidekick gonna earn one, help on two, get some shots into Stellar. And it's a 2v2 for now, Bound pushing him through on that camo stump. Utilizes the slide quickly to get out of dodge, stay alive, and rotate right back to this side of the map. Does Optic know he's there? Yes, they do. More often than not, Bound finds a way to flank. And even though the flank gets stopped, the five perfect shots do not. Oh. The double kill after going up with the repulsor, dropping back oh. down. Enemy has the ball. This is unbelievable gameplay. We're seeing here from Bound, and he's continuing on. They can't kill Bound. And if I'm getting frustrated uh, with the lack of ability to take down Bound, how does Optic feel right now? Three more go down, and Bound won't Enemy die. Way to victory. Where's where's the bound is as cracked as he is Jack's copy pasta. Somebody put it in chat. This man is absolutely cracked on the sticks. How do you even like have the imagination to play that situation like that? Just fighting two different lanes and three different opponents simultaneously all by himself while one shot. What one insane sequence that was from bound and that's going to make it even that's, more that's difficult. That's what's crazy, Eli, is he did. He fought two fights at two different times, but still earned the double kill. So some some way, Bound was just able to manipulate what felt like 10 seconds into four, as I'm sure he utilized all four seconds of that timer to secure the double kill as he repulsed up top. And I'm sure at that point, Optic's like, oh, we don't have to worry about Bound. He just put top mid. No, he's coming back down. He's dropping back down, and he's still on a spree. Bound won't die he stays alive the last player on the team everybody for optic gaming knows where bound is they know they need to take him down they know he's one hp but again he just won't die he is so slippery man where they just can't keep track of him at all times and that's a problem you need a sonar radar detector on this man at all times and just like <laughs> Uh, you need a UAV that just follows him around. I don't even know, but he has been an absolute monster on the map. 27 and 12, by the way. And just staying alive in the most ridiculous situations. He's going to hit the he's frenzy, out, bro. He he's out of ammo. ammo. He ran out of ammo because he's been frying for too long. Look at his health. Look at his health. It's as big as a roly poly. He finally goes down. There we go. Bound. My God, what a sequence. We didn't get the killing frenzy, but it felt like one. My God, Bound. Absolutely helping SSG surge their way to a game three victory. They might not get it right now, but if Bound comes off of respawn and keeps playing the way he has, Optic have no hope. Okay, this looks good though for Optic for now. The problem is they have to play perfect Halo for more than a minute with one guy holding the oddball against a ravenous space station gaming. And that kill right there might have just sealed the deal. The rest of Space Station gonna feel safe to just go ahead and hold forward dead zone gets a kill stellar kills him though and that one domino falling lucid dying it's gonna usually force the reset but look at the defensive effort and the amazing stick play from formal it's not over yet but like i said they have to continue to play perfect halo here formal the unicorn in the gaming universe finds the unicorn spike sticky grenade to take down the opposition and Bring Optic Gaming right back in it. You know, uh, despite that sequence we saw from Bound, SSG have not regained off spawn. Bound, there we go, takes down Lucid. Back on, on what we've seen from him. 
can Formal stay alive with Snipe? Formal takes down Bound. It's a team shot in the back. Eco now lined up on the dummies. Formal down to one HP. Or excuse me, Dead Zone down to one HP. As Legend slides through, Eco gets the cleanup, and that will do it. SSG take game three and this series after an improbable stay alive sequence from Bound. The survivability is some of the best that we have ever seen. This guy is unbelievable, man. I mean, <laughs> uh, some of the plays you were making just completely defy the logic of this game. And I, I see this all the time. Uh, there's there's certain players that come to me that I watch them play and I'm like, you're playing way too aggressive. I ask them, I say, who's your favorite player to watch? They say bound. I'm like, listen, you're not bound, bro. You can't do bound things. Only bound can do bound <laughs> things. All right. You can't you can't replicate this gameplay unless you're as cracked as this man on your screen. Dude, can you rewind that, Louie? Look at look at the nanosecond realization right when he picks up the repulsor. It spawns up at that moment, so it's not like Bound knows it's there. He gets it, and he's like, "Oh, I realize." How does he realize? Like the recognition to realize, "Oh, the repulsor just spawned, and I can utilize it." He realizes it in the same amount of time it would take just to think about the play. I mean, Bound is living in the future. He's two steps ahead. No, he's he's three or four steps ahead after that performance and that sequence we saw from him right there. That that's one of those. Now you could break down forever and have a lot of fun doing it, just watching it over and over again in slow motion. That's just the type of the game. That's just the type of gameplay we've uh, become accustomed to from Bound. Wow, amazing stuff! Space Station, move on. I mean, that's kind of what we're gonna come to expect between these two teams. I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of Space Station versus Optic throughout the year. I mean, they already looked like the two best teams, at least at Arlington. Like I said, Faye's gonna have something to say about it as they. By the way, 3 owed complexity in that winner's finals. So it's now two wow. 3 in a row. FaZe did 3 owed complexity at Arlington as well. So now 6-0 and in their last several games in tournament play. Space Station look to face off the winner of Sentinels and Proton. And if whoever wins that would face complexity in those elimination finals. So tons of amazing Halo left for you guys. I think we will send it to a quick break. Everybody go to the bathroom, get a snack, get a drink, and come back to watch some more Halo. We'll be right back after the break.
All right, Heli, here we go. Your lower semis are live. Proton Gaming versus SSG. I think Proton has made it a little further than you could argue. Uh, many people might have expected. And then SSG, surprisingly, in the lower side of the bracket. But this is deep in the tournament. This is the lower semis for top three. What should we expect in this series between Proton and SSG? I mean, I'm not surprised by Proton's performance. I think a lot of people that pay attention to these players and know their ceilings are also not surprised, but this team's looking to be on fire. Probably some of the best Halo they've played in a while. And uh, I could kind of say the same for Space Station though, right? I mean, these guys have been putting on an absolute clinic. Optic so far, the only team to make them bleed, you know, in the lo loser's bracket at least. Obviously we saw them get knocked down to lower bracket by Sentinels, but Sentinels no longer in the tournament. Proton just took them out, so. Uh, kind of an interesting, like I said, rock, paper, scissors earlier, right? Like Sentinels took out SSG, Proton defeats Sentinels. So, you know, by that logic, Proton should be better than Space Station, right? But right. That's, just not how, that's just not how it works. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to see though. I think if Proton can play their best, they can absolutely make Space Station bleed here. Yeah, if only everything made sense in the Halo hierarchy, we wouldn't have as much to talk about and as much fun to enjoy as we kick things off here. Lower semis. Or finals on the horizon. Complexity waiting and watching, maybe scouting these two teams. It's Bound. We saw an incredible performance from him in game three. I, I think peak Bound. Uh, LeBound James has gameplay from him. <laughs> Not quite the same here to start as he goes down early. Uh, but before we caught a glimpse of his POV, he already earned three kills. So looks like Bound picking up where he left off in that previous series. And so to our SSG as they've about double or tripled up on this particular hill. And they're in the lead. I mean, I think one of the reasons that Bound or that SSG has been playing so well as of late is a big do in big part from Bound. I think Bound really maturing as his player. He's at the peak of his career right now, really just understanding how to make wins and use the best of his individual talent. And he's absolutely a player that Proton's going to have to shut down if they're going to have a chance in this one. Right now, pretty far down in this hill, but it's not over yet. Looks like they are, are able to take out Legend, but Eco and Bound on the way. Eco going to win that fight without Bound's help, and that's massive. SSG should be able to close this out, but they might not have a great rotation for the next hill. Bound, the Rookie of the Year in Season 1, might be a future MVP. His shots are impeccable. He barely misses. And he also, look at that, secures a little bit of OPJ as well. But it's his movement for me, Eli. That movement, it's not even so much the way he utilizes it offensively. It's the fact that... He is so hard to kill because of his movement. So, Bound, a guy that we love to watch. I'm a little biased for some Bound POV because we got more of that hopping on board here. The man himself, as he expects the push here from Sab, expecting the damage Enemy pushing him through the from the pillars, but he gets cleaned up instead. Eco doing a great job of that. And now with Camo up soon, Hill on the sniper side, SSG. I just take both. Love this play from Bound. Instead of just sitting in the hill passively, Gonna play extremely proactively. G slides his way from top Dude. tower to small window in seemingly no time at all. Just clearing the other side of the camo makes it so much easier for SSG to get the camo. And look at this, Stellar purposefully not setting foot in the hill at all. Doesn't want to give any intel to Proton about his whereabouts. Now that three are dead, it's gonna go for the last kill and then get back in the hill. Great stuff out of every member of Space Station so far. Yeah, we are, we are seeing SSG starting to peak here and, and Bounds playing the way he is and he's still not the top performer in Slays. Oh my God, all the while I was gonna talk, I was gonna start hyping up Eco, but Stellar, it's the cross map, no scope on the spawner at the back of A, back to the respawn screen. More often than not, our Proton Gaming and it might just happen again, if not for this nicely executed beat switch. Oh, oh my God, Stellar doesn't go down. Double I thought for sure he was dead to rights. How did he survive there? survive but he gets the double continues on with more no scope MVP stellar your season two mvp and showing why finally goes down but wow what a double that's just unbelievable reaction time and like calculation of exactly how he can stay alive in that moment like i don't know if the casual viewer even can comprehend like how many different things are going on in his head in that moment to make that play even possible i mean he had the option to either shoot with the bandit or the snipe in both situations. Flicks with the sniper, which means he has he doesn't have to hit the headshot, but he does have to hit the body with perfect precision to stay alive and get the double with one sliver of HP left. Those kind of plays make it very difficult to play against Space Station. 
god, 2-0. Quickly looking like it might be a 3-0 lead, but Suspector with that QT. Probably gonna do just enough to get a slay. It's not gonna be enough. He actually QTs away from the objective, and now, after forcing himself towards A, realizes his play is to GG, go next, rotate. Over to that other side of the map where the hill is now spawning. Proton have got to come up with a, an answer to this. Wow. A different strategy, maybe, because it's not like they're lacking in slays in the sense that Suspector is having a good game. But yeah, Gilkey, Sap, King Nick, a little too low, I think, in that damage deficiency to really even give them a chance here against SSG in game one. Did you see the the double sticky play there? I mean, the, the insta explode combination just barely crests over. The white box at sandbags to get that kill on bound very cool flashy play from suspector but like you said it's just not enough right now proton really have to get some momentum we got camo in the hands at gilkey and top tower control but doesn't matter if you have the tower if you don't have the hill to be honest looks like eco with the awareness to know that he's about to be pushed just leaves the hill he said yeah i got enough time i'll just go ahead and reposition don't give them a free kill gilkey doesn't get the stick back. And he comes back for the kill. What perfect awareness out of Eco there. That was that looked like Bound, uh, although Bound utilized the Repulsor and the Vents to pull up the, the tricky play there. Eco just uh, dodging and dipping at the right time and then working his way right back. And I think when you're low shields, you like, the opposition doesn't expect you to come right back. Eco does, and Eco did as SSG retain that 3-0 lead. Now, Proton are able to get some time on the board. This has been their best hill of the game, but we talked about earlier, I think in that Optic series, Enemy is it too little too late? I mean, Space Station look absolutely untouchable and King of the Hill in general this tournament. I mean, they're playing the transition better than anyone. They're always ready for the next hill. Even if they're not, they have a perfect push to break it. Every hill, I mean, they're literally speed running these King of the Hill matches. If he stays alive here, he does with the QT, gets a kill before dying, and that's just gonna make it even easier for them to close out the match. Space Station untouchable in King of the Hill so far this tournament. Well, I hope Complexity are taking notes because if they have a King of the Hill on the series layout for lower finals, or even Strongholds, any of those two hill-based game modes, God, watch out because the the cycling and, and the, the, the rotations, and it's just the slays, man. Everybody slaying out. We didn't even have a chance to, we, don't even, we, we didn't even talk about Legend that game and it's because everybody else is so damn good for SSG and it's not to say that Proton aren't, Saw someone in chat ask, is, are these diamond players? No, these are the best players in the world. That's disrespectful, actually. These are OGs, but you're going to disrespect them. This play right Bruh. here. Absolute HP. Stellar. And he earns that first no-scope onto Suspector. So he's, you think, maybe had some help? No, this was all Stellar. And the bait and switch is set up here. Once Stellar takes a no-scope, uh, Suspector calls for his teammate here to help out on the bait and switch. King Nick does a great job of that. King, King Nick plays his process so well. And Stellar still finds a way to get that nasty sick double kill. I'm having so much fun watching SSG today. You might even say I'm becoming a little biased. Bruh, I mean, <laughs> what more can you say than bruh when he gets that double kill? Like, if, I mean, suspector has got to hit the shot there, to be honest. I, I think more often than not, he does, but... God. In that moment, he misses the shot. It's just enough window of opportunity for Stellar to line up the double kill. And yeah, those are the type of doubles you don't see very often. No, that's that's a, dare I say, a skill gap that is being widened and, and manipulated by SSG. I mean, Stellar there, that was incredible. That seemed to go beyond what was even possible, humanely possible. But he is a Spartan. Maybe he's not a human. Uh, but bound as well man bound is i feel like bound is stretching the skill gap right now with every g slide and clamber he <laughs> finds a way to hit every skill jump every repulsor back up and down on the map i, I really feel like we're witnessing a skill gap uh widening here from space station and this is early in the season eli we're only one event into uh, i believe five lands we'll get this year six if you count lvt halo orlando which i definitely do but it just feels like ssg if they don't start facing some stiffer competition if they don't have some rivals that start to form and get in their way you could really build a case for them running away and winning multiple land events this year if if not in a row i have to agree with you they look like the best in the business right now but they are in the losers bracket so they are beatable Sentinels, i think beat them in this very game type 
during that upset. So Whereas says she had a seven kill lead, no less, 36-30, uh, I think. Exactly. And Proton are no slashes. They just beat Sentinels, by the way. So there you go. All these teams are very close. I mean, I could absolutely see a Proton victory here. It's all about getting that momentum and maintaining it. I will say that since that upset, Space Station do look like a different team now. I feel like Bound is pissed off and he's showing that he is not trying to lose this tournament. And uh, they might be a bit more difficult to beat now than they were in that winner's bracket. Yeah, I think with more context and looking back on that series earlier between Sentinels and SSG, I think I think Sentinels just loaded the uh, slingshot at a hornet's nest, <laughs> and the hornet's nest was Space Station. So uh, a kick the bear moment, if you will, as Space Station have uh, taken that loss personally, it almost looks like, against Sentinels, as they have done a great job ever since taking that L. However, Proton off the start here in game two, Double, triple up on the lead. Gilkey and the rest of the Proton crew got all the sandbox to work with. They got the shoddy. They got the camo. As both go down there eventually, you see our repulsor there as well. Uh, plenty of spoils for the taking there on the cuts for whoever wants to head that way. As Legend has that last bit of sandbox in his hands and he's not letting go of it. Sab wanted it, but Legend's going to retain it for a little bit longer as he has uh, probably one perfect execution left with that stalker rifle. Oh. Doesn't need the third shot though. Gets the melee. Sab gets the sticky trade though. Now it's only a two kill game. You're exactly right though. Proton had massive sandbox advantage in the opening there when they got the lead. That's important to do here on streets. A lot of items per square foot. I think that next shotgun gonna be very important though. That next shotgun, when it comes up, I expect Proton to be maybe a bit more ready for it than SSG. And if they can get a hold of it, they could continue to grow this lead. Well, you can see the R from Gilkey in the chat means he's ready for this match, and he's been ready. Proton have been, at least, as they've built a lead now up two. As looks like Stellar pushing on through on the shotgun side of the map, making his way towards the pink side, but he's not looking to party or celebrate with table service. He's looking to break through into the tram, take a ride to the lower finals. For now, though, and I've seen SSG do this a lot today, Eli. Gatekeeping the spiker and waiting out the competition. Eventually, Legend makes his move, but Proton actually counter and take him down. That was stellar, excuse me. Exactly right. I mean, it's a great position to sit and wait if you know the other team is in the tram side. There's really only a few ways out. I mean, you can go through commando, driveway, front door, or those C stairs. If you're watching all those exit points and you've already got the lead, you can apply maximum pressure, but <clears throat> you're exactly right. Proton played very well out of that situation. That's bound, isn't it? Oh, it was. It wasn't. It was stellar. And Stellar gets the sticky trade, and Space Station have a four kill lead. But Proton are doing a good job to keep this one close, at least for now. But this is sometimes where Space Station can start to roll. Once they get the lead, they play aggressively back towards that 50 yard line and pin their opponents back on the other side. We're seeing it time and time again. 22 to 16 here, SSG with a six kill multi possession lead as they're looking to ride that to that lower finals that we alluded to earlier. Complexity flying in wait. Great. He can pop shots there from Eco slides out. I am just more and more astonished by the performance we're seeing here from SSG. But I guess the more often I see it, the more regular it becomes, despite how stupendous uh, the uh, the gunplay, the decision making, the communication. It's like that meme where they just got to work on you know everything. Well, SSG's on the <laughs> other side of that. <laughs> I mean, uh, everything's good for them. Teamwork, positioning, communication. I mean, icing up, hitting their shots. SSG doing it all. It's all on display here in game two as they maintain that six kill lead into the halfway mark. Seems like every single member of Space Station not only have full confidence in themselves, but also in each other. And I think that's so important on a team like this. Look at Bound just playing with his Being food bound. here. I mean, <laughs> not to quote tools here, playing with his food, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, it's phenomenal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if they can hold on to this lead into the end game, because I know Proton, once they do get control, they could absolutely hold on to it. And yeah, this feels like... Speaking of holding on, it reminds me of being a kid at Six Flags and holding on to the Titan roller coaster ride as I whiplash my way through this experience. It's kind of what Proton's going through right now as Legend drops on the tires. Looking to drop Gilkey. Oh, but Gilkey, 2v1. I should say 1v2 win. The veteran stays alive, but not before Bound is able to take down Sab. 
Gilkey gets another slay. Gilkey with the shotgun. Gilkey with the camo. And my goodness, what an impressive stretch this is for Gilkey. If he can continue on, this could bring Proton right back. They're going to need Gilkey here and that shotgun. Look at Stellar. He just keeps moving. Gilkey knew there was a call out for Stellar, who was one shot in the tires, but Stellar just kept moving. Gilkey unable to get any value because Stellar is so slippery. Finally gets a kill on Eco. But man, it almost felt like Stellar knew where he was. This man just has a sixth sense, knows that Camo was lurking and looking for him, so he just never stops moving and finally does get killed. But you have to imagine against a lot of other teams, Gilkey would have got even more value out of that Camo. A Gilkey doing his best bound impersonation to take down bound. And Gilkey now on, an, on a hell of a run. Six, seven slays in a row. Previously, I guess three and, or excuse me, five or so and nine. So he has flipped this game around and it's brought Proton Gaming right back in the mix. The Spectre with a grenade kill on the bound. It's now just a one ki one team wipe lead. Three kills separate these two squads. Three on the respawn screen for SSG. And all of the me momentum is running for Proton Gaming. You started to maybe write them off, but no, they're right back in the mix. Only down three heading into the 40s. Wow, we, would, we just saw the rare frag insta explode combination which is possible by the way you can actually get the same effect as the plasma where the frag does insta explode sab went for that on stellar who was back a but he gets taken down what looked like a good sequence for proton to come back into this has been nullified space station in the lead i5 and proton have to play perfect halo to come back into this one starting to run out of time and space starting to run out of lives to work with as well as SSG only need three make it two as bound secures two the double kill last shot another double shot goes into the head of Suspector he's oh. gonna finish off the oh. game with an overtail over unbelievable show stopping sequence from bound as he the show continues on but the series is over bound with the overkill for the win the X Exclamation point on the series. Could you possibly end the series any other way? I don't think so. Bound. We said he woke up ever since he got knocked to the lower bracket. We get a perfect instant replay here. Last shot for the double kill. Reloads the gun. Look at how much damage his team is doing around him at the same time, though. He only had to shoot each of these targets, what, two or three times, right? First target, one shot. Hits the shot, last shot. Next target already weak one shot Triple hits the target kill. next one he's only got to shoot him three times to finish overkill. the overkill i mean you can't talk about that overkill without talking about the rest of the team the bound gets the glory but that's the result of just great team play from ssg they look absolutely dangerous right now and the only thing stopping bound from a kill tacular is the victory the from the victory screen that's it because he would have absolutely rolled through gilkey i i love me some gilkey I don't think he, I don't think anyone was going to survive the wrath of, like you said, not only Bound, but just the swarming synergy and teamwork there before Sab could even get a shot on the Bound. He's already getting shot from somewhere else on the map, and he's looking that direction as well. So that is a, an exemplary uh, example of SSG's strength. You allow Bound to G-slide his way. He's slip and slide all around the map. Meanwhile, all the attention's on his teammates, Legend, Stellar, and Eco. That's a win condition for SSG as they ride that to victory in an appearance in your lower finals. Wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> SSG going to face off against Complexity. By the way, Complexity, I looked at the Halo Data Hive. We didn't get to see it on our stream, but that phase Complexity winners finals. It was a 3-0 in phase's favor, but every game was very close. Came oh, wow. down to third round in Oddball. Also was 5-4 in Aqua CTF. Uh, and I think the Slayer was 50 to 38. So complexity, despite getting 3-0'd, I mean, they're still looking extremely competitive. But I mean, if anyone's looking super scary from my perspective right now, it's Space Station. Absolutely. They seem to have reached another level as we're, we'll head to another break. We are getting you guys set and ready for the elimination finals. Complexity versus SSG on the flip side of this break. Don't go anywhere. We got more Bound and Halo when we return.
Welcome back to the Cloud9 5K Showcase. Mikowski joining alongside me is my duo all the way since 05 on those midship free-for-all lobbies back in the mix for an incredible lower finals between Complexity and SSG. SSG, I'm going to be biased once again. It's the best we've seen any team look here today. Ironically enough, they're not waiting in the, in the grand finals for this match. They're in the lower finals. Sentinel's taking them maybe by surprise with a 2-0 sweep earlier in the day, but talked about it earlier, Eli. That simply, I think that just simply woke SSG up. I think you're right, man. I mean, these guys are known to, they don't like to lose. So they try hard not to lose, but as soon as they do lose, they're like, all right, let's not do that again. And so uh, they're definitely, as soon as they enter the lower bracket, we're favorites to find themselves here in the lower bracket finals. Obviously the current land champions as well, but I mean, we've seen Bound wake up. We've seen Legend wake up. We've seen Eco, Stellar, all of them playing very good Halo right now. But you know who also is playing very good Halo is Complexity. Found their way to the winner's finals and played very close against FaZe and Precision. Is looking to secure this camo with his teammate. I'm not sure what happened to the Rockets. It looks like they probably went to Space Station. I was thinking to myself, that's a good omen. Uh, seeing that Precision, Precision headshot uh, from him, but... Looks like for now, Space Station have the early flag out, but that seems to be more bait. Yeah, Legend, he has rockets, so he pulls the flag out, leaves it three meters off the stump to pull in us, looking for the reset. Great uh, process played there from Legend. Really smart, heady play there. You've got Precision, though. The potential to maybe catch Legend. No, he had the positioning on the sword rip, but because of being half shields, didn't feel confident enough. Instead, he's going to take his fight. On the other side of green wall all the while legend did he wow. have some kind of break his g slide to skip across time and space look like he flew into the into the flag to score and make it a 1-0 game eli how often has space station been able to do this that we saw not argyle earlier winning in a minute and a half it looks like they might just do it here again but for now it looks like complexity have the counter there's legend again with the freak is g slide he's he's skipping pixels on the on the on the screen because of it it looks like what a start ssg 1-0 but no it gets reset thought maybe we'd see a counter no ssg instead will hold this 1-0 lead another great start for them their opening br uh, break strats have been so impressive we might have to start calling legend the flying frenchman man this guy's spartan's got wings <laughs> where are you going brother i don't know how he's moving like that this guy's absolutely unreal with the movement and uh yeah, I mean, what looks like a great counter cap opportunity somehow thwarted by Space Station. Looks like both teams really played that situation as best they could, but Space Station just eking out that flag cap, and that makes such a big difference. I mean, you're only playing to three, so every flag is worth so much for Space Station to take an early lead, this massive momentum into the series. I, I probably, I think I can add this up. Legend has just been... Uh taking uh, some of Bound's personality traits, it seems like, because Bound is usually the one that you think of for SSG. G sliding like a freak around the map with no uh, sense of time and space, but it's now Legend who's breaking that as well, and Legend has another flag out, and what a great guy to have run the flag because he's utilizing that movement tech to score, to push that flag further than we see most teams accomplish. Unbelievable proficiency, efficiency Bro. from SSG. Hardly two minutes off the clock, and it's already a 2-0 game. This is your lower finals. This isn't a win around one or two, three, four matchup. This is it, man. This is it, and SSG. Not that complexity haven't woken up yet. They're ready for this. It's just that SSG uh -huh. and Legend with the flag is too freaking good. Another g slide's going to get hit. Bro. Another 15 meters skipped across the map. He's going to get through the long haul because of it. And SSG might just oh. secure two back-to-back 3-0 -back speed runs. Argyle and now in period. Huh? SSG, what's in the water in Utah? What in the world did we just watch? <gasps> we're seeing we're seeing the meta change before our eyes. If your movement is that good, who cares if your team's getting kills? There was only two people dead on the side of complexity. Legends already at his side long haul with the flag. Hit some freakish double curb slide movement to land the cap at the end. I've never seen a flag run like that before. It, it, what? Dude, you know what's funny, Eli? I usually I usually complain when the observer watches the flag runner. But hey man, if Legends got it in his hands, yo, don't switch Play. to formal with the sniper. Play Sparty with slow. the shotgun. Stick with Legend of the flag run because he 
And like you said, is look at this, creating look at this, look at this. a new uh, okay, meta in watch skill this. gap. See this little, this is like, uh, you run. jump, it, yeah, you hit, it's a it's a wall run technique. So he's doing every single movement option available to him, throws it, hits the curb slide perfectly right here, grabs the flag, that's, he bunny hops right here to maintain momentum, throws the oh flag God, at, he's at a moving. He's literally doing, I don't think it's possible to run it faster than this. He hits the bunny hop, so it goes even further, then oh slides God. it in. Yeah. You know what? With that, with that level of G slide, I don't know if in the Halo lore it's, it's the Forge map, but I don't know if Empyrean is connected to another map. Let's say Lockout's on the other side. Uh, Legend could G slide to it in one fell swoop. I I, I don't know where I'm going with this uh, level of uh, of commentary, but Legend has my mind blown at the efficiency we're seeing with these flag runs. Usually. Uh, also this is dodges another level. grenade right here. <laughs> also dodge, like, kind of dodges the grenade. Teammates are getting kills at the same time, but this man just broke the any percent speed run world record for running the flag through Mauler. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> how fast did they win? <laughs> right, that's all you could do is just laugh, man. I'm trying not to tell him I'm being disrespectful. I'm just enjoying. I'm just unbiasedly enjoying some Halo here alongside my good friend Eli and the rest of the Halo, LVT Halo community. But my God, astonishing what we've seen in CTF. Eli, we were talking about how, oh, watch out for these guys in the hill-based game mode, Strongholds and King of the Hill, they'll get you. Dude, they're probably even better on CTF. As we're gonna stop talking about that incredible game one, we gotta eventually move on to game two. I, I'll have to break that down later, but my God, SSG and Legend finding new, Heights, they're, they're, they're reaching a level that I don't think is fated to say, Eli, we haven't seen yet in Halo Infinite. These guys are rewriting the book here on this very day. Exactly right. I mean, I think FaZe is going to have something to say about it in that grand finals. But I mean, if, S if SSG keep playing like this, I would foresee another defeat over FaZe like we saw at Arlington. But my God, I mean, just watching those flag runs makes me wish there was like like a side category, you know, like side events at the tournament, like who can run flags the fastest and make a little little competition out of it. But you know, I would put my, put my money on Legend for that. You know what's so funny, Eli, is as Space Station double up on complexity, five to 10 here. They're one of those teams that do that. This, They're one of those teams dating back to even the very beginning would go onto maps and almost have a competition with each other on the team to see who could score the fastest on Aquarius with the use of the movement tech. And my God, that was season one, and it's carried over to season three. And legend, what we just saw there, they're not stopping. They're now up by two team wipes over Complexity. This is wild. Complexity, a team that is on par with Space Station. I'd say they're pretty close, at least. They're right up against that tier of play that we're seeing from SSG, but which is why, again, I'm saying that there might be another level that we're witnessing here in Halo today. I think you're exactly right. I mean... I still feel like competition is as stiff as ever, but these guys are just hitting a different wave right now. I think complexity, though, they get the heat wave, they get in control, they get an overshield. They're the type of team that can play fast and aggressive. We're talking a lot about SSG, but I tell you what, Precision and Descendant, two of the most individually talented players in the world as well. Look at this. They got the overshield. They brought it back down by one with a significant advantage to potentially take the lead here. Now, oh, this is equally as impressive for complexity. Eight kills in a row without dying. Gets them right back into this match. Earns Huss and Overshield. What can he do with it? Looking to get a couple of different shots on different members of SSG located at different spots on the map. Huss now with just waiting seconds of the uh, that Overshield isn't going to be allowed to do much. Does maintain his life because of the OS. But only, only able to trade out. So in that opportunity, in that moment to maybe take the lead, Complexity are, are able to keep it close. But SSG do regain up three. Very impressive from Space Station to not fall into starting to lose this game when it looked like Complexity had the tools to regain the lead. Precision and Husk getting a couple of kills here, though. Stellar is going to finish the damage. His teammates started. Eco last player alive. How does he play this? So he's going to continue to fight for space, just makes a little bit of an opening. What's so interesting about this game type is this one prioritizes squad spawns a lot heavier than using the opponent's location to determine a spawn. So you're more likely to spawn near your teammates on Aquarius. Eco knows that, went to P2 knowing his teammates would spawn in the fridge and tries to start making space for them before they even spawn. Some heads up awareness from this team captain Eco. And those group spawns are why it's so important to try to earn a blender here. And let's say a disadvantageous bridge spawn turns into two or three 
if everybody spawns together for now two to three kills or so now five separate these two teams as complexity's done a good job to make it close and bring things back but ssg is finding ways to trade there's an example of it right there as eco goes down but not before earning the assist legend just patrolling through bottom center this man's movement is so fast. He could be at any given point on the map at any given time. Runs into the heat wave of Ryan, though, gets sent to another dimension as his Spartan suit gets dematerialized by the Covenant technology. And here we see Precision gets stuck in that moment. I think he might have had Overshield there. And that's a great way for Space Station to shut that down. Hus going to hold onto this fridge side, try to keep SSG at bay. They're doing a good job of it so far. And they're also doing a good job to shut down Bound. That could be a win condition, a comeback condition at this point for Complexity. You don't allow Bound to look like the Rookie of the Year, the potential future MVP like he has today. And that could spell trouble for SSG, which I haven't had a chance to say for, it feels like, the past couple of hours. Because SSG's just been tearing up the shop. Like a bull in the china shop instead. Like he's going to go down. And now Complexity have, in fact, secured the tie game. What an impressive regain from them. Down by eight plus, I think, at one point in this match. Have now tied things up at 36. Complexity is an extremely strong roster when they're able to play their process. That first game, they were not able to play their process. They got shut down time and time again. Legend also just denying their ability to do anything with the craziest flag runs we've ever seen. But Complexity now feeling a bit more comfortable in their element. This is good momentum that they're building. Legend gets behind them somehow, though. As Bound is distracting, Legend comes in. Stellar also comes in to finish those kills. And Space Station turn a sticky situation into now a one-kill lead. Space Station with that two-for-three trade. We talked about how the trades have kind of inched them forward in this one. Now they're using it to shut the door. Bound with the remote detonation takes down Descendant. Now Space Station built what's, what feels like the biggest lead they've had in the recent minutes of this match. Eco with the back of multiple members of a complexity, but somebody's got his back instead. 42-44. Plus, look at stay alive on the fridge. Takes down Stellar. Takes Ooh. down Legend! A Stellar-esque double kill from Huss. As complexity down one, 44-45. Descendant with the OS. Look at that, too. He made sure to pick that thrust back up. Uses it to just close the gap between him and his opponent. Pulling out all these players. Dodges the plasma pistol from Huge. Eco. Look at this, though. Stellar getting kind of a ninja on Hus. Doesn't show up as a ninja, but gets behind him. Descendant's an absolute monster right now. 47 all. How's this one going to end? Three kills left for each of these two teams. No, SSG takes the narrow lead. 48-47. Descendant with a little bit of that OS left to work with. And all eyes are on him. All fist star two as Legend oh. takes him down and takes the game to victory. 50-47. Try as they might. As close as they might get does complexity. SSG keeps them at bay and takes a 2-0 lead in this series. My goodness, you have to feel for Descendant in that moment. He probably thought he had maybe a teammate over his shoulder that could potentially follow up on that damage. Just look at this little curve slide to dodge the plat. I think that's just pure reaction time to dodge that in that moment. As soon as Nasty. he sees or, or hears that plasma pistol shot, hits the slide to the side. That plasma pistol doesn't move fast enough to catch up Spartan moving at that speed. And he's just dealing so much damage here. It just feels like he's got infinite ammo in the clip, last uses the last shot, shot gets the melee. Kill. And now he just continues to roll, probably thinks his teammates are right there behind him, able to follow up on the damage, but no, precision goes down. And I think the Senate's teammates are all the way across the map. There's no one here to finish the kills. Also doesn't expect Legend to just push in and get the melee there. Great defensive play from SSG, despite being you know, kind of pinned in that base. They played it perfectly to bait and switch in that moment. I think it was just a situation where complexity had just gone down, three down, and had guys on a respawn. But that's another moment in the match, Eli. You, you mentioned it earlier, it was on live fire. But you're kind of like, well, Ryan, he's got it. He's probably calling for help here. He's got everyone one shot. I don't know what it looked like in the end game there for Descendant as he got bound down to low HP. Legend was pretty weak too. He had the damage, but I just don't think the three members of Complexity had the positioning to potentially clean up some of that damage because of it. Space Station ice up in game two. It was a ferocious comeback from Complexity. And I thought once Descendant dodged and slid across that uh, green gun goo, I thought that was it. That's uh, that's one of those catalyst moments where it's like, okay, uh, complexity retained the overshield. They got this, but they don't got this. <laughs> Instead, they're looking at an 0-2 deficit as we set our sights on live fire for game three. 
It's gonna be a tough one, man. I know that complexity is very good at this game type, though. I think, I mean, we've been talking about how good SSG is at all the Strongholds game types. They were already one of the best Strongholds teams. Uh, and then they pick up Legend, who was on that roster with Quadrant, who went, what, 19 and 0 in Strongholds on land, which is completely insane. Ultimately did lose a few towards the end of the year, but I tell you what, I, I do feel like complexity has a good chance to win this game type. And once they get into control, they can absolutely run with it for a long period of time. They're very confident going into this one. They did. That's important. A good note. Confidence kills were earned by complexity. They now need a lot more of it, though. Down 0-2 in this lower finals. It is a best of five here, so uh, the matchup continues on. For now, it looks like, if not for hey, starting to trickle now into SSG's favor, but complexity had the good start. But no, us. With that snipe, though, could help reset things a little bit. Pushing him through mid, looking to take A for oh now. He God. takes the back of the head from Legend. So you have a double kill. Nice slide down into the wall, G. It looks like Huss does end up going down. Bound on the cuts. Makes it away. What's uh, what's new for Bound? Dropping in and out. Oh, okay. Descendant. The young gun actually predicts his movement there. And how... Uh, that makes so much sense, right? Descendant, probably the comp for Bound. A lot like him, honestly, in my eyes. No, uh, no wonder that he was able to predict his movement and take him down, but not before SSG built a 23 to a rolling five lead. Yeah, this, I mean, Descendant, a movement master of his own. Interesting to see the way Space Station handles this. They spawned at the C side. Normally, players that spawn C like to go B. It's just the easiest way, but in this time, they decide to rotate through, but... Complexity is ready for it. They shut that push down. Three go down for Space Station. Complexity are going to continue to score. They've now taken the lead, and they know where Space Station are spawning. Like I said, they're very confident in this game type. They know how to manipulate spawns, work together, push back and forth, and apply maximum pressure. Did Descendant just shoot two grenades while jumping with no aim assist? That was unbelievable. Very difficult to do. Ryan with the denial grenade kills Stellar, and he's looking for more. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, Jason... Uh, Descendant was able to do that as more often than not, he's doing things that surprise you, which is uh, kind of why we, you know, we're talking up bound. We're talking about how he's popping off and really all of SSG. But I think the more this series goes on, the more dangerous it gets for SSG because you haven't seen maybe the level of play that we're used to seeing from guys like Precision and Descendant. Usually they're popping off, taking faces, and we're going to see a little bit of that form here in game three. So watch out, SSG. This series is not over just yet. Like I said, I feel like this in this series lineup, probably the game type that Ashes is circling and saying, we can win this one. Let's just make sure we can get to that game four. Maybe we can give ourselves a chance. But when SSG get in control, it almost doesn't matter how good you are at the game type. It's going to be very difficult to play against. They're going to finish this in a trip cap. But how does complexity play off their back foot? If they can get out of this quickly, I'd be very impressed. Hus getting a kill right now is a pretty good start. Eco lurking with camo, though, is going to try to make their life difficult. Eco gives up that camo to take five perfect shots onto Huss, and he's got another five, it looks like, for Descendant. Still with the remaining moments of that camo. Spike grenade goes out the front. Descendant goes to the back door, then back to the front. Stellar cleans him up with the communication. Great effort there from Descendant. Despite that, he still goes down as Eco finds some value out of that camo. Finds another slate. No, he does not on Ryanu. Ryanu finds a way to somehow secure that, and if Bound was any weaker, he would have traded out there as well. All the while, all of that action leads to a three cap for SSG, 109 to 49. Complexity having to settle for C. They spawned on that side. Did enough damage to at least get the first part of the equation solved. They still got to get a few more slays to cap something else before they can get back into scoring position. And Eco getting several kills in the kill feed. It's going to slow that down, but looks like the Senate's still alive on B. Going to try to cap it before his teammates respawn. Teller, one of the best snipers in HCS. Many would say the best sniper in HCS. Looking to utilize the last two shots he has in that scope. Takes down one. Cleans up with the, uh, the headshot cleanup. SSG securing C, but not before complexity. Take A and B. And they've cut this lead in half, so a lot like this feels very much like a deja vu uh, situation where SSG get the early going, early running in game two. Complexity come right back. Seen a little bit of that wow. in the OBJ. And oh my god, descended again! Picks out the positioning from bound and does one better with the back smack. Stellar then 
front smack takes down Descendant. This one's back and forth. Score uh, sort of reflects it. It's closer than you think, though. This is Strongholds, after all, as uh, SSG have been able to double up on complexity. It looks like with those three down, are going to regain control of A and the scoring. Curious to see what Descendant's up to back tower. He, I think, hit the skill jump to get there. He gets taken down, though. Bounce going to cross here. Probably understands exactly where complexity is. This trade is massive. It's going to leave Space Station in control for a bit longer. 3v2 situation momentarily. And complexity do their best to cap A, but this time and time again, as soon as they start to capture something, the swarm comes in from Space Station. They're not giving anything away for free. Looks like Ryan spawns C, but immediately moves to another stronghold. You can tell their strategy here. First spawner is not going to try to cap what's next to them. They're going to try to push out and earn space. And then the second spawner's job would be to cap behind him. So we're seeing that strategy time and time again. But the problem is that first spawner, when trying to take space, is getting shut down by Space Station. Finally, though, Rico down for Space Station. But can Eco get a double kill and neutralize the situation? No, he does slow them down, though. Noticing the networking update almost allows more jiggle peak uh, proficiency, I guess. I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of that here today. Eco doesn't stay alive with it, but it looks more likely to stay alive even in that moment where players are jiggling their way. You can even see Hus there, almost like a micro strafe. Not sure if that's a result of the networking update or not, but seeing some new things. And like you said, Eli, this is the first tournament on the networking update, so uh, expect to see some changes, and I think we have. You're exactly right. Jiggle peaking certainly buffed. And the new network update, you're not going to be in a different place on the other person's screen than you are on your screen anymore. Desync solved for the most part. Still some weird stuff that happens with the new network update. Not a fan for everyone. But yes, Jiggle Peaking, definitely one of those things that's going to be a bit buffed right now. Seeing that. Now seeing Descendant push up on the pillars. And East, there's another Jiggle, right? Almost looks uh, exaggerated. As Eco goes down, three down, four down for SSG. This could be the moment where Complexity Strike takes back map control, take back control of A, B, and C. And what's felt like SSG keeping Complexity at bay is no longer as they have broken through and have life, have an opportunity actually to steal the lead going into the 200s, if not for three going down and Stellar doing stellar things instead. It looks like SSG are gonna regain that trip cap prize. They might, complexity just can't break through. Not only that, but they forced the spawn on the turbine side, which is the best place your opponents could spawn. If, well, sorry, the worst place your opponents can spawn if you have the trip cap. So Space Station, not only capping everything, but also forcing the spawns where they like, and that's why complexity are unable to get back any form of control just yet. They did get A, but it's only momentarily. Space is just going to take it back and apply that extra pressure with the trip cap. 210 and rolling, and this could be the coffin shutting on complexity. Huss, the last player alive, but going to be an overextension at the end of the day. Not by his own doing, but in the sense that he has to push up. SSG only need 20 seconds, and it's ticking for two for every second that passes. A now trickling into the favor of complexity. But Bound finds the Slay onto Precision. That's going to shut that down for now. Bound still alive. He just won't die. Stellar finds the trade, but it's all a moot point. SSG take a 3-0 sweep emphatically. Like I said, that's one of Complexity's best game types, but it's also one of SSG's. So they almost play the same style, but just a little bit better. Complexity going to have to go back to the drawing board to see if they can have better luck next time. But wow. Space Station dropped to the lower bracket. Only team to take a game off them so far was Optic. And that was in that insane Recharge Strongholds comeback. And uh, now they're going to play against FaZe. This one could go either way. Reminds me of sitting at home, firing up the Halo CE campaign as a young Mikowski and deciding which difficulty to play on. It just feels like SSG said, why don't we play this tournament on legendary mode today? Let's make that lower bracket run. And they've just been knocking out everybody in the lower bracket. They said, why don't we get a little bit more practice? Or I don't know what the strategy was. I think Sentinels earned that ultimately. I'm only trolling, but SSG, man. My God, ever since that 2-0 sweep against Sentinels, it's been all SSG. And not only all SSG, but they've recreated some of those 250 to 3 moments, magical moments at that. Uh, now we're seeing that in not strongholds, but CTF. So the bar is being raised. 
Can FaZe keep up with it? That's the big question as they'll await them in the grand finals. SSG going to need a bracket reset, and I kind of I kind of feel like uh, we're, we're settling in for the long haul, so make sure you got your dinner, at least some hydration, some snacks, something, because this one, I feel, I feel like we're going to witness at least six games, uh, if not more. Six games would suggest a reset. Yes, that uh, has uh, yeah, well, yeah, the, which would be a, <laughs> two back-to-back three O's. I don't think FaZe is going to stand for that. That's for sure. But, I mean, the way Space Station's playing, they, they could. Who knows? I'm, FaZe looking extremely well. Obviously won the winner's bracket with that 3-0 over complexity. Have looked very strong since the day started. We haven't seen them on our stream yet, so we haven't been able to, I guess, heat check what they've been doing, but the heat is definitely there for Space Station. I think we will be going to a break here shortly. Uh, and on the other side, have that grand finals waiting for you. Don't go anywhere.
Is, can anyone take down Space Station? What we've seen in these last couple rounds is dominance. Performance that is uh, unmatched from anyone. It hasn't been close in any of these games, really. I, I, the Slayer got a little bit tight towards the end, but so when Space Station needed to ice up, they iced up. It's going to be a tough task for FaZe, but they have two series to get the job done. FaZe are coming out of the winner's bracket, guys, so they only have to win one best of five series. Meanwhile, SSG do have to win two, and like you said, they they have so much momentum on their side. They've played so well through the elimination bracket, but it's still phase that have that advantage. Still phase that should be the favorites in this matchup. Camouflage is just about to come up here and uh, bound from across the map, contesting for camo, but nobody really getting close to it. And Renegade seemingly gets it for free. I would have maybe like to see Renegade try to hold on to that camo for just a little bit longer as well. Stellar spots him out quickly and well, the camo will be off the map, but they do have that sniper and tower control thus far. Space Station scoring and all. Space Station's getting aggressive. They're looking to go for the jugular early on. 25 to one lead. Ooh, little remote detonation action coming out of Legend right there. Taking down two with them. Three down, go phase and Legend not slowing down. Chasing Snakebite away from the Alpha side. A trip cap now being held by Space Station Gaming. Well, so far, even though FaZe had possession of the camo, possession of the sniper, they really haven't had much map control to go along with it. And we're still seeing Legend be the one that really pushes the pace for the Space Station team, trying to get into the face of any opponent that gets ahead of them and, and just to cause general mayhem. 57 to 10 lead. Eco of Space Station Gaming backing down as far back as possible. Down to one shot, gets his shields back. And wow, excellent shots on the snake bite to at least force him back and get the assist. Bound was able to take down Royal 2. And once again, SSG end up putting phase three down. Eco gets a lot of value out of his life there. Well, this is where it's dangerous for FaZe. They went three down, and but they didn't go all three down all at the same time. They're starting to stutter themselves, and well, a couple might just be stuttering out of the lobby. It looks like two players crashing, or uh, it looks like one crash, one swap teams when the crash happens. So it uh, looks like we're going to have ourselves a, a reset. Space Station should have a 40-ish point differential to work with as we go in, uh, as we reset our game one. Yeah, well, actually, we'll obviously wait for... Uh admin suit to figure that one out but yeah i think a differential should be played maybe one team playing all the way toward that 250 point mark and then we have a 40 point advantage maybe the other going toward that 210 like we said oh there we go bound the message oh he he's on it already he said we need 200 that's it he said he's calling for yeah, it look, I, this is so I funny man. they're gonna harder <laughs> your brain dead 200 so just me in the middle guys me in the middle 205 I think, he, I think he's fighting for it maybe saying that if the crash didn't happen uh it, it would have it literally would have been 50 points <laughs> my teammate had back <laughs> that wait what what <laughs> <laughs> <Y 'all went laughs> <to the head. laughs> 
Oh god, guys! If, if you if you don't know, Renegade and <laughs> you see Louis like split in the middle. Just... Two oh five. If you guys don't know, Renegade and, and Bound, even though you know not a former duo on a four v four team, they were that former former two v two duo that ran undefeated uh for so long on those two v two tournaments, and you know they're 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 good friends, you know, but there's definitely a friendly rivalry there. And LVT says, you know what, let's cut it, let's meet in the middle, let's say 205. Bound does agree. Renegade with the LOL in the chat. <laughs> now, didn't agree just yet, but he did laugh. Yeah, this is uh this is always the fun part, right? Everyone getting back in. Okay, <laughs> wait, wait, 90, can you pop up the chat one more time? I want to see if we got a, a consensus between these folks. I'll say I think 50 was probably fine because it was 48 when the crash happened. I think they're going 205. I, I think 205 is where they're gonna go. I think I think Renegade kind of got a swindle there. I, I would have went with the 250 or the 200. I think I think the 50 point lead was probably a little bit more apt than the 40. You know, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I'm, you, I, wow, I, I, wow, 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 wow. I, I, I'm 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 gonna say the 10 point difference in 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 this in, in this doesn't matter. I think whichever team does win is going to win by 25 or 30 points. So I, th I think in the grand scheme of things, this this little back and forward actually isn't gonna matter in my in my opinion. <laughs> in the whole look, it's gonna be a massive swindle if it does though, right? Like <laughs> if it's 250 to 203, like imagine the drama, the drama. Well, hopefully we don't have to get into that drama as we uh, are resetting ourselves here. Phase and Space Station, they've gone at it one time already. We'll reset ourselves on this map once again. And will the strategies be the same? Camel does come up in a bit of a delay. Don't forget about that. Last time it was Renegade and Phase that got away with it early on. And Snake by dropping the spike is going to trade out his life with Stellar. And Renegade... Not quite able to get away with camo in the early game, but does have a sniper full ammo to work with bound down to one shot is going to pour the white out of that situation. Meanwhile, Renegade may just use that camo as bait. I love the QG gameplay that you get sometimes where you're just looking at the portal. He's like, oh, you're going to come back. No, he doesn't come back. No, he jumps on your head. He gets the back back. Legend. Legendary plays. Oh, my. The fake out with the quantum translocator. What I'm wondering that Legend wasn't even like a part of that fight. It was like bound with the QT and then Legend, where did he <laughs> even come from? Like Legend, like, like I thought bound like oh came out with like some crazy ninja play on Big Door. Bound was gone. Legend just comes in out of literally nowhere. <laughs> just just feels bad at all levels, but Legend. Well, the sniper doesn't get the job done. The bandit might as well able to secure A. But as all this action happens, we're starting to see the battle of rotations. This happens so often on your strongholds games where eventually everyone is just circling the map. One person captures a hill. Suddenly the next person's in the next hill phase. Eventually comes out on top. They're going to be able to have that A, B hold. But Space Station really quick to try to counter themselves into that A stronghold. Sometimes it can feel like an advanced game of like ring around the rosy when you're out rotating the rotators that are trying to out rotate you. Somehow 37 to 8 leads still in favor of Space Station Gaming as FaZe quickly makes their way towards Charlie but not able to capture it, clear it out. Return ends up going down. Renegade over towards the B side. Another QT comes up, but instead of bound and SSG grabbing a hold of it, Renegade's gonna put it to work over toward the B side after taking down his former teammate and then coming in and chasing down the second world two steals both of those kills legend did take down renegade with that qt but phase have control and they're putting points on the board i like to see phase try to get into a trip cap situation here play fast over at sea royalty will lead the way the question is how quick is the help he's gonna need it in order to secure this hill Okay, well, you also got to hit your jump. Okay, he, so th no third time a charm. He's going to rotate out. The problem is, is all that time he wasted camouflage came up and, well, I think it went into the hands of Bound while he's missing his jump over there. This is so surprising. You know, World 2 normally known for you know, having one of the weaker shots in the game, but known for having the, the one of the greatest movements in the HGS. Missing out on that jump. What is, what is happening here? As World 2 taking a bit of damage. 
somehow able to stay alive over to where the training side now we're seeing a double push make it a triple after the spawning players from space station gaming from dummies to the c plot now a flank coming in from world two making it towards tower but where did everybody go back to back kills from bound and stellar they've somehow made it past c plot over towards the camo side leaving world two and phase guessing a little bit here Looks like SSG should be able to take the lead right back or phase take Alpha and Charlie. No. Well, all three hills are being worked on. It looks like A is the only one that's going to swap hands in favor of phase as Space Station should have a strong setup. Look how they have multiple players at B and the other one's able to cut off the lanes at top mid and Eco plays aggressively towards that corner. Going to be really uh, going to be a decision from phase whether they want to try to combat at B, or if they take this long rotation to sort C, and well, the answer's there. They go all the way to C. The counters are coming through, though, as we see a trip cap in effect in, in brief for a brief amount of time. Base clan is getting out rotated. 90 to 51 at the moment. Space Station Gaming having both Alpha and Bravo and Legend backing down with this sniper. You see, War 2 and Renegade may just push out over towards this camo side and looks like they might just end up attacking a as legend with the sniper has the responsibility of notifying his team where the push is coming from but he may just have to hit a shot here with this as seven frosty takes down stellar ssg may be gaining points but now phase it's a full-on assault onto the bravo base this flank with the sniper may just stop it all three down go phase make it four what a play by ssg yeah phase put all their numbers into that play and that's a spawn uh, that renegade just got i i don't know how he got that uh spawn that a but he is behind everyone and it's causing mayhem uh this is incredible from Renegade. Just one player making a huge impact and really giving FaZe an opportunity to get the camouflage and find themselves in the scoring position once again. Camouflage in the hands of Snakebite. His teammates were too down, so we see him slowing it down just a bit, waiting for his teammates to come off a spawn while he picks and chooses his battle, giving information to the rest of his team. Camo, not just a weapon to be used in the slaves, but also for information gathering. Once you get that information, you dissect it, then you dissect the enemies. Beautifully played by Snakebite and FaZe, but it's not good enough to grab them B just yet. They need one or two more kills or just to chase down the rest of the players here. Stick goes down, or the spike does, not quite enough to take down Eco. And once again, SSG weathered the storm, they alleviate pressure. Eco played a significant role in stabilizing Space Station there, getting behind the opponents of FaZe, playing a dance against Space Station, and eventually, I mean, against FaZe, and eventually gets that sniper back, makes the big play once again, QT in hand. And well, they're only what 40 points away from winning this game remember folks they only need 205 to win 177 to 55 please space station gaming holding on to both bravo and charlie excellent shots coming out of eco at the moment he gets himself in trouble portals right out of the situation meanwhile renegade on the other side nades are down tower side cleared out you have legend who's just daring you to challenge but he has the help from frosty stellar and legend take down one there's a trade out in lives right there and although things happen the way of ssg phase they end up with both alpha and charlie they also end up three down well suddenly phase is gonna have to play a little bit more desperate quick in these positions just because of how close space station is to winning the game uh suddenly you can't take your time on all these pushes whenever space station jumps in the way into a hill you're gonna have to see a quick response from phase 193 to 65 at the moment. Phase once again find himself to read down. SSG really are winning the Slays battle, and it's showing in the scoreboard. 202 to 65. I, I tried to tell you, Garrett, I didn't, I didn't think that 10 points was going to matter, man. SSG coming out with it. Hey, look, Dan, it was a 40 point something yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give you the 210. In fact, we'll give you the 225. <laughs> uh, the way that they were playing, they could have gone all the way to 250. Uh, it's just a phenomenal game from them. They, they really kept up uh, uh, fast, aggressive gameplay through, uh, through their rotations. It just was really a, a pleasure to watch. We saw everyone have their big individual moments, right? But uh, 
it's just legend is too much at the moment i think legend is playing as if he's the best player in the game at the moment well guys we talked about space station gaming coming out of that elimination bracket they would have to win two best of five series on phase in order to become your champions one to reset the bracket and put them on uh even playing ground with phase and then another to actually become your champions game number one has gone towards space station gaming so i guess step one of a multi-step system has gone their way but we're outside of strongholds and on to slayer and i i keep i talk about it all the time you know how many times have we talked about phase being you know one of if not the best slayer teams in the league they proved it you know, so well in the latter half of season two can they carry that out here into season three can they carry that out here into your cloud nine 5k showdown moving on into solitude shock rifle instead of sniper and uh it's interesting that they made this change on this map and and the reasoning for it was to slow the map down because what we think about when we see the shock rifle is like the, the craziest no scopes that you'd ever seen but the shock rifle does have a downside to it when you hit the body it doesn't do nearly as much damage meaning that you have to hit the headshot put the sniper in the best player's hands well stellar going to be the priority for space station on the other side you have three incredible snipers on the side of phase renegade going to be the first one that has his chance with the shock rifle in hand from the snipe side with the shock over towards the poster side camouflage being used as bait right now by renegade and phase and not much more he can do when your team is three down how are you going to be able to control camouflage easily and with stellar avoiding damage ultra instinct mode the way he's able to dodge bullets it looks like ssg gonna grab a hold of camel and put him within one of the lead there was a. Uh ssg that won three slayers in the best of seven series against optic gaming a very intense slayer team that knows how to finish out these close games phase can't lay up uh can't let up at any opportunity here they have to ensure that they play clean halo no stupid mistakes all right but not a piece seller over on the blue side with the shock, just lining it up, making it look easy as he takes down World 2, body shot onto Renegade. Renegade just narrowly getting away with his life right there, but a 12 to 11 score line, SSG take control. Easy to find their Cypher once again. Two more bullets to work with, as Bound will be the one that takes the mantle. And oh, the headshot, Royal 2 down. This man has the shock. It's bound to happen. You're going to lose your head. Double push now. Out of bounds in Space Station Gaming lead to a three down for phase. Beautifully played. One more play you got to deal with. Push past the loop side. Does he know World 2 is still behind? Still putting down damage. Still being a nuisance. Finally, Bound and Stellar now get rid of him. But it buys enough time for FaZe to maybe get away with camouflage. Perfect kill. Perfect shots out of Bound. Frosty may have been able to follow it up. What a fight. And it kind of starts with World 2 being a little bit sneaky. Frosty gets straight out. That means the camo officially gone not much uh use for phase royal 2 did a lot of work to try to get them in an opportunity to grab that camouflage unfortunately it's not going to result in much of a kill swing in the favor of phase 24 to 17 lead ssg legend was able to take down world 2 frosty kind of being left alone here over toward the blue side as renegade is forced to back down frosty taken out now two members of SSG are still over towards blue. Snakebite gets involved out of nowhere from the yard to the flowers push, but there's only so much that he can do. The teamwork just perfect out of bound and eco right now. Seven point lead for SSG. Notice the way that Bound plays. He's not playing for kills. He's playing his life so often, right? When he gets weak, he hides behind the corner. Yes, he's still laying down damage. Yes, he's still going to try to get those kills. But what priority number one is, is extracting as much value out of your life as possible. So often type people think that Slayer is a game of getting the 50 kills. No, it's a game of not giving up 50 deaths. So often staying alive for that one extra kill will be the difference maker in a Slayer. 
Please die three times right now. Four X to deaths has abound, and Space Station Gaming have just been so aggressive. And normally that's the storyline that we talk about phase with the with what they bring to the table. But right now, Space Station Gaming are matching that speed, matching that intensity. Some well placed grenades out of Renegade to take down Eco, but just still find yourself down by seven kills. Camouflage is coming up right now and maybe FaZe can put two in a row with this camo maybe just maybe eat away at this lead that SSG have see SSG they're, they're doing a great job it's just communicating where the isolated players are on the map once they find it they're very quick to, to send multiple players to ensure that a trade out happens when you have a big lead like they do multiple possessions are needed for FaZe to come back in this game all it is for your space stations is simple numbers find the trades right here two untraded kills and that could be a devastating effect for space station if sync bites able to get any sort of more value with this camouflage once was a seven kill game now down to four within what a minute or two Camouflage in the hands of Snakebite. Finally, it runs out. But off the screen, you see Frosty's taking down Legend. You see Royal 2 and Frosty are starting to close the gap, close the distance onto SSG. We're kind of stuck over towards the blue side. The bait and switch is going to work out perfectly for them. They're winning the trades battle. They're winning some of the engagements as well. And as I say that, they deal three down Renegades by himself and SSG are right back in their face. Okay, using that skill jump to pop himself in a high mm. position and phase clan and when they need to come back they start crawling their way back just down two and although they don't have a lot of space on the map to work with renegade and frosty are working together down low to get some important kills frosty down to one shot can't get any damage onto eco there the rest of the world two and snake by try to find an angle in world two finds a great one to take down eco back to a three kill game Frosty takes down Legend, World 2 with the shots, and he gets out of dodge, bound, wants to chase that down, but he knows it could be a, tra a trap, it could be bait. Both Camouflage and Shock are coming up right now. The last thing you can do is afford an easy death, but Bound ends up hitting the black screen. FaZe have numbers control, they have the shot, not quite the camo just yet. SSG still have eyes on it. Bound started this game 12 and 3 cents. Only three and five in this game. The momentum has slowed, and well, as Space Station slowed down, Renegade heated right back up 18 and nine, making 19 and nine. A fantastic performance from him, and it's not stopping anytime soon. Face has taken the lead 48 47. Camouflage might just be bait at this point. I don't think anyone's getting away with their life as they go after that shiny token in the top middle I mean, of the map. It came up at the same time as Shock, and it's still up right now. We're tied up at 48 apiece, but finally, SSG are done playing games, snatching up that camouflage and putting it to use. Does Stellar bounce down to one shot? He's going to try to switch out his life. Snake Bite ends up going down despite not chasing down that kill, and now you're starting to see three members of FaZe rotating through flowers over towards Yard. Legend thought they were going to run away, but they double right back. Ego still comes in with the back back and ssg still come out with the win 50 to 49 that's 2-0 so far for space station gaming all the work at the beginning of the game is to give yourself as much time to recover when you know face is gonna make their comeback all three of them had to stay together because they were at 49 deaths what well, eventually becomes their downfall it's just too easy for the players of stellar and eco to play their corners and eventually find the trade out that was needed 50 49 can't get one bit closer but renegades 21 kills will not be enough to a lead for space station as we move into our third game and that was that was so well played towards that end game and and to be honest with you i was i was, I was a bit afraid because i feel like legend saw three members of phase that were like kind of rotated through that blue through that flowers and made into yard and he pushes forward i'm like okay yeah this makes sense get the flank behind him get a little bit of a pinch but then phase like they like turn on on a dime right there and just kind of melt them real quick and eventually as they're committing into that flower side then where did the eco even come from for that back smack i feel like he seemingly came out of nowhere it was just it was such a, a fun fight to watch that that end game 
that ends up being, like you said, a 50 to 49, just one kill separating both Space Station Gaming and FaZe. And mind you, SSG two wins away from resetting the bracket. FaZe were the ones that, that had the advantage coming into this grand finals, but I don't know where it's at. They're down 0-2 right now. SSG really had momentum. If there's anything that can stifle that momentum, it's an oddball game, right? So much time needed to take over this victory. Uh, oftentimes, it's a battle of attrition rather than, you know, the, the, your traditional Halo game. Not not uh, uncommon for oddball games to go 20, 23 minutes. Uh, phase, they have plenty of time to figure it out, to, to get the feel in this series. Space Station's been red hot. Phase been iced out, winning from the winner's side. They haven't had to play for a few hours now, and they're going up against a Space Station that hasn't dropped the map in one, what, two, three, six, seven, eight games? They, they, haven't, dropped the, they haven't dropped the map in eight games. Yeah. I mean, it's always it's always the the question of you know, would you rather be you know warmed up? Would you rather be hot coming out of the elimination bracket, or you know, would you rather have that advantage uh, and maybe having a, a bit of rest, maybe risking being cold but being well rested going to the grand finals? I, I mean. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I think I'd rather be warmed up, you know, it's very hard to match the intensity of tournament play, especially going late into tournament, so may, maybe SSG have the advantage by being down in the lower bracket and being warmed up, I don't know. I think it all depends on how you play on the lead up, right? If you're having close game fives and you're barely scraping your way through, I'd rather have the uh, the cold and have the game advantage. But if you haven't lost a map in three series, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think I'd rather just have that momentum with me and uh, say, yeah, we'll, we'll do it in uh, we'll do it in six games. Well, eight to no lead started here by Phase. Space Station Gaming definitely believe in that momentum. I remember it was that, what it was that grand finals. They said, don't get up, sit down, stay, stay seated. We got to stay hot right now. They chose not to use their, their restroom break. And they definitely believe that stay, just stay down, keep that energy going and good things will happen. Tied up at 18 apiece right now. As ball ends up being dropped or at least, at least rotated over towards B Street. Legend. Playing that ball as he feels the pressure coming in from FaZe. Legend takes down Renegade as well on the off screen. That ball just sits in the bottom of the map right now. Uses a bit of bait. Snake by gonna push forward. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. Snake by has everyone around it, but oh. somehow Bound doesn't check his corner. Uh-oh, it could be devastating. Snake by has the shroud screen, but not able to put it down in time to stay alive. Fall. Going into the hands of Space Station, but it's going to be Renegade that Ooh. shuts it all down. Big double kill from him. Camo up in 10 seconds. Space going to have their uh, pickings on how to set themselves up. Big time play coming out of Renegade to not only put them two down right there, but ends up leading to a three down. It keeps that ball alive. So now SSG have to worry about getting the ball out of the hands of FaZe, uh, out of the hands of FaZe right now. And that Camo that was sitting on the mid map. Renegade. However, is forced to play that ball and Legend just flies at him. Now matching that three down go phase and bound with the shotgun with the Bulldog is going to go right out of Royal 2. Fantastic break from Space Station. They, they wasted no time. We're able to get the camouflage right away and cut off the ball rotation quickly in order to get themselves in that scoring position once again. And I love how aggressive Bound is onto these spawners. Yes, it might not come more, uh, with more than one kill, but what he is doing is he's holding FaZe Clan back at their base. And it's gonna allow Space Station really to have Bound spawn up and be ready for the fight by the time FaZe Clan gets here. Squad spawns do end up coming in as World 2 pushes through purple, gets reinforcements, but even the reinforcements not enough, losing the slaves battle. In fact, they end up going forward down without getting a single kill onto SSG right there, not where FaZe wants to be. Now look at the run that's going to happen because of it. 68 to 25 right now, and still FaZe are trying to cross the 50. Snakebite has to be cautious about those nades. When he throws them out, it gives Stellar the info <laughs> of where he's at. But Snakebite gets the people's <laughs> elbow in response. Just an absolute uh, beatdown over at the purple stairs. And it might be enough for a phase break as Renegade and Snakebite will be the last two alive and holding the ball. 
He ended up smelling what snake bite was cooking right there. <laughs> Good points on the board for FaZe. They break the setup of Space Station Gaming and get into one of their own, but they're not spawning over toward the Charlie side. In fact, SSG spawning Cafe, and look how quickly they move from Cafe over towards PD. I'm not sure FaZe were ready for that. Three down, four down go FaZe. Still two members up for SSG. They will get the C spawn, so they'll have access to the cano early on. It'll still have to be another round of slays in order for Space Station to get away with that. And I believe Renegade just went for the steal, and yeah, Renegade goes dark. Well, he's brought to the light. Stellar ends up getting the kill onto Renegade despite him having the camouflage and maybe a bit of technical difficulties happening there. I I, I might have missed something. I was apologize. it just round one? I think I think it was just round one. <laughs> oh, I'm they so won. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, and they just won so fast that we weren't <laughs> suspecting it. Wow. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does he have to waste a shotgun bullet? It just comes in, gets the elbow, gets out. Early start here for Space Station Gaming. It was Stellar that was a, a, able to get away with that Bulldog, still having both Snake Bite and World 2 over toward the top Ivy side to deal with. And Stellar puts down that damage when he goes down to one shot, grabs a hold of that ball. Loves, I love the idea of swapping ball out between members. As soon as you're one shot, take that ball. Allow your full shields player to, to be the shield, to be that damage dealer. Gamma once again in the hands of FaZe, but they really haven't been able to do much every time they've gotten it. And it's been a quick trade out every time. In fact, down doesn't even have to see the respawn screen, gets the elbow in and Faze spawning so far away. Space Station's just in such a dominant position. They can play a very free in this spot just because of how far away Faze is. Expect to see Space Station be a little bit more aggressive on these plays. 41 to zero run coming out of Space Station Gaming. What a start in round number two. Really picking up exactly where they left off in that round one. Now Faze finally getting the kills necessary to be able to get a bit of ball time of their own world too an interesting spot here towards tires trying to trust that audio here's legend coming up behind them get some good shots on him gonna now chase him down but down to one shot he goes showing a bit of the moves but legend gets himself a kill and what is this rotation coming out of snake biting phase able to get it onto that back seat problem is they haven't won the slays they're gonna give up this c control and they're gonna give it up right when camouflage comes up so fall not only in the hands of stellar but also the the position of space station gonna be pretty good to be able to got, get away with that camel like bound did and be able to put more work in because of it i i think this is a fragile spot to be in for phase there's there's just no way they can uh feel comfortable with where they're at in this game Three out of four members hitting the black screen for phase and Renegade just has to slow things down, wait for his teammate to come off a spawn. And while that happens, just watch time go in favor of Space Station Gaming, who already have the lead right now. We've just been playing near perfect Halo on you. Literally, I mean, all, all grand finals long, really. Off the screen, Legend was able to take down World 2. We do see two kills go in favor of FaZe, and that's only until Bound puts their Stalker to work. Double kill out of Bound, shutting down the push from FaZe. If he takes down the final player, he's able to do it. Everyone from Subway sent them back to the black screen. The spawning player in World 2 has to be the one to take him out. I sure that's Bound. I looked old ask. The way that he's doing some wizardry back there. I, I feel like we saw the reincarnation. Oh my, I, they're just playing at another level right now. Space Station, it feels like they can do no wrong. Down to one shot, Frosty goes, forced to back down. And the moment he does, Stellar takes space and <laughs> ends up running into a double grenade coming out of phase right there. Well placed. Frosty takes down bounce. So a bit of a bounce back, a bit of a recovery now coming out of phase. It leads to a two down for Space Station Gaming. And now it looks like SSG, they need to really focus on getting the kills and the camo that's coming up in 10 seconds. Royalty's trapped. Hmm. Dollar easily takes him down and see the spawns of phase all the way up ED. There's no quick route to get onto this camouflage. And it's a punishing blow from Bound as he gets behind those opponents. 
even if you get the camouflage at this point, you're you're quickly running out of time for phase. You have to be aggressive. Move. Snake bite goes after that camo, but Legend is going after Snake bite. The hunter could be coming to prey at least momentarily. Now when he got his shields back, he's able to push back into the subway side. Frosty's already got a double kill, so Snake Bite changes his focus over towards purple, eventually leading to a four down for Space Station Gaming phase. They set up, but it's gonna be, have to be their final one. One broken setup, one three down, and that's not only ending this round, but also ending the game, and it will be a 3-0 in favor of SSG. Snake Bite's been slithering around this map for a little bit too long right now. Space Station starting to fall into a, a series of unfortunate events. As they need to get their car moved off the train tracks. Because right now, FaZe is just going to blow past them. It may have been slithering, but uh, Gryffindor's legend trying to make his way towards that commando side. He's already on that perimeter and Renegade knows it. And in fact, he's able to attack him, but Legend still comes out with an individual piv against one of the best layers in the HCS. Legend still over toward the back side. Ends up going down to one shot. Snake Bite finds the angle, but Bounce able to take him down. And FaZe are so focused in on the slaves right now that they really haven't been able to get too much ball time. This ball, they have to defend. They have to keep it out of the hands of Space Station Gaming. Spike grenades are going down. Roll 2 just got his shields back. Wins out against Ego. Huge. But ball gets reset. on its way back towards this base face it's just a giant game of keep away at the point at this point and all four players of space station are knocking on the door camouflage in the hands of stellar this could be it finds the one shot world two looks like the final seconds are coming in i don't see anyone from phase in a position to get the ball out of a bound and space station gaming's hands i said it before the series if there was one team that may just pull off the 3-0 i didn't believe it was going to be phase i thought it was going to be ssg <laughs> well see they can do another 3-0 we got a bracket reset what's our next best of five that is the question oh boy space station they're cooking Wow, <laughs> you, you, you don't see that every day, you know? <laughs> you see a phase of the SSG Grand Finals and I usually tell you, hey, get comfortable. You know, get your popcorn. This is going game five, but wow. Space Station Gaming have simply been playing on another level. After that upset from Sentinels, I don't know. I don't know how they were able to flip the switch, but since then, They've been playing your perfect Halo. I mean, the only game they've lost since then is one to Optic. And you're fresh off of a 301 phase. You you're, you're now have a bracket reset in which you have complete control. Uh, somebody check on Verb Maker right now because I'm sure he's having a fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he living in for me. Uh... <laughs> We go into our reset, Tony. Looks like our first game of the map is going to be King of the Hill on Solitude. So back to Solitude, where Space Station were just able to eke out a win last time. Obviously, not Slayer this time around, but a map that, uh, that I think uh, plays really well on King of the Hill, actually. I very much enjoy Solitude King of the Hill. Yeah, I, I, I will say, you know, we, we talk about Solitude being that, you know, crazy punishing game type, you know, and when, when we talk about the Slayer and the Strongholds and the spawn trapping that happens, where King of the Hill, it's it's different. It's it's def it's definitely, it could be punishing, but it, it gives the map a little bit more room to breathe than, say, Slayer or what was Strongholds now no longer on the circuit right now, so... Uh, I love me some solitude action. Small maps, sniper. Watch the two best teams just duke it out. <laughs> Last time we were on this map, Renegade had 21 kills mm. and a Slayer. Want to see if Stellar can shut him down this time. Camo in his hands. You can see Frosty baiting on that sniper. <laughs> Frosty made that one a little dicey, but Stellar will. Get his shields back and had a little bit of this camouflage to work with with this snipe in his pocket. 
Frosting face, wanting up over on the blue side, and Frosty gets Stella. bullied at lift, and then immediately spawns up, and Stellar's like, ah, you know, what <laughs> seconds? <laughs> I mean, he's he's amazing with the S7 sniper. You, know, you you have to know that he's going to be godlike with the shock and in his hands. It's, a, it's is, almost is he easy. Is he gonna miss? Is he going to miss? That is the question. That's not a miss. That's a body shot. That's I, a body I, shot. I, 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 right in the kneecap. It's scary how good Stellar is at pre-aiming the right spot. Finally, okay, hit the wall. That one's short. Was he oh, aiming for the wall? That is disgusting. That is the, the thinnest angle onto a headshot you can get with the shock rifle. And well, uh, Stellar, he's, I don't think he's uh, he's letting anyone get away from him anytime soon. Stellar currently 4 0 right now with an assist to go along with it. And look at how much progression on this hill. Space Station Gaming were able to get on the backs of Stellar with that shock phase are able to slow them down a little bit, get a couple of kills to get them off of the map and give them some progression here. SSG, the one now having to respond and he's, Legend responds by just jumping out to top mid. The confidence on this young man ends up leading to a two down for phase. No way they knew he was gonna do that. So that's gotta be unpredictable, right? That that's the That's the key. The camouflage still up for grabs. The space station just getting themselves closer and closer. Dude, this grab. One thing I don't notice, Frosty using that space station camouflage on his uh, <laughs> on his uh, bandit rifle. Maybe trying to get some of that energy in these last couple rounds from the space station squad. Yeah, I mean uh, it's it's obvious that the SSG and the Cloud Nine bundle are 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 just just you know they're they're, they're honestly, I couldn't be caught dead without a Cloud Nine bundle on. Honestly, honestly it's the best looking I, the one. Fact that they're not wearing it right now disgusts me. It kind of disrespectful. I'm <laughs> not gonna lie, Legend. <laughs> Getting himself the camouflage and the hill capture. What I like about this, look how he backtracks. He wants to get behind all three of these players. His camouflage runs out right when Snake Bite comes into view, but the damage is done. Look how long FaZe is going to have to do, uh, have to deal with legends. And they might not even deal with them. Let me do scenario. Oh my God. Oh no. He doesn't fear them. He doesn't fear the moment. Tony. Seven and three right now is Legend, and he knows he can outgun anyone in the lobby. Oh, okay, Legend makes a brief mistake right there. He needed to go back up that blue ramp as quickly as he could, and they could have kept the spawn trap at Ness. Instead, Renegade spawns out towards that blue uh, towards that blue spawn, runs down, and finally takes care of Legend. But by the time they get to this hill, I mean, look how close it, it's captured. It, it's, you got to play perfect. like that, All because of Legend's play to back up and slow phase down. Suddenly, they're in this position where they have to be flawless. And well, guess what? Legend is creeping in the back once again. And winning his fight too. He takes down Snake Bite. Eventually, Frosty has to move out of his position in order to take him down. And that's just an opening for Space Station Gaming to just fly through. Eco's Nade takes him down. Two end up hitting the black screen for phase, and that's just enough for Space Station Gaming to take two in a row. Fresh off of the 3-0 in the first series here on the bracket reset, a 2-0 start for Space Station Gaming, but you just allowed Royal 2 pinpoint accurate with the shock. Now, Snake Bite did get the camouflage. They're gonna let Royal 2 keep the sniper in his hands, especially how he's been shooting. For the first time, phase really has a... A great control of the map and the ability to keep Space Station far away from this hill and largely because of the shots this man's been hitting. Down to one shot he goes, but gets his shields right back and is still watching this angle, making sure nobody's able to sneak in through yard. Now that Snake Bite is there to cover it, he's gonna take some hill time. Is Snake Bite taking a lot more damage than expected? Forced to simply back out. SSG have done a great job of applying damage and really making this hill tough, even when phase half control. Royal 2 patrolling, just trying to uh, be the one that secures this anchor spawn. For Royal 2, I think you can be aggressive, get towards that thrust, and maybe even hit up mm. one of these quick flanks, especially with that triple kill coming in from Frosty. Suddenly, you've got this power position. You know they're going to be spawning at least that lift for now, but if you get control of this hill, you can quickly rotate yourself to be in a great position for the third hill at driveway. Looks like Space Station Gamer can continue to fight for this hill, which looks almost, you know, done for phase, you know. But they're not going to punt it. They're going to keep applying pressure. In fact, they're going to actually win out some of these engagements. Three down, go phase and renegade. 
literally has to stop, wait, and get his teammates off of spawn. There's no point of him challenging a 1v3 or 1v4 by himself. High IQ play out of Renegade and a, another push, another attempt at a break coming from base. That's a brutal shot that Renegade just put down on Eco. And Eco couldn't play that any better than he did. He's, he's pre-aiming, pre-firing on Renegade. Renegade just didn't care. Uh, he's going to be able to get those kills and, well, third hill in the hands of FaZe. They'll be able to cut the lead down in half. Rotation going to be up for grabs. Sink by with this shock rifle and camouflage to play with. This could be a valuable spot for FaZe to come back. Oh, nice shot for the captain. As FaZe was starting to get some of those slays onto the pushing members of SSG, they end up spawning over into right next to the hill. They end up spawning into a more favorable position, if you will, at least towards this next one. But Snake Bites knocking them down, left and right, shock in hands, and now combining it with a camo, the act of listening in order to take down Stellar. And now just a distraction, because while you're focused in on the camouflage shock, Renegade is going to get you on that flank every time. And what Legend was able to do earlier to phase, well, Snake Bite's gonna do to Space Station. Double in the feed, Stellar, you best not peek. Oh, Snake Bite just misses down low, but it's a devastating result. Stellar, the last alive as his team spawns far away. New Jersey's finest coming in, PJ. Watch out, Snake Bite. Not just, you know, that IGL type of play, not just a play caller, not, you know, not just an objective player, but apparently a slayer when you put the shot and camo in his hands. Finally, Eco and SSG are able to slow him down, get him off the map. That was priority number one. Now they come back into this hill. They're not too far behind the Space Station Gaming World 2. He wants this kill onto Stellar, but Stellar is being a bit tricky. With how much work Snake Bite put in with that shock rifle and camouflage, you you'd figure FaZe would be much further along in the development of this hill. Instead, it's neck and neck as Space Station have gotten control, seeing out those players controlling the back side of the map, filling in each lane eco, playing one perimeter legend on the next. And what I love from Bound is the follow-up plays, not quite able to get the second in. Renegade and Snake Bite just tag team in the Hell Cell, able to get the kid that get in this hill. And with Camouflage coming up, FaZe completely reversed the situation. A perfectly timed pinch coming out of both Renegade and Snake Bite working together just perfectly right there. May just net FaZe the hill to tie things up. A minute and 10 seconds on the clock, what feels like a must win hill. If Space Station Gaming win this one, they will play time for the rest of the game to down go phase royal 2 ends up going down over toward the yard side renegade now forced to slow it down until snake bite gets involved but eco takes down frosty bound goes right after snake bite and the one shot renegade is not able to stay alive royal 2 there's only so much you can do space station gaming have taken phase down now they're in their setup legend holding strong in this hill you're gonna get one good push from phase royal 2 will lead the charge Oh, why is he re-challenging? Oh. The le uh, legend, he wants all the smoke, but not going to be having it. <laughs> not going to be able to have the help necessary. You got to jump in that hill. Oh, oh, Eco. Okay. Oh, Eco might just got them enough time. It's going to be a desperate push from Space Station. If they can get there in time, they can still potentially get this hill. Oh. Sounds looking good. And eventually, to a three out of four members hitting the black screen, hitting the kill feed for Space Station Gaming. They're gonna spawn up over towards the bottom snipe side, but FaZe are so quick to attack and it's going to be a split spot. <laughs> Quickly two go down, make it three, cause Legend hits the black screen as well, leaving Bound by himself and giving FaZe some valuable time. Renegade spots Bound and well, Bound, this is gonna be a devastating death because he goes down as the rest of his team spawns, putting the rest of uh, Space Station down numbers. And they have to wait this full respawn cycle. Finally, Bound comes back up, and they're going to have a chance to push once again. But that really stunted their opportunity to contest on this hill. At Arlington, 
King of the Hill was FaZe's best game type, and you're kind of starting to see why. I mean, how how much were they down? How much momentum did they lose? But they fought their way back in to tie things up and might just steal it away. Bound trying to be a bit tricky over towards that block. Still ends up getting taken out, and Frosty somehow staying alive with the shot. It's a 3-2 lead. 23 seconds on the clock. SSG needs to find their butts in the hill in order to stop time from winding down. SSG has been on a tremendous downtrend, looking like FaZe's stock price these last couple of hills. It's just completely shut down. They haven't been able to get the kills to facilitate themselves into these hills, and, well, Royalty is going to shut them down once again. Double kill as Space Station finally are able to get into this hill. SSG double pushing that hill eco is already down there and it looks like legends trying to make his way over towards the dip side renegade gets shredded at least his shield but is able to stay alive snake bite trades out his life off the screen both of these teams know they need to secure their damage secure these kills before they commit to the hill and with a three down for phase space station gaming slide in with just one second if phase get the damage if phase chase them out for just one second they win but you got two bodies in the hill renegade phase where are you at you see the last push stellar takes so much damage legend has to thrust out and that's it they kept them out for just a single second phase take game one devastating flake looking down and seeing two players with your back you couldn't be salivating more face able to get the kills just in time and honestly there wasn't much left that they could do legend might be kicking himself at the end of the game i don't know if it would have been enough time but he thrust his way out of the hill tony if he would have maybe thrusted his way back towards the hill and made that player miss shot maybe okay. just maybe would have had enough time to get that hill we're talking about maybe a second left of time for space station to take that game one you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you I, I think with you know with renegade pushing up over towards dip and like and taking out stella without taking any damage whatsoever that bought phase a lot of time yeah and to be honest with you he, he, i mean you you could be right maybe if he, if he thrusts forward he's still in the hill and he's still able to contest but i think no matter what he's getting shredded I, I, I mean, maybe I, I'll, I'll watch it back, but I, th I think I think no matter what, he might be getting shredded there. And it was really the, the the aggressive push out of Renegade, deciding not to wait for his teammates, decided to go in, put down that damage, take down Stellar as quickly as they did, and eventually it was just Phase uh, taking that game number one finally, because it was 3-0 in favor of SSG in that first series. And I don't know what I don't know what things would have looked like if SSG would have won that game one and been up like 4-0 in the you know the quote unquote series. I think that was a must-win game for FaZe. I think it was must win. And uh, I'm going back and looking through this bracket. So remember back in the eliminations uh semifinals, they played against Optic, they went down 0-1, right? Then they won two in a row. Then they won another two in a row. Then they won another three in a row. And then they've won another three in a row, right? So six, eight, ten games in a row. You, they finally shut down the chain. I think that was much needed uh, for this team to finally sh just put Space Station off their hot streak for a little bit, reset it all. It's even, right? It's a new best of five. In fact, you have a huge advantage in your phase now going into this series. Uh, Space Station it doesn't matter what you did in your last ten games. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the first loss that Space Station Gaming has has taken since uh, losing that one to Optic, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, you 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 did have the advantage going into this Grand Finals, and obviously it was not much, but after the three zero for for SSG, you come in, it's a new series, a new day, new opportunity, and Phase take that game, take that game number one, and take back the control, take back the momentum that Space Station Gaming rightfully deserved after the uh, after that bracket reset. Tony, this has been a banger so far. I've been uh, I've been having a blast, and uh, honestly, I'm just excited to be here and be able to to watch all of this action go down. And uh, you know, I couldn't help but notice that you've been watching all this action going down in a, in a special chair for the folks at home that you know maybe want to represent Cloud Nine a little bit more in their life. How, how could they do so? Look at this thing. Ready? Ooh. Turn it around, turn. Oh. The Cloud9 Secret Lab chair. Go, go find it now, guys. Secret Lab, big part of Cloud9. 
Let's make that fantastic chair and bite bolts. Me and Tony's desk, awesome. Cloud Nine desk. Shout out to the Cloud Nine organization. They make some. Uh, they have some clean, clean desks and chairs that you guys can get over at Secret Lab. Going into our game number two, though, face Space Station. Going at it once again. First to fifty wins. Last time they were on a Slayer, fifty forty nine finish. Space Station. We're able to take it away. First to fifty kills. Take the win here. A delayed camouflage is coming up over towards that that right hand side over toward that dealer side if you will and it's like frosty's gonna be the one to grab a hold of that camo this time bound in space station gaming snatch up sniper away from phase only down by one it's sniper versus camo he phase organizing their push together holding their hands trying to overwhelm any numbers and the reason they do this is because they know that sniper is over at tower and that that sniper has to basically pull itself out of position to try to contest these players at b but mm. uh, uh it's bound so <laughs> he can do whatever the hell he wants apparently two kills for him another for stellar and three players for phase go down i want everybody in the chat right now to write me a five paragraph essay on how the hell bound is alive right now on my desk to my tomorrow morning because that's just that is unreal the damage that he was able to put down even while one shot he ain't done though he got three shots left in the sniper space station gaming taking a one kill lead stellar and ssg are still grinding forward Oh, I, don't, I don't think Bound's going down anytime soon. Starting this game perfect. One more away from a killing spree. And while well, Frosty might just be the target. Oh, the body shot hit. He's wide, wide too much. You got to keep the bandit in your hand, Bound. I think it's more of like a surprise attack. You know, whatever, whatever comes out, keep clicking <laughs> wide enough. Whatever yeah, comes out, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> it's like that one character from Hunter Hunter. Like, he, doesn't, he doesn't know what it's gonna be, but whatever weapon he pulls out when he rolls when he rolls that dice, it's gonna be dangerous. Twelve wow, oh, deep cut. Oh, I forgot SG. about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we 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 love us some anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Bound still hasn't died, and well, he had started his kill four uh, with four kills. Now he's gotten four assists to go with it. Hits the killing spree. Well, number six is there. Seven goes down. That one not going to be in the hands of Bound, but this has just been incredible from him early on. He he's been a, a force to be reckoned with. And some might even say he's him at the moment. 19 to 11 run Space Station Gaming, putting some distance between them and the scoreboard right now. They is trapped. On the back green side, the collapse is coming in. Look at how they surround and limit the options for phase. And eventually, once that pinch comes in, it comes in so well coordinated. And, uh, oh, God. A little, a little chaotic at the end, you know. <laughs> you think you're going to get a little more satisfying than that? Sniper. In the hands of Frosty, honestly, phase, they're not too far out of this right now. With Sniper being in their hands. Don't expect Frosty to be missing too many shots. Oh, this bunch didn't come out in time. Still Space Station Gaming with the lead, but what a round of slays coming in for phase. Ends up leading to a three down. And once Space Station Gaming go three down like that, you see that phase is going to start to take space on the map. They, uh, they identify where Space Station Gaming are spawning from. And now it's just all about finding out where their options, where are they moving to? Roll two with the sniper, one of the most deadliest to do it in the game. Meanwhile, Eco with the bottom flank, bound with the tower side control, but he's by himself, and Roll two might recognize that. Right, not quite there. He just oh, the bodies are just a little bit low. Couldn't get the head to connect, and Royal Two's damage doesn't get followed up by anybody either. So those two big shots don't result in any kills for Face. Twenty-seven to twenty-three. Space Station Gaming I have the lead. Meanwhile, Frosty and Royal Two pushing right through. They know that Stellar was somewhere. There we go. And found the sneaky Stellar was trying to make it out. Now staggered deaths coming out of Space Station Gaming Phase. Want to take advantage of that legend. <laughs> man, the man has no fear. He just, he doesn't, he's not afraid. Just push up, put some shots in. 
<laughs> love watching. Like, I'm pretty sure he pushes first, thinks later. You know what I'm saying? He's just like, uh, I'll push, and then if I need to come up with a way to get out of it, I'll come up with a way to get out of it. But uh, I, it almost feels like he has this just supernatural sense of timing in this game, and you'll often see him on these massive flanks because of it. There's no one that does this better. What are they getting in the water of Ohio? Don't let the French come in. Lock them out. He just keeps finding kill after kill and space station reestablish their lead i will say I, did he not recognize that he had the repulse right there like the, the man is so cracked out so focused that he didn't realize he had the repulse like why am i not picking up this cambo here and eventually bow's not able to get any value out of that cambo limited impact as he gets taken out renegade down to one shot stellar goes in quick and a 34 to 31 phaser not quite out of it Royal 2 playing that wall well. Unfortunately for him, Bound just had a little bit of a better shot in that situation. Sniper, five seconds till it's up, and you can see a player just waiting. Cuts to try to work with Bound, but Renegade puts a spoil to all of that. By being at the back of green, he cuts down that back player before any real action can come over towards the Sniper. And although Space Station do get the snipe, Renegade's well-primed to be able to get some great damage down and help his teammates collapse in on these spawners of Space Station. We talk about how aggressive that, you know, the lights of SSG want to be, but Renegade wants to get aggressive as well. With that QT, he's really able to play a bit loose. As I say, that Stellar does get the kill. Bound follows it up. Slays once again favoring Space Station Gaming and Legend doing everything he can to stay alive with the Sniper. Oh my goodness. Couldn't have known Frosty was there, but it doesn't matter. Still hits the shot, hits one onto Snake Bite as well. We approach this end game. Phase need to go on a run. Get this thing about even before. I think 45 kills is really the mark where you have to be within one or two kills. Well, it, it's so hard to make the comeback down by more than that. No more easy trades. Phase have to be the hardest kills on the map. Back to back to back kills once again. Going it going in the way of Space Station Gaming. Phase struggling at the moment as they find themselves way too far behind. They need to value every life, every bit of damage, every death brings them closer and closer to ultimately losing this game number two. Eventually. SSG will find the final two kills they're looking for. One shot snake bite over towards camo. Love that play out of snake bite and renegade though. They're kind of baiting and switching the camouflage and the player at the same time. And uh, you know, only down by six. If you could just not die, maybe FaZe win it. Uh, well, that not dying part is <laughs> going to be part. hard when two players <laughs> wrap the corner in the way that they did. And Eco, it feels like Eco knows exactly where Frosty's at. He's like staring at him through the wall as he uh, is going to be able to hunt down this position. Renegade and Frosty team up together. Take him down. Uh, it's only a four kill game right now, but <laughs> it's 49 kills. That's going to be a tough one. Every time I'm into like, oh, well, there it is. Like, so, like FaZe do something to make me think that they can come right back at it. Like when you're supposed to get back smacked by legend, but you just portal right out. Like every time I think, oh, there it is. That's the game. Oh, you're doing it. They do something. They do something. Yo, it's within two. <laughs> this would be a crazy comeback. Oh, 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 what that name? <laughs> How? He ran through three of them. Somehow that's a 50-49. <laughs> Despite just like, the best efforts, despite the best efforts, it's a like, 50 49. There's people at home wondering, like, how is Legend as aggressive as he is? He's, like, you know, he's new to North America, the, 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 the young, quiet kid. If Legend doesn't care about his teammates' lives, there's no way that he cares about phases. This man's throwing spikes at his teammates. It's, I don't care if you die. We're getting this 50 kill one. If he doesn't respect the lives of his teammates, I promise you, he does not care about phase. <laughs> Well, that was somehow a 50-49 finish. <laughs> Phase, they get, they get to the finish line and then trip at the last possible second. As uh, I, I think, dude, that had to be like a 
eight to two run or something like that in the final moments. Uh, a lot of one on one fights that went to the hands of FaZe. But uh, I think I think anytime we're going to see these guys in Slayer, I think we're uh, going to be in for a 50 49. Man, your, uh, your Cloud Nine Halo Infinite 5K showdown has just been. It's been so fun to watch. I, I've been having an absolute blast in here, and I, I, I can hear you smiling when you talk. I know you're right there with me as well. It's It's been fun. It really has been. As, as a spectator, just a, an enjoyer of the sport, uh, we've watched some incredible games so far, and so far this Grand Finals has been damn good as well. SSG, fresh off of the 3-0 in that series number one to reset the brackets and put things on equal footing, and after two games, we are on equal footing once again going into a swing game number three fresh off of one of the most one of the more unorthodox 50 to 49 wins that we've seen from ssg to tie things up and now moving towards forbidden which i will say after we were kind of robbed of not getting forbidden uh early in the winner's bracket is it is this the first time we're seeing this on the on the tournament i'm trying to remember oh, crash out of the cloud nine yen yeah it's the first time that we're, that we're seeing on, on the alpha stream maybe maybe the bravo stream at one point uh, i'll say uh, it's gonna be a treat because uh two sniper maps with uh i'd say three probably four of the best snipers to maybe ever do it in the lobby uh that's, that's what uh, scares me out you see obviously we have a uh, stellar who i in my opinion best sniper in the game at the moment but then you go look at phase and it's like okay well you got you got Frosty, who is the best sniper in Halo 5. You got Royal 2, who is just uh, the uh, just the definition of perfection when it comes to long distance sniper play. And then you got Renegade, who, who's like almost the exact opposite of Renegade when it comes to close flicking sniper shots. Like he, he's right there with them. So plenty of sniper talent to go around on, on both these rosters. Yeah, for sure. And, and and I'll even I'll even throw Bound in there as well. Like, you know, kind of similar to how Renegade will, will be aggressive with that sniper. I mean, how many crazy plays have we seen Bound do when when he's going and he and he has momentum and he starts why whine the right way? <laughs> you can tell you can tell by the way he's moving, the way he's why whine. The dude hits crazy shots. So uh just anybody on in this lobby that gets the S7 in their hands is going to be a threat. I think what the what I'm looking for is that is is that point where both snipers are coming up and you lose your sniper because if you allow either phase or ssg to get two snipers on forbidden at that point you might as well count as a capture at that point you're <laughs> just just count on the scoreboard because there's nothing that you can do well tony i i was uh i was really uh thinking about you know that why why action and i i figured out what i don't like about the new generation of halo players you know i got i appreciate the why why and all that but you are I don't see generation. no i don't see anyone ogre twitching no more man i did when i first started playing halo i would just ogre twitch just because i thought it was cool you know like i wanted to i wanted to be like him and i you know my reticle would be going around there, there's no one that ogre twitches anymore um i feel like i see hunter jgx ogre twitch a lot like that's really it <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, shout, out, I'm shout out to jjx I, yeah. that's, that's really the only player that i that i really see ogre twitching that much is is, is hunter now that, now that you've mentioned i'm sure i may, may, may maybe chad will will, will will let me know but I, I think you might be right on that <laughs> it's probably a bad habit right like <laughs> the reality of it <laughs> uh, like, but uh, the guy chat chat is there anyone that the ogre twitch anymore so for I anyone that doesn't I know ogre two ogre twitches on mouse and keyboard like, not well like, why would you does, ogre twitch on he, Tony, why would we ogre twitch on mouse and keyboard there's no reason to do it ogre it's an ogre twitch he is the ogre okay, you wanted you wanted to go like this you wanted to go like why why would you do that with a mouse and keyboard it makes no sense he, i'm saying because every player that i would think maybe still ogre twitches i would think it would be ogre too i'm just i'm just stating a fact that he does it okay for someone in chat asked what is an ogre twitch an ogre twitch is when you move your right reticle so your, your reticle moves very quickly all at once and it's like it's kind of it, it looks like a twitch i guess like usually it's like round you can see him doing it right there you, well, let, let me see those sticks again bro how, how many sticks do you have i mean i, I got i got the i got the nothing, nothing extra tall bro <laughs> extra tall 
I, you know, I will say I, I do ogre twitch. I just don't do it in the game. I, 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 I ogre mm. twitch just like 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 just like naturally when I'm just like waiting in the lobby. So I, I'm not a pro, obviously, but I do ogre twitch just not in the game. <laughs> I feel like I, I definitely ogre twitch back in H5. But I don't ogre twitch in Halo Infinite, and I'm wondering why. I think maybe it's that FOB thing. Now that I think about it, because it doesn't feel right. Like hmm. I FOB because your reticle doesn't really move. Like you don't like get the big head shake or anything. It feels like more cracked when you're at like low FOB. But either way, someone said Boo Boo Doo Boo still does it. If that's true, that's cool. Shout out to Boo Boo. Shout out to Boo Boo. Ladies and gentlemen, your Cloud9 Halo Infinite 5K showdown, your grand finals. We are in right now, and man, has it been incredible. Just to remind you guys, in case you've been sleeping under a rock or something, we saw Space Station Gaming go on an incredible run, maybe like a 10 0 run since losing one game to Optic Gaming in the early rounds of the lower mm -hmm. rank. Even including a 3-0 in that first series against FaZe here in your grand finals. And now we are in a bracket reset. We are in the second series here. Game three, a swing one at that. Both FaZe and Space Station Gaming, one game on them. Well, Stellar doing Stellar things early on. One thing to, in particular, look, no one from FaZe even attempts to pick up that sniper rifle. Well, they all go down to the respawn screen, and this could be a flag cap very early on. In fact, I honestly think this is kind of a misplay from Bound, in my opinion, Tony. I think he should have just grabbed that flag and tried to run it. Yeah, that extra shield, the sniper ahead of you. I, I don't think there should have been any fear on trying to run that flag. Sadly, wasn't able to do so, and phase eventually the double push right off of their spawn through the control side able to get that sniper out of the hands of stellar well two down to one shot but i was gonna say is able to stay alive that's until i saw legend coming in out of nowhere double kill with this sick looking command I'm, i need to get those skins man this <laughs> is kind of gnarly not gonna lie this like, it looks like a weapon from like alien or something but no one on the overextend. Uh, Snake bites above him, but I don't think there's anyone really that can stop the flag capture. No, bound. He just stayed alive the entire time. That was his first death. Putting the flag cap in. One lead here for SSG, but they do end up going three down. So a potential counter cap opportunity. Phase want to take advantage of that right through the shortest point and gets the turn. Nobody able to take down Snake Bite on his way through the rat tunnel. This could be a capture of nobody from SSG at least has an eye, uh, like a sight line on the flag. And now there it is. Frosty with the snipe too to follow through with it. And he knows where Stellar's moving to. Yeah, it seems like he understands that Legend's probably over on the main plat as well. I love how as soon as he stops pre-aiming the spot, Legend comes. <laughs> it, it's a sixth sense in his mind. I, I'm telling you, no one, no one like as this instinct sort of gameplay like legend does it's like that's that halo time and we've all been there done that trust me <laughs> no, what, what happened to legend right there felt kind of more like content no 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 you <laughs> see frosty playing very slow and patient with this sniper rifle just focusing on getting picks for his team as they claw their way up the opposite snipe side tied up at one of piece of one this game just like we are in the series here in your grand finals Snake bite. Trying to get some audio cues here. Meanwhile, bound. Did, did bound fall off the map? I, I think bound fell off the map. <laughs> oh, yep, yep. There he was. <laughs> but it, honestly, it was a strategic fall off, right? Because he spawns up just in time to get shots down on the flag carrier. Perfect. You know, there's always old stories. Like uh, whenever I was playing Narrows, you just fall off the map whenever the sniper's coming up. You know, put you right back. Pick it right back up, you know. Just had to pull like a Ryan noob on, on King of the Hill Splash on Reach. <laughs> Just to double nature yourself to get a better spawn or to spawn behind the enemy team. 2 1. <laughs> Phase up right now. And Renegade started the fly. Didn't exactly go much anywhere with it, but it is started. It is there. And if they get the slays, they might be able to rotate it. But actually, that flag ends up falling down to the pit. So. They're gonna need a round of slays, another reset, and maybe an overshield. It's surprising that there's as much flag action as there is with how little kills there are on the map. Like they, these uh, two teams have been hyper efficient at getting these flags out and on their way. Three down for SSG, two for phase as overshield is coming up. 
and Frosty with the Blaine on bound. Legend gonna sneak on up. Frosty about to guarantee this for his team. There's nothing. I really feel like Space Station has been in this rut for the last minute and a half. I haven't really been able to find much movement in their uh, in their base. Feeling a little bit like Ninja at Times Square, and uh, just uh, it's just been dominant from Face. Like they, they they are just shoving it right into the face of. Okay, wait. Never mind. It's just a kid. Go ahead, take take my Tony. I'm, I'm walking myself into a trap. <laughs> Snake by with the with the run despite being one shot looks like he was a stop short. Stellar would the kill for that one. Frosty down to one shot himself with the reach out double kill. There's a snowman right there, and it could be a three one finish as SSG find himself way too far behind, and Frosty is still moving that flag. Ah, uh, just unbelievable. A space station couldn't move. Uh, there was nothing. Anytime they tried to get over towards the snipe hunt, it was Frosty that was in their way. And well, he was a he was a final boss that game. It felt like every time he needed to come up with a big kill, he was there. Face just efficient as uh, as you can be getting those flags home. And what's interesting is uh, two flag captures going through that back runway rather than uh, than the traditional snipe side run. Oh, we saw the phase there and. Uh... You know, for a team that, wow, what, a, what an early start. How fast was that <laughs> for a team that wasn't able to get a single win on Space Station Gaming in that first series so far, has put up two on the wait, board now. Tony, wait, Nighty, Nighty, can you see who's leader real fast? Who is the host? Oh, do you have to like press, press tab, I think, and then we'll see it? Bound. I just wanted to say because they insta started the next game. <laughs> That's what I was like, that, was, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there was a frame on, on when we came back. <laughs> like, I, I'm wondering how was he quick enough to switch the game types and map right there? <laughs> like it was like he started the same map in game time how quick he did it, but we're going into game number four and and, and phase who like 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 I was trying to say wasn't able to get a win in that first series now with two and one win away from becoming your champions out of the winner's bracket phase win had an advantage lost the advantage and now have an advantage again one win on SSG meanwhile SSG can potentially send us into a game five with the win here I well, see so far uh, a very patient start from both sides we didn't see any sprinting right away to get it onto the other side instead everyone just taking high positions and playing relatively cautious in this early start phase moving in for the first double cap that means they'll be the first one to put points on the board but before the before that timer ticks it looks like stellar and ssg slide right into bravo phase going to pivot and attack charlie here and now it's stellar rotating towards two members of phase you gotta be careful <laughs> Renegade playing a little dance against Stellar and Stellar will eventually be able to move forward as Eco finishes off the damage and uh well relative ease for Stellar as he gets back over towards A space station able to get themselves into a scoring spot once again and well Renegade's position well known I think it's just a matter of time before Legend flies down those stairs there was a strongholds game type in that first series where we did see uh, a bit of technical difficulties and eventually SSG had, a, I think, what, a 40 point advantage or what we were arguing about it for a little bit, but they didn't need it. They ended up winning uh, 250 to, I want to say, like 65 ish uh, by the time the score line was done. SSG have already beaten FaZe in strongholds, but right now, FaZe looking a little clean, almost able to take down Alpha, but Eco off screen with the back smack and bound with this shock just watching his cross right now this is a nice little setup that ssg were able to get see frosty's threatening a push through the middle of the map royal 2 is trying to buy him time and there we go frosty activates and he's going to be able to work his way towards a with his teammate bounds been just trying to find an angle on anyone but the pressure from royal 2 has been too much and royal 2 just hunts him down I, that is just uh, unbelievable how much uh, pressure he was able to apply there. Well, four going down for Space Station. It's it's trip cap season. They're able to take away Bravo. It looks like Space Station attacking Charlie. Nobody from FaZe quite there to stop it from happening. 
So maybe just maybe they lose hold of the trip cap, but they're still holding on to two bases and they also are holding on to the lead right now. World 2 backing down to collect a new angle with this shock. One bullet vault. No to worry. I don't even know what to, what to call it here. <laughs> here comes the push space station sending two players a deal of Royal 2. Oh, they definitely just said to you that aid was great and well the damage down range will be enough to stop the push at B for now as phase by the time uh, space station is able to recover it to B they're just working on the rotation at C long way shots putting legend down to one shot there is a player that's right up close and personal but he grapples all the way across the map and into the mangler side now gold side just about clear. I believe Legend still might be there and FaZe are finding kills. Alpha and Charlie still in the hands of FaZe at the moment. And as Royal 2 takes down Eco, looks like Stellar is going to make his way toward the top A side. Renegade doing so much damage. He and Royal 2 somehow clear out A despite <laughs> being at a damage disadvantage. I, I don't know if Renegade purposely called for that play but that might be the biggest <laughs> thing i've seen i guess like you you leave the bottom a spawn to open up a and you just make a little it's like a racetrack you go through mid wall i mean you go through mid bridge come to half wall and then hey they've spawned at a and now you've cut off the spawn they spawn out and you you win the fight with your teammate coming over at tower it, it was a perfectly executed and allowed phase to score for just a little bit longer but finally space station with their response trip cap in effect see how long they can hold on and the fact that they were able to take enough space to take two bases at the same time to give them that triple cap is really quite a play coming out of space station gaming eco has a bit of shock a rifle to, oh, excuse me shock ammo to work with stellar bound with back-to-back -back kills phase attacking charlie but it looks like ssg anticipating that push well Able to take down one, gets enough damage onto the second, and the phase right now is struggling to take one base, let alone two. Space Station Gaming have just taken the lead. Uh, this has been fantastic for them. This trip cap uh, was in effect for such a long period of time, and now even after the trip cap is uh, is nulled, the, the two cap is keeping them scoring. This has just been fantastic from Space Station. Finally. The rampage might just be done as Royal 2 has been able to find themselves a kill over at A, but uh, Space Station, it seems as if the slaves will keep going in their favor, and this is where it gets dangerous. Look at the spawn. So they're all going to be spawning over towards that long haul. There's really no quick option. It's going to be down to individual slaves, and they are tough to come by when you're stuck in this position. Over a 50 point lead coming in out of Space Station Gaming phase and need to execute here on this break. The last thing they want to do is lose a round of slays and allow SSG's lead to gain even more. But Snake Bite and Frosty now the first ones at the Black Street. Frosty the first one to come up, but he is isolated onto the A side. The trip cap will remain here as Space Station Gaming are getting dangerously close to doubling the score line of phase. This is the trip cap of doom. There's nothing you can do when you get stuck in this spot. It just comes down to winning a slay. And there's no slay to be won. Eco is shutting him down on one side and bound on the other. Finally, getting some progress over at B, but it's not secure by any means. 235 to 107. Looks like FaZe were able to take Bravo, but Charlie remains in the hands of Space Station Gaming. The reset will come in. And I think that might just be it. <laughs> it almost feels anticlimactic with how dominant the uh, the setup from Space Station was. It, it doesn't feel real that this game was over, but I think it was like 107 to 40. <laughs> and it was a trip cap. And we, uh, we never saw them really recover. Wow. What a, what a game coming in for Space Station Gaming. You know, couldn't give up a single loss there. Otherwise, they would have lost the series fresh off of that 3-0 in the first series. Now winning two in a row here in order to bring us to a game five. This is going to be exciting. Yeah, that's a six minute game of, uh, of strongholds. You always have to take away 30 seconds from that finish time because it starts. <laughs> I, I will say, man. They are not giving time. They're, they're not wait, waiting for any sort of ready up. They're they're just going, starting up the map. I thought that was going to be a mistake the first time around. Once the uh, phase had so much momentum, but Space Station giving them no time. 
and I, I feel like it ha you you have to count it as part of the mental game, right? Like, I mean, like, the, the phase are thinking maybe, maybe they have a, a little bit of time to breathe. Maybe they want to talk about that loss. Maybe they want uh, and just anything at all. Use the restroom. Go get, go get some water. And you see the insta-cue coming out of space stage. I feel like... I feel like that has to be, that has to be a part of the the mental game right now. That baby bound the space station game you're playing. Maybe, maybe that's just me. Maybe. <laughs> Every time we've seen Slayer thus far in the series, Tony, what's been the trend? I'm sorry. Every time we've seen the Slayer, what's been the trend? What's what's been the the yeah. running theme thus far? SSG have been winning uh, from from Arlington to now. Dude. SSG have been looking good in the Slayers. Uh, that game two Slayer this series was was a bit interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit interesting. Both of the Slayers, 50 40 dimes in the SSG's favor. Okay. Think we think we tipped the scales at all this time around? On streets, yeah. I, I don't think we see a, well, you know, with these two teams, you know what? No, why not be a 50 to 40? I think both of these teams have have an advanced understanding of you know where oh, they're at in the game. I don't know why they buffed this one. <laughs> it's just, it's, oh no! Ooh, Snake might just gets away of his life. That that uh, that commando shreds these days. Uh, absolutely a sticky weapon on that mid range and especially close range. Don't want to be on the business end of that thing. I feel like they buffed it, but I, I don't I don't feel like it's overpowered and maybe I'm in the minority uh, here. I think the commandos in a, in a good spot. Like I, I think I think if you hit your shots with the bandit, you're going to beat it out. Uh, but the commando is a is a uh, a very interesting weapon, very unique weapon. I, don't, I wouldn't say overpowered. I think it's in a good spot for players like us, Tony. Oh, OK. You know what I say? Yeah. They only really affects the pros because they don't they just don't miss. <laughs> and that, that thing is absolutely scary. The amount of damage it puts down. Eco doing a fantastic job of staying alive. Eventually, Bound comes in to, to rescue them. And wow, a huge swing into the hands of Space Station. Look how fast Legend is. Legend has no chill. He is flying into the base of phase. Bound meeting up on the other side. They both win their individuals. Legend gets two before he's taken down. And Phase Clan are on a cycle. It's all about legend speed and bound immediately matches that speed matches that intensity and what a clear out from subway and then a quick priority a switch they immediately snap onto the spawning players and now we're taking ground here from the purple side an 11 to 8 run coming in out of bound and space station gaming and now eco the forward player and i talked about eco's shot so far this tournament it's been very smooth even the even the games where he's not doing tons of damage getting tons of kills i feel like he's still hitting dag near every shot camo be up relatively soon we see space station well positioned for it and stake by was like let me see if i could maybe get an angle that oh no 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 Nate's, Nate's at my feet and uh well he immediately goes down frosting world two wasting no time whatsoever to try to get some damage in eventually so with we down four face snake bite the final player alive and you notice when that happens SSG immediately takes space bound immediately on that cafe side. Now the rest of SSG fastly approaching the planters. Legend puts that camel toward the takedown. Renegade bound follows it up. And Space Station Gaming, they're just simply winning every single engagement right now. And things are getting a bit out of hand already in the early game. It's 22 to 13. We need to see a response out of phase. And apparently we won't. Legend takes down. Renegade Snake Bite does get his kill. And now Wes is going to slow down with that. Uh, maps like these are where Legend just feasts uh, when he's able to be as aggressive as he wants to, especially when you give him a lead because suddenly he doesn't really have to care about his deaths as much. Not unusual to see Legend finish a game with 15, 16 kills, but also match it with 13, 14 deaths. He loves to be engagements and loves to just push into these spawns. 24 to 15. Frosty's able to take down Legend. Bound responds with the shotgun, puts that bulldog to work. And all the SSG end up going three down. He still has that shotgun. If anybody wants to get froggy, they can leap. Legend with the damage. Bound already in there. Easy kill, taking minimal damage in return, even using the shroud to stay alive. 24 seconds until we will see another camouflage. And FaZe are able to take down Bound. 
He's not in the worst position here, right? They finally gotten back that shot, uh, that shotgun in their possession. They have uh, some firm control over at A and get three down with the camouflage coming up in just about five seconds. Mm -hmm. This is definitely doable for them to get back into this game. They just need to ensure that they get the camouflage. Do not let this thing burn. Now takes a lot of damage from World 2, tries to get out of town, but uh, ends up being stopped over towards ATM, and now a clean round of slays coming in. SSG end up hitting three to the black screen, and FaZe haven't had a single player go down. Down by two. FaZe right back in it, right back within striking distance. Look at all that damage. Wall 2 and Renegade working perfectly together. Snake by pulling up the rear from three down to a six kill swing. Seven kill swing now for FaZe as they take the lead. Unbelievable from FaZe. Completely reverse the situation that they were in. And now you're starting to see this game slow down once again. Snakebite, he's just, all his job is is to check the B lane, get information for his team. His other, his teammates are going to try to put pressure in on the strong side while he tells them if they're flanking away or not. Unfortunately for FaZe, those players taken down before they could get the kills necessary. We're evened up once again, and it's going to give Space Station some much needed space to play forward. This was a 24 to 13 lead in favor of Space Station Gaming. It was in danger of getting a bit out of hand. Then FaZe ripped the Uno reversal card out of nowhere. Raw 2 apparently turns into a, a support player with his six kills and 13 assists to go along with it. FaZe playing new so far in the mid game. Playing the, the phase Halo that we know they can play, that they, that we thought they were going into this grand finals and keeping things close. It's a two kill game at the moment. And camouflage should be coming up very soon. SSG want to start valuing their life. They don't want to allow phase to grab a hold of it. 14 assists is unreal. I mean, even eight assists at this point in the game is a, is a high account. It just shows you how uh, coordinated FaZe has been on these attacks. They they do not take fights where they don't have immediate help, but things might have just changed. Uh, there's no way Snakebite gets away from this fight. It's going to be four that go down FaZe. I'll see the respawn screen in Space Station. This is how they took the lead in the first place. Hyper aggression off a of three down. It was quite the run coming in out of FaZe, but Space Station Gaming, they've woken up. They're fighting back. Three down once again for FaZe, and nothing's going to stop Bound from pushing the 50% portion of the map. He knows that FaZe is going to be spawning towards Subway, but he wants to get in here. He wants to get in here undetected and put down some damage. Finally, Frosty finds out the hard way. Down to one shot, he goes. Legend comes in with that bait and switch action, and although he knows Snake fights one shot, he simply cannot push. One squad wipe is what's needed here for Space Station Gaming to be your champions. Deja vu from game number two it was 38-45 when that comeback from FaZe started to happen. Can they replicate that same success? World 2, high IQ play going to back down over towards his teammate. This is a full rotation coming out of FaZe. They know Space Station have already got control over toward the seaside. They're trying to flip that map. Renegade. Using that stalker to perfection, able to take down bound. Honestly, I think Space Station needs to start playing the clock. I would back up out of here. You can't give up these kills. Renegade just keeps picking them apart with the red gun. They keep giving up kill after kill. Renegade's on the attack now. Renegade with another kill with that stalker. Takes down Eco. Only Huge down by pick. two kills, but Legend's able to take down Renegade and gets the Stalker out of his hands. And now this B Street is being infiltrated, being attacked by all members of Space Station Gaming. Stellar right after Frosty. Legend does that damage. And Eco going to be the player that... I don't think I have to track I think I think Bounce told that one from him, but either way, it doesn't matter. 50 to 46 is your final score line in an amazing grand finals that goes all the way down to a game five, but ends up with Space Station Gaming repeating history, taking two tournaments here in 2024. Fantastic efforts through and through. And uh, honestly, I think it all comes down to that, that pick that Legend got through the Shroud screen. It, yeah. it made all the difference. Uh, if Renegade gets away of his life there, I'm almost fair, uh, confident that FaZe would have made that comeback.
It was looking, it was looking doable. Many times it was lo it was looking like face, especially when they went on that run. It was like a quick four down into like a fresh three down. It just happened so quickly within maybe 10 to 15 seconds of each other. And phase were going on a crazy run. And if they would have came back, it would have been incredible. But yeah, I mean, you, you came into this grand finals with that advantage of of having to only win one series. You uh, you may, and maybe the the series layout wasn't in your favor. But you allowed Space Station Gaming to, to 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 speed blitz through that first series, and all that momentum that you had uh, ended up going away. Yes, you took game number one, which is great, but eventually, Space Station Gaming taking two of the Slayers, the, the game type that you were known for, all through season two, SSG now known maybe as the best Slayer team this year. Fantastic series. Fantastic event thus far. Space Station has been doing a phenomenal job. And while well, they eventually get it done, a 3 0 in the first grand finals and the reset, a 3 2 victory. Really went through the gauntlet, right? They, they, they got dropped down at winner's quarter finals. Mm -hmm. These guys really had to, to grind through the elimination bracket. Some close 2 1 victories that they were able to scrape by to get themselves to this spot. And to take home the lion's share this five thousand dollars present uh that cloud nine has put up in today's competition yeah it's been really interesting to watch ssg's journey through some of these online tournaments because i feel like when going up against both phase and optic i feel like they are the favorites i definitely lean towards ssg uh especially after arlington but we've seen multiple times where sentinels have pulled off upsets on them and uh, and, and eventually, Sensos kind of ride that momentum into some deep finishes. Maybe in this uh, in this tournament, you lose to Complexity and Proton at, uh, uh, in this tournament. But we've seen in past where they've gone on some crazy runs. So interesting to watch so far. Definitely something to analyze after this tournament and find out, you know, what is it that Sensos are doing that's so tough for Space Station Gaming to beat. But I mean, as as we know right now, when Space Station run up against Optic and Phase, you know, the two others of the of the big three man they they look good they look strong i think if you're talking to space station you're talking to legend he's saying what big three there's only big me space station gaming stand alone thus far i mean they just keep winning is there a big three i don't know tony it might just be ssg i mean <laughs> it's something that you, the way you say that it's funny kind of took me back but i but i think if you're ssg you are talking like that you are that confident you you have pulled off a an absolute swindle by 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 stealing legend and bringing him onto this roster because not only has legend fit in so well on space station gaming but you know we're no longer talking about him being the best player in europe we're now talking about him being one of the best players in the game right now like on this ssg roster he is not a role player you know he is he is a leader he like when when he is playing as well as he is ssg are playing well as well like they they have mm. been going the way legend has gone and it's been absolutely incredible so you know i kind of i kind of i kind of took, took a back with the way you're saying it with, with the way you talk that's that's big talk you know uh but it, rightfully so ssg right now are the best team in the world it's up to everybody else to prove us wrong that does it i think tony for us uh, i want to say uh tony i want you to just show it off one more time you know what I'm saying? We, we got we to gotta make sure that we give, give Cloud9 the love that they deserve. Folks, if you enjoyed the tournament today, well, no, if you want to support, go check out the share. Look at this thing. Oh, my. The Secret Lab chair from Cloud9. Get that thing in your office here today. Tony, Tony is it comfortable? Oh, it's amazing. Oh, my mm. gosh. I, I want to take this pillow off and just take it with me. And just, oh, my gosh. You guys have no one. It's so... I think you made a Hunter x Hunter reference or Hunter Hunter reference. I'm sorry, Weeps. Um, they also have some great collaborations. You know, Cloud9, they have some like One Piece merch and all that. You know, if you ever want to check out all their collections that they have, go check out the merch tab in the uh, in the chat. Cloud9 merch, it goes hard. I mean, you get some shoes, bro. You can get your, your polos, your jerseys. What kind of shoes are those? What kind of shoes are those? I don't, I don't know what kind of shoes they are. I'm just seeing it on their website. <laughs> let me go. Let me go look. Let me go look. I saw the shoes at the bottom. They got rugby shirts. Oh my god, they really do have everything. I will say, 
this hat this this white hat i have right here mm -hmm. my favorite hat i own i want to get the blue one as well so that that's my next big purchase with cloud nine i'm gonna get the the blue hat love this thing um they have some great shorts some joggers any any sort of needs that you could have we have that sick baseball jersey that the oh, that they oh uh gosh. that they give out Dude, that baseball jersey is the coolest esports merch around I will say I'm always, you know, I'm always of the mindset that if you support the things that I love, if you show, if, if you support things that I have interest in, I'm going to back you guys up. I'm going to buy your merch. I'm going to show some love and and for Cloud Nine to, you know, you know, have some amazing boots. Like we had that boot over uh, at Arlington. I thought that was incredible for them to be throwing, you know, this many 5K tournaments like we saw you know, last year leading into this year. Uh, if you if you support what I love. I'm gonna support you. That's just how that's just how I am personally. And I hope you guys are too. Make sure you type an exclamation mark birch in the chat and get involved. And I promise you, there's going to be something that you'd like, something your girlfriend likes, something your, your mama likes. I, I promise you, go ahead and, and do and do what you gotta do. Uh, I'm why not be reckless? This is my man Garrett. Garrett, do you have any final words for the people at home? Uh, shout out to Cloud9. Uh, I think they played a great tournament. Uh, unfortunately, they stopped a little bit short. I think, you know, maybe they had some best of fives to play. They could have gotten it through, but big tournament. 64 teams we had to sign up today. Only one team missed check in, by the way. Only one team missing check in. Uh, it's rare to see. So shout out to everyone that played in today's tournament for, for showing up. I can't believe we got through a 64 team bracket. What, 10 hours? Make a good time over here, folks. Great job today. Congratulations to Space Station Gaming. I think they really pulled off a statement sort of tournament here today. I thought maybe, oh, they're looking a little shaky when they lost the Sentinels. No, uh, they, they showed that that was just a gimmick. They're right back into the action when, when it matters the most. They play their hardest. Shout out to everyone that helped out uh, this weekend as well. Our co streamers like Eli X and our Bravo stream, LVT Halo. We're no strangers over there. Go give the show them some love as well. If you're watching on the LVT Halo channel, shout out to y'all. Uh, and most importantly, buy some C9 skins. You know what I'm saying? It's the best looking Halo skin in the game. You better have it on. You get the bandit rifle, get the VR, the sniper, whatever you need to make sure you're looking fresh on the battlefield and help support the organization as they keep fielding out these teams. And hopefully we get some more Cloud9 tournaments in the future. Yeah, man, I think you covered, you covered a lot of base. I'll just throw a few more in.